fucking Twitter. Hard. It's the and gayest oh soy God. thing oh you can God. do. Shut oh the fuck up, you little tater tot bitch. We are two minutes and 35 seconds into this video. I'm just as gay as the rest of us, motherfuckers. Just the same. Another sunny day in LA. Everything is fun, so they say. Wonder what the news is today. Cause I know that every day I'm at this fucking job. Her son is streaming. Watch him on the clock. Bro, the Lyra I does not a, need this. Crazy people crazy love crazy playing Hearts of Iron anymore. Eating pussy is the basic <laughs> bare minimum thing you can do. Where did they find these people, dude? And women want to have sex. Your job is posting. You're gay. Oh, okay. God, I, don't I make hate women move. so much. On that club. Fantastic evening, fantastic afternoon, fantastic preview. No matter where you are in the world, the song player in this awesome broadcast coming to you live from cloudy, very crappy California, Los Angeles, folks. We're live and alive, and it's 59 degrees and mostly cloudy here in California, Los Angeles. But I'm live, I'm alive, and I hope all the boys, I hope all the girls, and I hope all the MBs are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today is a very specific day that we celebrate every single week. As a matter of fact, that's right, we celebrate this wonderful day, this beautiful day now, Hassan. You might say, why is this such a special day? Why is it such a fantastic day? Is it because it's cloudy? Is it because you're feeling good? Is it because you're, you just worked out, hit 285 again like it was nobody's business on the squat rack, on the high bar? It's like pretty significant for you. Is that the reason? Is it because you're 242 pounds and it's the lowest weight you've been since COVID? Is that the reason? No, that's not the reason. Those are other extra wow. dif different reasons. Yeah, right. It's because it's Friday, ladies it's and gentlemen. Friday then. That's right. It's Saturday, Sunday, what? It's, it's Friday. The weekend then. is here. The freaking it's weekend. It's Something that your forefathers fought hard for in order for you and your nasty ass, your lazy millennial avocado toast eating Gen Z broccoli haircut having asses to be able to, to, uh, to feel a sense of autonomy a sense of purpose like a human again over the course of the weekend that's what this is so we of course celebrate it as always it's motherfucking friday and the vibes are immaculate folks that's right oh, oh my god i have so much hair so much hair everywhere but even that can't fuck my mood up that's right immaculate friday vibes folks that's what's going on if did you have a death in the family keep that shit to yourself T keep that shit to your damn self you know what i'm talking about the most emotionally draining hardest job in the fucking business oil rig workers call me and they say hassan we would never be able to do what you're doing thank you so much for the fucking phenomenal work you put in sitting on your fucking ass and watching youtube videos all day as nerds harass you where can i get that cussy shirt is a good question i unfortunately have no idea because it was sent to me in a p.o box <sighs> anyway um where was i i'm live and alive and this is a part of the broadcast where i tell you a little bit about my personal news yeah they call me teamsters call me crying tears in their eyes saying hassan we would never be able to do what you do your job is so much harder than ours yeah dock workers will hit me up and be like dude I hope your emotional battery is fine because goddamn. Maybe I'm so cheery because Black History Month is finally over is 
Suspicious. Suspicious. Suspicious that I'm finally fucking, we're finally out of the goddamn month of February. I don't know why I just don't like February. It's like, I just, I feel like the weather is cold and shitty. It's like, it's supposed to be spring soon. You know what I mean? March is the worst one though. March is the worst month here in Los Angeles. For those of you who don't know, in the month of March, we have really just a Hassan is the Jupiter to the online leftist needs defenseless earth, sucking up all the right wing meteorite trolls into his massive communist orbit. Yes. Without me, there would be infinitely more harassment to every random leftist person. But because of me, everyone just can get together and yell at me. And then other leftists can also make themselves feel, seem like they're cool and good. What if March? Oh, March. You're at March. Um, <clears throat> so folks, this is a part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news. Your daughter's and my birthday month. Yes, my my daughter will be one years old in approximately four days. That's right, March 5th marks one year. I'm still dying at the thought of Gavin Newscum. Yeah, Trump kind of fucking popped off on that one, didn't he, boys? Um. Anyway, but yeah, as far as personal news goes, last night in the broadcast, as you guys know, after a, a, a measly, shitty eight hour stream it was like nasty what's happening I'm, I'm fucking lazy dude it wasn't even full eight hours it was seven hours and 50 seven hours and 50 minutes you know what i mean so obviously obviously i've given up obviously i i am quiet quitting obviously i'm being lazy clogging out early anyway um but uh uh what did i do after that with my time i played infinite wealth eight that's right i've been playing it non-stop I've been playing Infinite Wealth 8, Infinite Wealth 8 non-freaking stop. There are no One Piece updates. There are too many other shows happening. I finally finished Breaking Bad, by the way. Finally finished, or not Breaking Bad, sorry. <laughs> Fuck, I said Breaking Bad. Better Call Saul. I finally finished Better Call Saul. That last season was goddamn. That shit was like anime filler, dude. I swear to God. That last season was a, was a tough watch, okay? Um, but it was great. It was amazing. Bob Odenkirk was robbed so continuously and so consecutively, so consistently. Um, do you like the scene on the prison bus? I did. I, I think uh, it was phenomenal. I, I, I really, I really liked the, the show in general. I think that it, I mean, it does a decent job tying everything together, but God damn, that shit is slow by the end of it. Um, can you stop having bad takes when talking about music or shows? Uh, Yeet's latest album is the greatest uh, composition of all time. Beethoven probably would have been jealous. If Beethoven knew what music could turn into, he would have, I don't know what he would have done, honestly. He would have just like hung it up. Um, but yeah, no, we have, we have a lot going on. We have a lot going on in the world. So uh, I, I, what is happening in my world? Oh, my diet has been going really well, obviously. My uh, diet has been going phenomenally well. I'm 242 pounds as of today. 242 pounds. This is the lowest weight I've been since COVID, since my peak at COVID at 285 pounds. And um, we're officially sub 245. And I'm trekking my ass down to the 230s. And once I get there, shit's going to start getting real interesting because I'm going to be the sluttiest person you've ever seen. Um, right now, if you're thinking like, oh, Hassan, the the you're pretty slutty already like you take shirtless selfies and post them and and you exploded a watermelon with your thighs like i'm saying i'm gonna be like the dudes who like finger fuck the fruit you know what i mean when they're like making food like when they're making like really slutty shit i'll obviously be tastefully slutty because those guys are too much like they show whole basically but i'm gonna be i'm gonna be slutty as fuck this summer do you understand what'd you say um, are you lifting more than what you were at at COVID? I was not lifting during COVID. That's the problem. Um, I was during COVID. I was doing nothing. Like in the beginning of COVID, I was working out and stuff, but I completely dropped it. And by 2020, by 2021, um, by the time the vaccines came around, I was like, just done muscles atrophied, no more muscle mass, lost all of my muscle mass and gained it all back in the form of fat. But because it happened over the course of a year with my incredibly sedentary lifestyle, and also delicious treats that my mommy used to make me all the time uh, that, uh, you know, I had to cut back on. I basically, uh, I, I fell apart. 285 pounds, just, you know, tremendously, tremendously unhappy. Very unhappy. 
rp ice cream sammies no i i used to eat ice cream sammies even when i was skinny i've been eating ice cream sammies still i just don't eat it on camera for those of you who talk about ice cream sammies that's i know you're an old head because i used to stream at night after work so i would eat ice cream sammies and i still do for the record i still eat ice cream sammies. you can you can eat ice cream sandwiches and uh and and still lose weight will exposed you when were you skinny what is this most likely to have had sex in the back of a taxi or uber i mean do you want the real answer yeah to samba why <laughs> no i'm just kidding i was I like know. i can he fit <laughs> admittedly oh that's a so not just the back of a car taxi or uber yeah oh i i don't know why so I a bit of voyeurism because i know both these guys have had sex in the back of a car but right. it, but they weren't a taxi have or you not uber. had sex in the back of a car i've definitely oh. had sex in the back that's of a car interesting to me I've gotten head in the car, but I was driving. Yeah. Um, you know how they make those macro rich cookies? Do you do they make macro rich ice cream sammies? No. Um, for ice cream sandwiches, I used to do this thing where uh what's the fucking protein cookie brand? I would take protein cookies and I would slap the two protein cookies in between like Halo Top ice cream. But I think that shit's overrated because the amount of protein that you're getting from that is like limited anyway. It wasn't uh it wasn't protein cookies. Um not quest. I, it, it's negligible i used to yeah do like lenny and larry's but honestly it doesn't really matter so um the ice cream sandwiches is like one area ice cream sandwiches uh is the one area where i don't like cheat and find a different version of it you know what i mean here look look at my old fridge me um a while back this is the honey bag ham company <laughs> janice dude holy shit that's how you know old school as hell dude this is my my welcome to my apartment video that i did back way back in the day i think this is from yeah 13th of april 2020 sides that will got there's some more ice cream sandwiches here some enlightened keto ice cream haven't really had a chance to eat that a bunch of reduced mac uh, reduced guilt mac and cheese some chicken breast tendies some organic brown rice like i'm stocked up like i'm i'm good to go and here i have all yeah see look at all the ice cream sandwiches i have it's all dude i i i would literally carve out 500 calories it's so funny because like it's not like i was caked at this point you know what i mean i wasn't like fucking you know at this point in my life financially i'm not fucking going crazy with the money but i'm spending like i am specifically on ice cream sandwiches i've always i've always like <laughs> my my food choices have always been very autistic like broke rich doesn't fucking matter like my fridge looks almost identical to this even to this day All my ice creams as well the additional ice creams that I, I didn't for the record i didn't like stock it neatly for for the filming process like that is how my fridge looks all the time i stock my shit super neat no matter what like to consume one a day of course not more than that um here all right so i'm gonna oops i'm gonna take some of this chicken right here okay and i'm gonna immediately toss it into the freezer with the exception of one of these cutlets. So they're all like around two pounds, right? These are all around two pounds. Okay. Oh, here is the, uh, here is your fan art. I forgot to mention, I have your fan art right here. Um, thank you, the bad bartender, uh, and, and uh, the four-year-old fan I have that made this. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, I forgot her name, but thank you. As well, little Birdie Sand Birdie Sanders, Birdie Sanders. Yeah, that fan, art from the four-year-old is now an eight-year-old a lot of it of it but i'm gonna try it right now and i'm gonna tell you if it's good um or not if it's bad i'm just you've significantly decringed over the years better make me feel less uh hopeless about my life and the things that are uh, streaming station just coughing down here um and i'm running out of water too look i didn't get i didn't get enough water today i only got two more gallons but i'm running out of uh my trade maybe like 0.75 you guys want to see what my around. fucking look at what Dude. my look at what my streaming station looked like nicotine gum still the same that's how you know shit is authentic this is a real hasanabi stream a real hasanabi broadcast because look at this look at this so i had um i had books propping up i had these books that were propping up my monitors i still use one of those monitors by the way the, this one is like this one's i've had the same monitor i think from like day one i still use those same monitors the fucking low lo-fi hip-hop is literally playing in the background okay and then you do this you mix the coffee up a little bit the two coffees yeah i had reminders in uh on the wall i had the reminders on the wall to to 
not get angry. This was like, I think this was artwork that we found in the trash. Literally trash art that we put, uh, that my old roommate had found. And then we put that on the fucking, I, I just put that back there. This was my, this was my uh, one bedroom apartment days. Style, uh, earthy undertone as well. Is that a ball gag or a chew toy on the desk? No, it's, uh, it's for your, for, it's for your grip strength. I've always had some like little trinkets and shit that I play with while I'm streaming. A hint of lavender. Very good. Okay. Is this when your haters said you were LARPing as a poor person? Yes. No, no. Um, they said that when I was in the, the two bedroom with my mom. <laughs> but yeah, I think I you cook here, right? Yeah, this is me like cooking. That don't look like LARPing. You just look poor. Okay, first of all, chill. Um, I, I like I wouldn't say I was I wasn't poor. This is like three, four months into me being full time as a Twitch streamer. Okay. Just, you know, get those, I definitely, wash these I definitely chickies very up now. quickly. Okay, time to wash these little chickies up with some lemon juice. So, now this is uh, basically the, the chemical reaction that this has, I think, like, makes this. Some people use, some people use yogurt or my dad, my dad, when he's, uh, when he's marinating chicken, he uses uh, milk or yogurt. I like to go with uh, something more sour, like lemon. Not gonna lie, I tried this exact recipe you did and it was very mid. You probably didn't uh, season it hard enough. But not only that, but also you have to remember, this is literally fucking maxed out on this right here is maximum protein. LB said twelve fifty. This is maximum protein, chat. Like this is not supposed to be like. Uh, look, here's the trick that every chef will tell you, right? If you go to a real kitchen, if you go out and eat out, the real trick is butter. Okay, they put butter in everything. I know how to marinate this in a way that like will make it decadent, succulent, okay? But the reality is I'm not trying to do that. I don't put any butter in this shit at all. And I also do it with like spray oil too because I'm tracking my macros. Like, is there magic in there? Is the magic fucking released? It means it's working, you know what I mean? Okay, shake it the fuck up. Uh, and then I'm gonna let it marinate. Usually I let it marinate for like at least an hour. I like to let it sit in its own juices, get the, uh, get the marinade and the spices acquainted with the chicken, right? You know, let it, uh, let it have time to, to get to know one another and ask each other if they're gonna vote for Joe Biden after years and years and years of democratic incompetence. Like, are they still going to fucking let go of all their principles and vote for Joe Biden? Why? Because obviously there's no third party alternative. What the fuck am I going to do? Vote for Howie, he Howie Hughes or Gloria Riva at the PSL? Obviously not. That's just, that's literally throwing your vote away and giving a false sense of hope to some random crank usually. Oh, no, a lot of tankies are going to get mad at me, but I'm still talking about the chicken and the experience that the chicken is having with the fucking sauce that I'm mixing the chicken with, okay? The chicken and the sauce get acquainted and they learn about each other's politics and before before you know it, the, ch the sauce is radicalizing the chicken and the chicken is feeling like, you know, maybe Medicare for all could happen. Maybe Medicare for all could happen. Why can't we have Medicare for all? I mean, all these other comparable nations, all these other OECD nations have Medicare for all, right? That's what the chicken is saying to the sauce when they get acquainted with one another in the fucking fridge. This is why it's so funny when like, <laughs> when dudes who have been watching me for like four years will come back randomly to hate on it and be like your positions have changed it's like no they haven't dude no no they unfortunately have not you said tanky back in 2020 yeah like i i would jokingly talk about mls and shit i don't anymore because it's like all these other people are like way more cringe i still make fun of fucking you did say tankies on ironically yes i still make fun of mls all the time ultras mls i still do Yes, I don't think you guys understand. I'm a left book guy, okay? I know this shit. I, I like it, it's a very different environment out there. I, I I I'm very familiar with the terminology before uh before many of you learned about it from like fucking Vosh or Destiny or some shit. Not enough of your chat came up in early mid online leftist forums. Exactly. So that's why like that's why I talk about like uh like ultras or people who are Whenever I talk about like DPRK and they're eating hamburger in DPRK all the time, I'm talking straight up from left book. Okay. Left book used to have uh, Facebook used to have a blossoming leftist community of like some of the most insane people. I don't even know if it still exists because I don't have a Facebook account anymore. But like back then it, I, I spent so much time in those fucking circles with people 
who just like were genuinely mentally ill. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, there's no other way to describe it other than like real mental illness, <laughs> like way worse than shit that you see on Twitch. Okay, people who are just like. People who legitimately, you know where they talk about like, oh, there's feds here. There's like definitely feds in these circles. Like I, there were definitely federal agents in those groups because like there should be probably. Okay. <laughs> those were the groups that were unironically like they moved to r slash Chapa Trap House for a long time. Yeah, exactly. Dudes who are like 48 years old, like Iowa Maoists who are 48 years old, who straight up will just unironically use terms like struggle sessions. And we'll try to do that, and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll try to engage you in and try to make you yeah Jason Unruhe type beat obviously even more than Jason Unruhe people that say Jason Unruhe has betrayed the the uh, the scientific principles of Marxist Leninism anyway my point is God, Jason Unruhe fucking miss him what is he up to what's he been doing my goat my goat. Anti-NATO and Putin and U.S. Marxist commentator, psychology student. Wait, oh, he's anti-NATO and anti-Putin. Let's go. My king. Uh, left book groups are genuinely fucking insane. I was unironically told the jokes are ableist. Yeah. Oh, no, for sure. The irony, of course, is that they're all filthy little anarchists and they think there's something different. Um, you ever been on Lefty Poll? No, I, I never went on 4chan. But how the fuck do we get here? Oh, I was talking about my, my, um, my consistency, my consistent takes. And how it didn't actually change. Um, anyway. <sighs> okay, let's pop off. Let's blast off. Unless they're Revcom. Oh my god. Jason and Ruhu is also known to be a power lifter, right? I didn't know that. Um, okay, let's uh let's blast off. Let's talk about what we're gonna be talking about today. You became a girl dad, you did change. Yeah, I was a boy dad back then. Now I'm a girl dad. It's very different. This bitch. This bitch had a long ass day at the gym today. She is literally fucking laid the fuck out right now there is no way she's getting up for at least another six hours she can be sleeping for like six hours she was uh playing with both the belgian malinois that she plays with every day but also the doberman came in and and and when all when the three of them get together they're just like going crazy this is you after the summer when you're done cutting she tastes like pumpkins no this is too much this is too much this is too much information this is too much information it's going to be more like this part i'm going to be doing more of this sam Sulik collab to live to life to the left to the top baby what the fuck did you did you just have an aneurysm because i definitely did i had an aneurysm like trying to understand what you just said anyway hunter biden investigation falls flat hunter biden impeachment falling apart no kuema ka what that close up on my hair, yeah, I wanted you guys to get a good look at it. Does this look like, I kind of feel like I got the Edgar cut. Like, when I do it like this, when I leave it down like this, it looks like I, I have the Edgar cut, which is, you know, shouts out to my flexigans out there, you know what I mean? It does kind of look like that. No Kuema cut? What is that? I don't know what that is. What is, I don't know what that means. Lemme feao no Kuema cut? It's a slur? Wait, really? Am I saying a slur? Watch a TikTok. It's pronounced... Kema, no kema ka? Chat, hi ke confund. Hi ke confundirlo. You got the peso pluma cut? Yeah. He got my cut, bro. He is a Hassan too. I was a Hassan before him. It means your truck doesn't burn rubber. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, dude, I, I'm I'm a flexican, as you guys know. Like Mexican phrases that don't make sense when translated into English. No kema ka. It doesn't burn, cousin. Okay. No chemica. Okay. Bro, I'm seeing more right, and more videos much. like this shit. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty with you. I feel like Americans are just gonna like keep I don't know why, but I feel like there's a lot of Americans like leaving America and like going to live elsewhere more than before. Or maybe it's because I'm seeing like uh maybe it's just a TikTok thing. I don't know. No one says that in Mexico, only the Chicanos, yeah. These are the people that criticize you for being a champagne socialist. What is this? You aren't even American and literally live a privileged bullshit streamer life because Americans pay for you to sit on your ass and say bullshit that makes them feel superior. You haven't done shit to render aid in this crisis. No streamer has. You are doing this for the money. It's called raising money for charity. You know what? Like what speedrunners do every six months. He's donating an entire month of revenue and raising more money through charity streams. And you call that slacktivism. He's putting money where his mouth is. Have you? Most charities are scams. Full stop. Not all, mind you, but the average nonprofit is a grift. I program flight simulators for the military to train pilots, but I wouldn't come on here and flex dick about i'm doing my part we're all just bearing witness to a war beyond us 
<laughs> Ethics leaving my body as soon as I get a job offer from Lockheed Martin. Dude, what the fuck? Why are people like this? So many people are like this. Why is chat aggregating to doom scrolling to you? Yeah. They said, I'm doing my part on the side of war crimes. Like, I don't even understand what that means. Like, why would you voluntarily reveal this information about yourself? That's crazy. Don't worry. I got the blast off, Oliver. That shit is fire. Went from no kemaka to drama Twitter in like two seconds. Yeah, honestly, it's because like my community is just so mentally ill about uh, Twitter drama that they claim to be above it, but they fucking love that. I haven't watched Shogun yet. No. Um, uh, hold on. Let's uh, let me let me. I don't know if I'm going to do a JRE arc chatters this time around. Uh, Hunter Biden impeachment falling apart. What the hell else? There's a lot of news to cover and I'm like forgetting what I was going to talk about. Um, UN chief urges probing to aid convoy tragedy. Talk about where you got the shirt. No chemica. Um, hold on. Uh, Trump, the Biden on border memes, dreams, and more. It's Friday. Get in now. I, I am, I'm going to hold myself accountable and I am going to limit the amount of like hardcore political coverage today. And we are going to, we are going to do less hardcore political coverage today. And we're going to sit our asses down and we're going to do some more fun shit. Okay. Cause I know, I know how I get, okay. I know how I am as a person. Here's the blast off, by the way, let the people know. I know how I am as a person. There's like TikToks waiting in the fucking discord. Okay. Um, there's a lot happening in the world. Play the song. What song? I already played Mufasa, bro. I'm 43 minutes into the stream. The fuck do you mean play the song? Um, the thing is, I, I'm very stubborn and I can't stop thinking or talking about stuff that I think is very important. And I know that like, I probably need to, you know, cycle out of the same, like endless death spiral content over and over again. But it's just like, I can't fake it i can't i know i just like sometimes i feel like i'm one of those like older fortnite streamers who's just like perma stuck playing fortnite for children because that's just what your job is and it doesn't hit anymore but you're still doing it because and you're still saying poggers and you're still doing whatever the children demand because you're an entertainer for children and you're phenomenally fortunate obviously um but uh you know it's just kind of like a like a perma stuck hell really and then all of a sudden everything that you loved about streaming is like falling apart because you, this was a labor of love originally um that's how i feel like if i if I, if there's like a story that i know is popping and i have to cover it because it's like something that people want me to talk about but then i don't care about it at all so i can't get myself to fucking fake it like even react stuff even react stuff lately like i like there's definitely very interesting react content out there but it just doesn't hit as hard as for me, at least. I don't know. But um, motherfucker will not shut up about breaking news. Yes, I can't. I can't stop it. It's just like all I care about. I know. It's what I get passionate about. It's what I care about. Um, It's what I will, you know, I, I try to check myself a little bit. But we need more Twitch drama from you. Us drama frogs been starving. I think I've fed the drama frogs quite a bit, especially this past week. Um, Friday vibes daily northern line clip to make your day better. No. All right. Brother, this is the first sign of burnout. Take some time off. Hustle. I don't know. I think for me, burnout comes in the form of me having a hair trigger and just like yelling a lot at people. Um, very angrily, very quick to fucking fire off. I don't think I've done that as much. I'm I'm doing fine. Um, no joke. I think it's because you just need like a couple days of break to reset your brain and enjoy regular things again. Probably. For too long, the meta has been fun stuff equals reacts. We need actual fun stuff like tier list, TikToks, and shit like that. Yeah. Is your mic lower than yesterday? I don't know. I felt like that as well. I, I don't know why. It, it feels like it's, it is a little bit lower than yesterday. I don't know what happened. You think you're too comfortable? Um, can you switch it up more? Interesting IRL streams. How do you even pivot something that big? Um, am, I, am I too comfortable? Yes, I'm always. like. There's a reason why I do the same thing every day. Because I have like this process. I have this uh, process that I'm used to. And I think it's a good format overall. But... I need to do more, um, I need to do more collabs and stuff. Anyway, maybe some more Mugiwara no Goofy or Mom Piece. Have you played Detroit Become Human? It's the leftist fantasy. Yes. I just came back from Dune 2 with a friend, finding my social anxiety finally. Turns out we bonded over how we know you. I used to watch you and your uncle in the TYT days, and I said I'd watch you now to save myself from Jordan Peterson. We're Indian, and it's crazy that that happened. I hope he tunes in. We agreed that we, that we get to first know you from your haters. Oh, nice. 
Go to Japan. Go back to Texas sometime to do LVs again because it was your best stream ever. But also go magnet fishing while you're there with Otiki Will Neff and others. Instant 9 million view YouTube video trust. M HUD wants me to do magnet fishing so bad so I can find some fucking like murder weapons in the in in some goddamn Texas lake. Madeline Pendleton, you follow her already? Collab with Madeline Pendleton? Who's that? I follow them? Um, I plan on traveling. I plan on traveling to she owns the oh oh oh oh she's the co-op girl. She's the one who owns the co-op in LA. Yeah, she's dope. Um, I plan on going to Australia uh, and then Japan right after. Either two weeks in Japan, one week in Australia, or or two weeks in Australia and one week in Japan. I haven't decided yet. So that's something that I'm definitely looking into. Will says you're always two weeks away from going to Australia. No, this is like something that I've been um something that I've been interested in doing for some time now. So I will be doing it. Anyway, um, bring me young and Tina Kitten to the gun range. Just the most out of place people shooting rivals. That'd be fire. Nah. All right. All right. Enough. Enough people trying to fucking tell me what I should be and shouldn't be doing. It's like not exactly entertaining or interesting content, in my opinion, in my honest opinion. No disrespect to everybody here. I love you all, but I feel like this is uh, <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> real. I feel you are getting better and better at IRL streaming. <laughs> Thanks. Chatter. I've been doing IRL streaming for five years now like my bread and butter usually anyway do i roll stream go to a community board meeting or something go to go over ways people can get involved in their communities there are a lot of motivated people in your audience that can use a little direction yeah good thing i i all i never talk about that kind of stuff so it's good um did the china trip fall through no do another one and tavy dropped another banger the paranormal footage, footage iceberg all right biden and trump and holding competing border events at the texas border this happened yesterday i covered it extensively i think it's lame it's lame as hell that Brandon is doing that. Uh, it's just a massive, it's going to be a massive failure. Uh, really ridiculous that he is basically going back on all of his campaign promises from four years ago. And also in the beginning of his presidency, like basically every single thing that Brandon advocated for said uh, he was going to do. He is doing the exact opposite. Washington this morning. Shut the fuck up, Shelter Rosebud. Oh my God. No, we can't start with Gaza news. We're going to start with this, okay? I don't like it when you try to always ask. You are... Okay, maybe I'm burning out a little bit. Every every goddamn day, Sheltered Rosebud comes in here and is like, hey, I know you're driving the bus, but I think I should, you know, drive it a little bit. Give me the fucking stream key right now. Don't go to China. Your haters will forever bring up as proof that you are a CCP agent. I don't really care. I, they say that anyway. Who gives a fuck? Morning, the border policy is front and center. President Biden and former President Trump visited South Texas yesterday, so they had dueling events 300 miles apart. They each tried to persuade voters to support their immigration policies. Nancy Cordes is at the White House with more on the story. Nancy, it was very interesting yesterday watching the split screen to see both of them in the same location. Good morning. Start it really, and do duels it really with, was, Gail. Good morning. It was almost like a long yeah, distance a debate over what will be one of the most defining issues of this presidential campaign. Both men acknowledge that border authorities are overwhelmed by the flow of migrants into the U.S., but they had very different proposals for how to fix it. No, they didn't. What do you mean? How is the proposal any different? Joe Biden literally, this is a right wing bill. Joe Biden has a right wing bill that he's trying to desperately get to pass. And like making himself look weak in as he making himself look weak as a consequence of trying to pass a right wing bill, failing to do so, while also caving on the framing of the issue. Let's remember who the heck we work for. We work for the American people. The president and his predecessor duking it out over border policy Thursday from two different spots in Texas along the Rio Grande. This is a Joe Biden invasion. In Eagle Pass, Donald Trump slammed President Biden for rolling back his executive orders, noting that illegal crossings hit a record last year. So we had remained in Mexico. Remember that? You can't come into our country. We had no more catch and release. Our catch and release was we released them in Mexico. We need to act. It's time for the speakers and some of my Republican friends in Congress who are blocking this. The kebab game that everybody calls the kebab game is actually the supermarket simulator, right? For the record. That's the one that everyone's been playing, right? Like nonstop. I'm going to get that shit right now. Hold on. Unrelated to everything that's going on. on uh, Everything that's going on in front of your eyes. Hold up. Do you think this plan is all Biden? Because no one in any political savvy would recommend the strategy. Eh, this is very Democratic Party, to be fair. Capitulating, capitulating to right-wing framing on an issue where you will inevitably lose is like pretty basic, <clears throat> pretty basic Democratic Party politics overall. It's not actually, it's not actually that surprising. 
it's just surprising that they're doing it so flagrantly and doing it for an issue that's like 100% a right wing issue. I think that is the part that is interesting. Like this, it's like if the Democratic Party tomorrow decided that like they're they're the ones who are going to stop trans children from getting medical care. You know what I mean? Oh, oh, she just farted. So, oh, God damn. God damn. She's sleeping and she just farted so bad. Oh, my God. It just smells like straight dookie in here. Oh, my Lord. Holy moly. Oh, you are a menace, Kaya. What the fuck? Don't put the blame on her. It was you. Yeah, I'm in here by myself. This bill to show a little spine. In Brownsville, Mr. Biden accused Trump of sinking a tough new bipartisan deal that the White House hammered out with senators last month. Here's what I would say to Mr. Trump. Instead of playing politics with this issue, instead of telling members of Congress to block this legislation, join me or I'll join you in telling the Congress to pass this bipartisan border security bill. We can do it together. Immigration has emerged as a major campaign issue. Six in 10 Americans say illegal immigration is a very serious problem. Trump has promised to carry out mass deportations if he's elected. Well, absolutely, and you have no choice because this is not sustainable. The cities are going bad. President Biden is now considering his own executive action to tighten. The real problem is that the Border Patrol fucking sucks at their job. No, dude, the real fucking problem is that we don't have a legal accessible way of processing migrants that are coming over the border we don't have legal pathways for immigration so illegal immigration occurs it's that simple it's that simple it's literally that's it it's gonna happen regardless and a lot of these people that we're talking about are actually legal asylum seekers with like valid claims to begin with it that's it we have more labor demand than legal immigration supplies we, there is also no lump of labor. There is not like a finite amount of, of, of readily available jobs. With more people, we need more jobs. And we have a housing crisis, which has nothing to do with undocumented migrants, by the way, for the record, just so people understand. The housing crisis is a totally separate issue. Matching the housing crisis as though it is like a byproduct of undocumented migration into this country is ludicrous is ridiculous there yes the fixed labor lump of labor fallacy was one that was like immediately disproven i think in the 18th century by 18th century economists so it's not a it's not a real issue the real issue is the fact that uh there are there is a two-tiered immigration structure that creates a permanent underclass i will never stop talking about this okay just like the two tiers at the top of the hour those who are subscribed who don't see the three minute ad break and those who are not subscribed who do because at the top of the hour there's a three minute ad break now if you no longer want to be a part of the second tier the permanent underclass all you need to do is subscribe for five dollars or for free here's the three minute ad break now right it's that simple you can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky here's the three minute ad break now 15 million empty homes 650,000 homeless people hmm it's not even like empty homes in like bumfuck nowhere the real issue isn't uh simply that we're not I mean, there is definitely a problem with like not making the existing inventory work better, but you have to remember like in a lot of these big cities where there is massive amounts of homelessness, it is a direct consequence of the housing market being completely unaffordable for the average person. We have to institute price controls, some level of taxation that makes it so that landlording is not as profitable. That is the unfortunate reality an unfortunate reality that many do not want to uh, to, to reckon with. Sakura Gore, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. 34MKD50, thank you for the 50 gifted subs. You have to decommodify housing. Housing cannot be the only vehicle for wealth extraction. It cannot be the only we vehicle for wealth accumulation. Trump caused it? That's insane. If you think Trump caused the housing crisis, I don't know what to tell you. It is capitalism. Every fucking Democratic Party and every... Republican Party legislator has absolutely participated in this process. Gavin Newsom is the best example of this. California literally will vote for like a straight up kill landlords bill or some shit as a ballot initiative. And then Gavin Newsom will collect like 50 million, I mean, $50 billion in revenue specifically for the, the like build housing for homeless people initiative. Okay. And then Nothing will happen to that money. It'll just sit there. New scum is right. Is there a good example of a big city doing homeless right? Not in America, but yes, 
there are global examples. There are places like Singapore, which have issues with the way that they mistreat migrants, specifically migrant workers. You have places like Vienna. Austria has a phenomenal social housing structure. 65% of the homes available in the marketplace are actually socialized housing. Singapore is another example. There are, there are so many examples of this. But of course, the one consistent thing is that places that have been able to normalize their housing market and ensure that their housing market is like relatively stable almost always have tremendous amounts of government control. Is socialized but on the market? Yes, it's publicly owned housing, but uh, you rent it. My shitty ass town in the Balkans made a social housing building specifically for the poorest people around? Yes, it is something you have to do. You can't avoid it. You can't act like it doesn't exist. Why do Eastern European countries have 85 plus percent home ownership rates? Yeah, obviously it's because of socialism. It's because of the USSR. So anyway, um, what are you, why are you sending me youtube.com ad business? What the fuck is this? What is this? What, what, it, what, what do you want me to do with this? Do you want me to just watch this? What China slowdown means for us all. China's boom is over. China is, <laughs> I'm helping. Just sending me youtube.com slash at business is so funny. Incredible video crap. about how Helsinki successfully implementing a housing for housing first policy. Finland solved homelessness. Here's how. Spoiler: It's more than housing first. Yeah, housing first is the first step. Obviously, we haven't even gotten past the first step. Anyway, I can't believe we're talking about homelessness right now when uh, this is yet another issue. Battle on the Texas border. Trump and Biden drumming up support for their approach to the border crisis. Oh, my Lord. The asylum system, not unlike some of the moves his predecessor made in office. Compromise is part of the process. That's how democracy Mrs. works. Sonic, I understand. Yesterday, even as all this was going on, a federal judge temporarily blocked a new Texas law that would allow state police to arrest and prosecute people suspected of crossing the border illegally. Texas governor says he will appeal, and this case could eventually end up at the Supreme Court. Gail? Interesting offer from the president yesterday, Nancy. Join us. Let's work together on this. Let's see. Yeah, let's, uh, let's work together on fucking killing migrants. Come on. Come on. Come on. I know it's the exact opposite of what I said I was going to do four years ago, three years ago. Lefty kills hobos as long as they don't send their illegals when they do. Bro, trust me, bro. China going to collapse tomorrow, I promise. What the fuck? What is happening in my chat? This is what Biden was saying about Trump's immigration comments three months ago. Yeah, Biden campaign says Trump's repeated anti-immigration comments parroted Adolf Hitler. Biden, Trump is a rerun of Hitler on immigration, and that's why I'm eager to work together to crack down on immigrants. There you go. That's it. Hindenburg analogy intensifies. Yeah, we should maybe, like, take a step back. I'm sure Best D. Marks probably has a fucking video of this or something. And just, like... Really get into the weeds of what led up to Adolf Hitler. Because the 99% hit, uh, Hitler versus 100% Hitler analogy works, unfortunately, a little too perfectly in Nazi Germany. Like, literally, the whole, uh, w of course you would vote for 99% Hitler is so funny because, like, that did happen. And then you got 100% Hitler as a consequence of that as well. Guy I work with going hard on the military age Chinese males coming across the Mexican border theory yesterday. Yeah, there's nothing funnier to me. There is nothing funnier to me than basically people <laughs> thinking that dudes who are leaving China and coming to America fucking don't hate China and love America. It's like the same principle behind the Venezuelan migrants. Like Trump keeps talking about how Venezuelan migrants are like rapists and whatnot. And it's like, bro, they have TPS. The entire point of the Venezuelan migrants coming into the United States of America is because they, like, they fucking hate Venezuela. They hate the Chotcom government. Like, the fuck do you mean? I thought these were the guys you want. These are, like, the most right-wing motherfuckers you could get from Venezuela or from China. They literally don't think about this at all. They just simply go, they simply go, oh, that's brown. That's bad. That's it. They don't think about the politics of it. They don't think about like who's leaving or what circumstances they're leaving behind. It's so funny. There's no consideration for it at all because they're like not white, not good. That's it. I have a friend from Venezuela. He says he hates communism. I don't get it. Of course, dude, in their minds, like think about how much you hate liberalism. Okay. Think about how much you hate liberalism. Why do you hate it? Because it's the, it's literally what the world runs on and it's brought you nothing. Now imagine 
if there was a dude who was pretty incompetent overall and basically resting on the laurels and the charisma and the the political clout the social capital of the guy that came before him and was like mismanaging currency and doing a pretty bad job overall of like withstanding sanctions and then he was saying that he's a socialist communist or whatever the fuck you're gonna be like yeah this guy sucks i hate everything he represents i'm talking of course about uh madura madura okay and the person i'm talking about that was infinitely more popular than madura the person that uh, relied on uh, the the former leadership uh, uh, uh, sorry the person that came before maduro is chavez chavez controversial figure for many people in the west especially uh those uh, even that left venezuela and came to the united states of america chavez undeniably phenomenally fucking popular figure even to this day in venezuela especially amongst the the poor uh populations of venezuela for social programs so this is he was so popular that like maduro basically ran on being a chavista and and was able to captivate enough people and make them believe that he was good and uh, was going to be goaded with the sauce and have uh white boy swag but he didn't so regardless regardless I totally understand why if you're Venezuelan and you see that shit and you're like, yeah, this socialism shit sucks, bro. What the fuck? I'm out here playing RuneScape fucking gold gold farming uh, for, for the entire day so I can like make money to feed my family. Yeah, I would fucking hate the existing system or what they claim it is all day, every day. All you need to know about Venezuela's economic structure is that back when it was popping before pre-sanctions under the Chavez administration... Fox News was talking about how Venezuela is actually not socialist. France has a more socialized economy than Venezuela. Now that that shit's gone, it's like, oh, it's socialist as fuck, actually. We lied. Go back. Go back to, like, pre-2012, and you will see uh, if even Fox News and, like, the American Enterprise Institute and places like that unironically writing articles because they were popping off. They also didn't diversify fast enough. There's a lot of opposition from uh, agricultural producers that, you know, own the fucking country and own the media. These are all common examples uh, uh, that these are all common problems that you run into when you're trying to, to develop any kind of like socialist project in a hyper capitalist world. <sighs> anyway, we're not going to talk about all of that. One thing that you have to remember is that Argentina is an abject failure in almost the identical ways that Venezuela is, but because it's in the opposite direction and because it's it's inside of the uh, inside of the Western sphere of influence and not outside of it, even without the sanctions, they're fucking failing dramatically. And you have someone like Javier Malay now accelerating that rapid decline. And yet you never fucking see people talk about it on the same terms of like, this is capitalism failing dramatically. You don't because... Capitalist countries are, are allowed to fail. Look no further than the United States of America, for example. I would say abject failure, okay? If we are going to look at the USSR, for example, going from, like, potato farmers to being able to beat America in the fucking space race over the course of, like, 50 years and collectivizing rapidly with many complications that come with that, if you consider that to be successful, which I would objectively consider that to be successful, or China now, okay, I would consider those to be successful countries, like successful projects. Uh, I would definitely say that uh, America's wealth for its life expectancy and its abject failure in comparison to other OECD nations that have tremendously less than the United States of America to be an abject failure. But we don't think about it that way. We never think about it like that. We don't, we don't look at what we have and what we can do with what we have. Uh, we simply just... Look at it as America number one. Shut the fuck up. You know, what do you think makes a country great? That's a beautiful question. I think what makes a country great is how well it can provide with its resources and, and wealth, how well it can provide, no matter how limited resources may be for its poorest citizens. What is the life expectancy? What's the, what's the, uh, what, what does the healthcare structure look like? Those are, I think, very important markers for success. How happy people are, how happy they are in their in their workplace. How many how much protections do they have in their workplace? Like like a genuine assessment of the quality of life. It's difficult to do, but I think that um, 
Streaming is by far the hardest and most demanding in the world, Lamau. Thank you for agreeing. It is. It's the hardest, dude. People in oil rigs, like I said, call me up every day and they're like, Hassan, I don't know how you do it, King. I love you. Thank you so much. Literacy is another great example. Yes. So, huh, I think these are important. These are important factors. So not fully, but Denmark. Yes, I do think that social democracy is a good pathway towards that. It doesn't get all the way there. And it relies heavily on third world exploitation for it to exist. And if it wasn't for... If it wasn't for the extraction of wealth from the third world, from the global south in general, obviously a lot of these social democracies would not be able to have any of the amenities, um, just like us, obviously in the United States of America, that they take advantage of. But yes, it is definitely significantly better than the United States of America, I would say. So, and social democracy also always is basically a lifeline for capitalism because the welfare state allows capitalism to thrive and continue and inevitably it will always roll back and when it rolls back when those amenities roll back when those social safety nets roll back the people become more volatile and angry more predisposed uh to to fascist uh politics and fascism will come in to organize reorganize society uh at the interest of capital owners this is what happened in nazi germany this is what's currently happening once again in europe if you look closely at European politics, you will see this. Fascism is absolutely freaking lootly back in a big way. Okay? No matter what happens, capital owners are always going to try to eke out profits and squeeze every fucking orifice. Okay? They're going to try to get profit from anywhere and everywhere they can. And these profit sectors are going to inevitably be sectors that were owned by the state, owned and operated by the state. How do they do it? First, they cripple it, starve the beast, if you will. They say, we want to lower taxes. Then, when there's not enough money in the coffers, when there's not enough money in the government coffers, then you turn around and say, look, these systems are failing. Yeah, bitch, they're failing because you literally made it inefficient. You are underfunding it deliberately and then pointing to that failure. And then what do they do? Well, they say, we have to privatize it. So then they literally take the same money and this is neoliberalism 101. They take the same fucking tax revenue and use that tax revenue to fund the private healthcare structure, to fund the privatized version of the uh, previous social safety net that the government provided, for whether it be public transit or even healthcare. Then they take further and further funds away and say, look, the private ones are actually working better than the public ones. For maybe a short period, the private ones might work a little bit better might be more expedient, might be even cleaner, for example. But then, once the private side takes over, it's no longer cheap, it's no longer as good, it's no longer as efficient, because there's no government regulation on that front. Why would they regulate that? Uh, why would they regulate the private industry? The entire purpose of it existing is that it is deregulated. And then, before you know it, you're like, well, the roads are fucking busted. Not enough funding, remember. Uh, public transit sucks. The same route that I used to take for 10 years, no longer as efficient, no longer as fast, constant fucking, uh, constantly broken. Something is constantly uh, uh, breaking up, uh, falling apart. Why did I do this? Why is this happening? I don't understand it. I'm angry. And then someone on television says, it's the fucking immigrants. It's If you're in uh, Europe, they say, if you're in the UK, they say, it's the Poles, mate. It's the fucking Poles. It's the Muslim man. They're coming in and they're fucking ruining the country. And you go, wait a minute. Maybe it is the Muslim man's. Maybe it is the fucking Poles, mate. Brexit means fucking Brexit, yeah? It is a very, it is a phenomenally successful way to redirect the attention, right? People, in times of economic volatility, people are, are way more predisposed to reactionary politics, like I said. Now, you're angry, your, your social safety nets have run dry and you're, you're just red hot and someone on TV and someone on the internet uh, is telling you that it's actually Albanians that you should be ma angry at. It's the Muslims that you should be angry at. So you're like, fuck yeah, these guys aren't like me. Fuck those guys. Meanwhile, you should be angry at the government. You should be angry at the people that broke your fucking trains, that broke your fucking public trains, that broke your health care, that broke all of the social safety nets. No more fucking adequate council housing. But it's much easier to yell at someone who's less fortunate than you. And that's how we arrive at fascism.
fascism comes in and says, yeah, these fucking libtard pussies, they're not going to handle the fucking Muslims, dude. They're not going to handle the fucking Mexicans. I'm going to kill them. And then the Democrats turn around in the United States of America and say, no, Jack, listen, we're the going to we're going to be the kill Mexicans party. You don't understand these Democrats. They're they're not with it. They're not real. We're the real ones. We really want to kill Mexicans. And then the Republican Party hears that and goes, ha, shut the fuck up, pussy. And then they say a bunch of slurs. And then everyone's like, well, I'm going to go with the slur guy because he's been anti-Mexican from the jump. And now you're admitting that there's a problem with Mexicans. So I'm going to go with the guys who've been anti-Mexican from the start. That's it. That's how it works. And that's how you arrive at fascism. Anyway, the people poorer than me are the reason my Lord hasn't given me a raise in 20 years. Trickle down would kick it, kick in if not for the Mexicans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. This is what I understand about the radical Yimby supporting that gondola thing in LA. Like, why the fuck would you want that being done by a billionaire? I'd much rather have it be actual transit project funded by tax dollars and government accountability that privately run gondola over the city because people are dumb. Neoliberalism is the anti-chamber of fascism. Yes. Fascism is cr uh, capitalism in decay. Fascism kicks in when capitalism is in crisis because fascism restores capitalist order with the might of the, with the might and strength of the state. Huh. Stalin said social democracy is objectively the moderate wing of fascism. Anyway, hopefully that will be uh, somewhat enlightening for many who don't understand my perspective on this. I, I, I'm very principled on the matter. I've been talking about this exact same problem for years and years and years, and we're accelerating dramatically uh, towards what I see is a global fascist order. Now let's hear from Giannis Varoufakis, everyone's favorite Greek daddy, uh, Socialist economist, uh, one of the co-founders of DM25, former Greek finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis. Let's see what he had to say. Yeah, wipe the floor clean with the Labour Party, with the Liberal Party, with our own wets, and push all this in. And not only push this in, but cause an infection in the European Union. Because every cynical and oligarchic policy she introduced in this country is now in Greece, in Italy. In Portugal. The extraordinary thing for me in previous global crises, and I think World War II is probably a pretty good example. Um, I've interviewed Mick Lynch about this, and he talked about you know the sort of the people that were seen to be profiteering what, during rationing, right, going around pubs selling black market goods to make to make a profit were called spivs. They were sort of socially you know they were par pariahs, ostracised from society. Now a corporation skins the public, as you've just said, right? Mm. Colossal profits, billions. In profit, and there seems to be apathy. Uh, a, there isn't a, a popular revolt, a mass protest movement. No one is marching to the gates of Centrica or you know, take your pick. It's also infinitely easier, for some reason, infinitely easier to organize people on reactionary lines, like even the Gilets Jaunes protests in France. Right? A lot of that was some of that was about like raising the rent, uh, or not raising the rent. Sorry, raising the retirement age. Right. For everyone except for cops. Uh, but a lot of that was also about Muslims coming into France. Right. And it was really interesting to see how much easier it was to fucking organize in a country like France that has a history of revolt and revolution that they actually do care about. By the way, they are very uh, proud about uh, revolting against uh, the wealthy and the powers that control them all the time. Um, they do that. They do that all the time and they love it. Right. Fucking France is on fire every goddamn week, it seems. But the irony is, even in a place like that, it's much easier, in my opinion, to revolt against the government for allowing Muslims in or allowing immigrants in rather than revolt against the government for destroying their social safety nets. It's really interesting to think about. And I think part of that is because of how pressy, how powerful, how powerful capitalism is, that it is like rotted are our very moral fabric to its core it's just a permanent part of our existence and we cannot live in a world we cannot dream of a world where it does not exist at all it's like completely out of the question name the company demanding that they they get their money back why do you think that is is there a it's almost you know to sort of um to quote Mark, to do a bad job of quoting Mark Fisher, the sort of the lack of an ability to imagine a, an alternative political reality. <laughs> right? That this is just the capitalist system we happen to live in, and we have to we have to suffer. The yeah, crisis. he's saying uh, the famous Mark Fisher quote that I also ironically paraphrased just a second before him, which is that it is easier to imagine the end of the world than to imagine the end of capitalism. That's it. Consequences. 
May I be a bit damning about the political party? By all means. It's the fault of the Labour Party in this country. It's the fault of the, of the centre-left across Europe. This is why I rail against the Democratic Party, by the way. What he is describing right now is exactly why I rail against the Democratic Party, who, who presented itself originally as a center-left option, even though they never really were. Uh, it, is, it is even more damning in a place like Europe, where there is at least like a strong history of labor uh, and, and uh, labor unions and trade unionism. Like These are the places where there was actually robust socialist movements at a certain point in time obviously post-world war ii a lot of stuff changed but you have to remember this is the reason why i shit on the fucking left so goddamn much if you're like hassan you all you do is talk about the democratic party it's like yes because they're the ones who are supposed to give the right the reactionary right that's never going to stop being reactionary something to fight against and if they don't do that and if they just cave and capitulate if they simply just allow the right to do whatever to run the table then ultimately ultimately we're just going to go further and further right we're going to regress and that's precisely what the center left parties in europe have been doing for a very long time mm. it's the fault of the democrats in the united states when you have a social democratic party whether it's the SPD in Germany or the Labour Party here, which uh, trades in a vision of a just society. And when they come to power, they turbocharge every oligarchic policy that they've inherited from the Tories. This causes two social phenomena. One I call this calcification, okay? Uh, the, the, the concept is the ratchet effect. I like to call it calcifying reactionary policies that's what the democrats do they normalize that pain and they make it the new norm um new pet yeah this guy that says fuck socialism here's what i have to say okay you don't have to be a socialist to recognize that you need socialists okay you don't have to be a socialist yourself you don't have to be uh, a, a a marxist you don't have to be a marxist leninist but you have to recognize that in the absence of real marxist leninists that contribute to the political sphere, you keep going rightward. More and more right-wing policies will come when there's no one that is considered extreme or radical on the left that has any kind of political viability, okay? You're arguing with a dude called fard fard lol poop. It doesn't matter. One is people become apathetic and stay at home mm. and they don't want to know about politics or they become fascists. Not fascist in the sense of, you know, Mussolini's uniforms and so on, yeah, but become xenophobic, they, be, they become cynical, um, you know, they, they, they, they start believing that Brexit is going to allow them to take back on control when all it allowed was, you know, for um, Mr. Johnson to become prime minister. It is the fault of the left. And I include myself in it. It is our fault. We must blame no one except ourselves. Think of the United States in 2008. You know, Barack Obama was elected with a mandate to get rid of the Wall Street bankers and you know, bail out the banks because you can't let them fail. One of the most devastating aspects, I think I would say that if there's a point where this completely fell apart, I think it was Barack Obama. Like, I would shift the blame to someone who was so phenomenally successful and so unimaginably popular, a once-in-a-lifetime candidate with, like, like Barack Obama could have been the the black FDR, okay? He ran as though he was, by the way, for the record. If you want to understand, like, he was very charismatic, and he absolutely had very progressive policies, and they were very popular. He ran on hope. He ran on change, right? He was a neoliberal from the start, man. Guys, of course he was a neoliberal. He's the Democratic Party's candidate. I'm simply stating that while he was a neoliberal from the start, much like with Trump, which is the white man's Obama, there are a lot of things that Trump said the first time he ran for president that he never followed through on, but it made him look like a more moderate person. The races on the racism side, Trump was like kicking uh, social, uh, uh, the, the like social Darwinism and the right wing attitude and the reactionary attitude on the, on the civil liberty side all the way up, especially on immigration. But when it came down to like social safety nets, Trump is basically single-handedly destroyed the notion of deficit hawking in the Republican Party. This is very important. Nikki Haley cries about it all the time. She's like, nobody cares about, you know, our budget. Nobody cares about our budget. And it's like, 
Yeah, of course nobody cares about the budget. Nobody cared about the budget to begin with. Trump did that. And he did that because he was using left-wing economic populism, which he knew correctly was very popular. And as far as Bardock, Hussein, no bummer goes, he ran on being anti-Iraq war, closing Guantanamo Bay, providing health care for Americans, like all of this stuff that he ran on. And people believed in him. And what did he do with that momentum? What did he do with the Senate supermajority? He tried to cave and capitulate to the right when he didn't even have to. He didn't even have to be bipartisan. We're talking a very different time in American politics. Where Can you imagine the Democratic Party having a supermajority in the Senate? A supermajority in the Senate. Yeah. So just remember that. There's a reason why a lot of people hate the Democratic Party. There's a good reason for it. Because... At a time when there was no reason to capitulate to the right, Barack Obama tried, okay? He tried aggressively. There's no greater example of this than the ACA, which is Obamacare, which is a right-wing heritage foundation, neoliberal healthcare, uh, healthcare strategy that they implemented, or they, they implemented first as Romney Care in the state of Massachusetts that was invented by the Heritage Foundation in 1994 as a way to not do actual nationalized, uh, socialized health care. There was some good there, obviously, the, the elimination of uh, pre-existing, uh, the, the, uh, the fact that like insurance companies could refuse to give you coverage if you had a pre-existing condition was insane, right? There was stuff like that. The fact that you can stay under your parents' health care uh, until the age of 26, right? Oh, it was before that. It was 1989, actually. Never mind. I thought it was 1992. Nope. 1989, assuring affordable health care for all Americans. That is the real ratchet effect. That is the real, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people look at American politics and have this like idiotic notion. They're like, oh, horseshoe theory. The left becomes the right. When you go far enough left, you become far right. And it's like, no, dumbass. That's not how any of this works. We are on a rocket ship towards fascism. And the Democrats don't even fucking slow down that ship. They sometimes end up accelerating it. Back in the day, under the Obama era, it took 20 years for the Democrats to adopt a right-wing position on health care. Nowadays, it takes four for the Biden administration to adopt a right-wing position on immigration. It took four fucking years. That cycle is, is basically becoming shorter and shorter and shorter until it is going to be, there's going to be no difference whatsoever. Of course, there will still be a difference in the sense that, like, the Republican Party will keep pushing the country further and further right in an effort to differentiate themselves from the Democratic Party. And the Democratic Party will basically still uh, do everything they can to adopt the right-wing framing on issues and say, no, no, no, no, we're the ones who are going to deal with it. People's savings are in there, but we will get rid of the bankers. That was the, the, the cry call, which is what FDR, you know, Roosevelt, had actually done in 1930s. Roosevelt had liquidated the bankers, not the banks, the bankers. And that's why the bankers really hated him. What does Obama do? He takes two gentlemen, Tim Geithner and Larry Summers, who were a Clinton's duo in the, finan in the finance ministry, in the U.S. Treasury Department. The two men who had worked for Wall Street to unshackle the bankers and to let them go crazy to the extent that it brought about the 2008 financial collapse. He takes these two men and gives them a mandate, save the bankers. And they print together 12 trillion American dollars to save the bankers. Do you know what the result of this is? This is a rhetorical question. Donald Trump. That, I mean, it's, it's natural. I understand the blue-collar workers that Hillary Clinton deplorably called the deplorables. Yeah. Yeah? When they say, look, we tried you. I mean, the idea that, it, it, that Trump was elected on the wave of racism, that's rubbish. Black people who voted for Barack Obama in 2012, 2008 and 2012, they voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why he got elected. There aren't enough racists and fascists in, in, in, in the United States to elect. That's not true. I think every, most people in the United States that vote are like racist and, and maybe even fascist. They're just not ideologically racist and fascist. Like they don't understand that they are racist and fascist. They just say, I think there's a distinction between dudes who fucking do the racism theory and like are nerds for racism versus like the run of the old regular, uh, regular old racist guy in a country where there is no left wing momentum, when there's no like actual uh, counterweight to capitalism, most people are going to be like varying degrees of, of, of fascist. Okay. It's the, it's the, your uncle versus like the groiper online. The difference between the groiper online 
who's read like culture of critique or whatever and believes that like you know uh, jewish cabals are running the banks or and that's the reason why there's so much undocumented immigration because like the jews are doing the great replacement is that your uncle also believes that the great replacement is happening because he's hearing that on fox news but he doesn't have like the reading the extra nerdy reading to like justify it doesn't care he's just like kind of a vibes based guy obviously you can change your uncle's mind probably a little bit easier than the uh the racist theory nerd right but functionally they are running on the same attitude my dad is an 80s liberal that will vote for really progressive stuff and the same breath start ranting about black people he doesn't understand truly my dad was a crazy and brutal punk for screwing the border this was back in 2012 called leftist fascist he isn't well read enough to know he's literally a fascist for wanting to leave dead bodies as a deterrent for migrants that is insane but that's what i mean like like that is like that's just straight up nazi shit right like that's just like straight up fucking warlord shit but like that dude has no fucking idea that he is like no different in his politics than a, than a Nazi. That's the median voter, dude, in the United States of America. So for uh, Giannis to say that like racism and white supremacy doesn't play a significant role in this, no, it does. It certainly does. But the actual materialist analysis here is that racism plays a really good role when there's a void for an actual structural analysis of why the things are broken in the way that they are and why you're hurting financially. So he's both right and wrong at the same time. He's right in the sense that it's not just the deplorables and the racists, because there's plenty of them on the liberal side as well. We saw how quickly they fucking changed their attitude on immigration. Think about that. Think about how quickly they took on a Trumpian role. All it took was for Biden to say, I want to fucking fix the border. That's it. So they have that dog in them too, okay? They have that dog in them, certainly. The liberals, I mean. But the reason why everyone has that dog in them is because that's the only thing they see and it's the only thing they know and it's the only way to address the issues. I feel like I don't even know my own party and you know I'm a dem writer with no pay stubs. Yeah, well, I have been uh, a, a Democratic Party critic very vocally for the past 10 years. So I, I have like historical information that I have personally covered from 10 fucking years ago that is an identical issue that the Democratic Party, an identical trapping that the Democratic Party falls in. That's why. You can be a Democratic Party dick rider with no pay stubs, but ultimately, um, you know, if you've only if you've only been paying attention for like the past four years, you have to remember like a lot of the stuff that you think are new is not new at all. Back to the present, even with a stupid electoral college system that they have. Mm. So not a single person wants to listen to a 24 year old school you on politics. They just think you're just calling them racist, which doesn't help if they think they aren't racist. Yeah, of course. Also, you shouldn't even just fucking tell them that, like, they're racist anyway. It's not a good way. You're just shutting them off from the conversation. No racist person thinks they're racist or wants to think that they're racist because they also understand that racism is bad. They understand that fascism is bad. They understand that Nazism is bad until they have reached the point of, like, uh, being the, the theory-reading nerd for racism. Like, if you're, if you're a weeb for Nazi shit, then at that point, you're, like, yeah, you're, you're adopting the Nazi position. But that's... You know, that's not exactly uh, important in the grand scheme of things. Like, most Americans are not like that. You know, in, in my country, when we presented, when I say we, I mean Syriza, the coalition of the radical left party, um, to which I belonged and, you know, with which I was elected to parliament in 2015 and became finance minister. We offered the people, after they had tried all different alternatives, we offered, as you put it, um, a meaningful, coherent alternative Okay, the rest of this is not interesting. Uh, he just goes back to France. Uh, but yeah. Um, anyway, now, of course, names of victims allegedly killed by illegal immigrants, dude. Remember, remember, this is right wing framing on immigration to say that like undocumented immigrants are actually doing crimes and that's why we have to deal with it. Okay, that's why we have to deal with it is fucking pure racist nonsense. Just understand. It is no different than being like names of victims allegedly killed by black people. Just so you understand. And ironic because like that's what they used to do on Breitbart. Breitbart literally used to have when Ben Shapiro used to write there, by the way. Ben Shapiro was a writer for Breitbart. For those of you who don't remember the old lore, they had a tab called Black Crime, which simply wrote about black people doing crime. They did. They had a black crime tag on their fucking website. Think about that. Now we're doing illegal immigrant crime, which of course is not real. The mythical tie between immigration and crime from the Stanford Institute of Economic Policy Research. 
I assume that they are going to show many of the studies that have been conducted on this matter throughout the years, which, for those of you who don't know, absolutely unequivocally show that undocumented migrants, as a matter of fact, are responsible for less crime per capita than natural-born U.S. citizens. So the notion that they are actually doing more crime is ridiculous. Is ridiculous. So there is no empirical data for this at all. As a matter of fact, it shows the exact opposite. Why the fuck is the Democratic Party not saying that all the time? Talking about misinformation. Talking about how the right is being racist as fuck on this issue. And leaning into the anecdotes. We are becoming dumber as a nation every single fucking day. Every single day. Every day that we don't combat this misinformation, we are caving to the right. We are becoming stupider and stupider and stupider day in, day out. You might as well cave on the fucking anti-vaxxer shit too then. You might as well cave on everything. It is really, really dumb. We did it on crime already. The Democratic Party caved on crime. They said, you're right, crime is, is out of control. Crime is out of control. Oh my God, these Democratic, these Democrat run cities that we are running are actually causing crime to be out of control. We are defunding the police. We're defunding the police. We gotta stop that. No police was defunded. Crime wasn't fucking out of control, but the mainstream media ran with that narrative all the way from local news all the way up to the tippy top at MSNBC. And what happened? Americans believed that crime was skyrocketing. That wasn't the case at all. Crime has always decreased. Since the 90s, crime has decreased in the United States of America. That is consistent, okay? Violent crime, property crime, all of that. There was a minor blip that was made into a massive problem by the media post-COVID. And there are still people who do this. Look, look, what about Oakland? There are like no retail stores anymore, not even an In-N-Out. Every single, first of all, there are retail stores in Oakland. That is an insane thing to say. This is no different than a fucking Republican saying, Portland's on fire, brother. Like you're basically stating, uh, Portland's on fire, brother, he's on fire. You don't understand, like Seattle's on fire all the time. Like what the fuck? I was fed this by TikTok, lol. Exactly. Exactly. It's propaganda. It's ridiculous. It's not real. And almost all of the, the retail crime aspect of this is pretty funny because I immediately called it out for propaganda. I, I immediately called it out. As soon as the retail stores were like, we're closing our stores because of crime. I was like, nope, that's a lie. That's fucking bullshit. They're closing their stores for financial reasons. It has nothing to do with shrink. It has nothing to do with shrink whatsoever. There is no fucking way it has anything to do with shrink. But every goddamn week, there's another story. Walgreens uh, closing because of uh, retail, organized retail theft. Uh, CVS closing because of organized retail theft. No, it's fucking real estate prices, dumbass. It has nothing to do with organized retail theft at all. Shrink has not increased. Uh, shrink has not increased dramatically over the years in comparison to, to like shrink always increasing when shopping increases. That data has remained stable. And a lot of the shrink increases are not exactly a consequence of organized retail theft. They're a consequence of machines. They're a consequence of self-checkout. That's right. Because the billions of dollars in theft in retail do not come from organized retail theft. It comes from every fucking Tom, Dick, and Harry sneaking in a Snickers bar at the fucking self-checkout. And the store owners know this. They literally know this. That's why they built the shrink in. The irony, of course, is that that messaging is so, so omnipresent that people literally do not see it when the Walgreens CFO quietly says, hold on, apologizes. Let's see if I can. Yeah, maybe we cried too much over shoplifting, Walgreens executive says on January 7, 2023. New York Times, which participated in this madness, literally wrote an article being like, why are Americans so crazy about crime? I don't know where it is. I can't find that article. I remember though. Uh, yeah, retail group retracts startling claim about organized shoplifting. There it is. Lobbying group overstated how much organized shoplifting hurt retailers. By the way, for the record, I was right on this. I was massively vindicated on this. Uh, I, I kept fucking saying like, you guys are so stupid. You're not looking at the data. You're not looking at the data. You're not looking at the data. And it didn't matter. So many people are like, fuck you, dude. You're just over you. You are such an out of touch liberal living in the fucking heart of wealth in Los Angeles. When like half the crime they're talking about is literally in my fucking backyard. There'd be motherfuckers in here being like, oh, uh, excuse me. You don't know about West Hollywood crime. It's like, no, bitch. 
I live in it. There's nothing. You're out of your mind. It happens all the fucking time. It's a normal part of living in a fucking city. You just see it more because of these goddamn apps like like uh, the, the, the neighborhood snitch apps, okay? And also local news. So your fucking brain is broken. It's happening in my fucking backyard. I got motherfuckers living in Iowa telling me in West Hollywood, in the heart of the crime in Los Angeles, telling me how bad it is actually. Ridiculous. I mean, it's the same with Jank. Jank fucking lost his mind on crime shit too. Everybody did. Everybody lost their goddamn minds. We'll keep scrolling that. Joining us now, though, for the hour is former President Donald Trump is with us. Sir, thank you for being with us. And from the day you came down the escalator, this was a big issue. You were attacked right out of the box, you know, that day when you came down that escalator on this issue. Well, I was hearing about it from a lot of people, and it was one of the primary reasons in 2016 that I ran, and I ran on the border, and I ran on other things, but I ran on the border largely, and... Look at that. Oh, by the way, uh, gay fellatio incoming. Okay, this is going to be a suck fest. You know it. Sean Hannity has been waiting for this moment. He's like, oh, my God, I love you, sir. Give me your thick loads. Same here in the Bay Area. So sick of it. Every time I talk to tourists, they tell me we thought it would be hell here. Yeah, dude. Yes. The greatest fucking lie that the American right and the mainstream media ever told to the rest of the country was acting like these fucking cities in the United goddamn States of America, these massive urban centers, where a shit ton of wealth exists, by the way, are actually crime-ridden shitholes that are on fire all the time in comparison to the fucking rural farmland. It is ridiculous. That's why motherfuckers think Southside of Chicago is a war zone when Chicago or New York City don't even crack the fucking top 10 on violent crimes. California gun violence is significantly lower than the national average. Same with New York. I wonder why. Even even Illinois. Illinois is obviously stuck in between the ass cheeks of states where you can fucking buy a gun at the age of five or whatever. So obviously there's a little bit, a little bit of a difference there, but it still doesn't matter. Ultimately, ultimately, these places are not like the crime and the shitholes. It's just been presented as, uh, as that. And it blows my mind that so many people don't even scratch the surface. We have a crisis of media literacy in this country. We have a crisis of intellectual incuriosity in this country. No one wants to literally look at the actual fucking facts of the matter. They just want someone to tell them a lie. Yeah, just tell me a lie that reconfirms my biases. It's like, what is happening? And we're getting dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber as a consequence of that. It's not just TikTok brain. There's like good shit on TikTok and there's bad shit on TikTok. You know what I mean? It's what you consume. What I'm talking about is like the reactionary mentality because I, I, I think lying oftentimes is done by capital owners and, and the media that represents the interests of capital owners at the behest of capitalism. So I think that that kind of massaging of the narrative, massaging of the truth is, is done to, to dull the masses, to make them dumber, and to, to feed them these little narratives that actually present the world in a very different way. You said this a while ago, but people think internet content and memes is a shortcut to intelligence, so people don't feel like they need to dive deeper. Yes, they do. Everyone wants to sound intelligent. They want to sound smart, so they look for people who feed them this narrative. Some people in here do it as well, obviously. That's like part of the reason why you watch me because you want to like repeat the things that you hear from me, which is why when people say Hassan lies all the time or Hassan gets things wrong, that actually works on a lot of dumb motherfuckers who are like, oh, well, I was trusting him because I was repeating the things that he was saying. And if there isn't enough, like, if there isn't enough information out there to show that I've been vindicated a million times over and you only see like one fucking clip out of context uh, saying that I lie or saying that I'm wrong, then you're going to be like, well, I don't want to watch him anymore. I'm going to go watch this other guy who seems correct all the time because everyone just simply cares. The broadest majority do not have fundamentals. They do not have the, the ideological predisposition. They do not care about the actual policies. They just want to sound smart. That's it. Uh, we fixed the problem, and in 2020, it wasn't even a subject. I'd go out, I'd say, I want to talk about the border. They'd say, sir, you fixed the border. Nobody cares about the border anymore. Now what's happened is since uh, the election, where we got millions more votes than we did the first time, we have a situation where this border makes 2016 look like baby stuff. It's probably the worst border. Not probably. It's the worst border ever in the history of the world. There's never been a border where 
15, 16, maybe 18 million people have already crossed. And I think nobody. Yeah, it's wild to be talking about this, this shit, by the way, when the largest wildfire in Texas history is like happening, like record breaking. You do lie. You lied that time. You said you weren't interested in today's ICJ press release of Nicaragua ta taking Germany to court for genocide. Yes. I also, well, there's all, there's at least one air avenue where I will always tell you the truth. And that is at the top of the hour. There's a three minute ad break. Okay. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free. Oh my God. He looks so fucking dead. Every time I see him, Christian Amanpour privately confronted CNN leadership about double standards on Israel coverage per leaked recording obtained by the intercept. Yeah. Um, I knew that this was happening behind the scenes. I, I'll say this much. I know some people that are producers and I have heard directly from them about how fucking frustrated they are that like the Israeli authorities they have on literally lie all the fucking time, all the time. They're like, they're like sitting there and they're like, this guy, I know he's lying. Like, what are we doing? What the fuck's going on here? Like, what the fuck? What are we doing? We know these motherfuckers are coming on to just serve us bullshit. And they keep getting, they keep giving us wrong information. Why the fuck do we have these dudes? Anyway, here's the three minute ad break now, by the way. That, I wasn't lying about that. Yeah. Um, this is insane. This is LBJ Nixon W second term shit. Oh my Lord. Anyway, let's finish this off. Nobody has any idea what the number is. You know, the gotaways, they don't know what the gotaways are. We have millions and millions of people and they come from jails and prisons. They come from... Uh, mental institutions and you know a step above that the insane asylums and you you just it's just hard to believe and you have terrorists coming you know this man is bitch about trump 24 7 365 and the wall was built before he was in office who cares move on there's such bigger fish to fry hunter biden collusion gets rolled over because the fbi is trustworthy wait what yes i think we have hogs in the chat now oh my god the closer the election gets the more we're gonna see right-wing people Oh my God. Yes. Finally. I love you. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Yeah. I famously am a big fan and a, and a committed defender of the FBI. I don't know if you know this or not about me. One couple things about me. One, uh, diehard defender of the democratic party Two, definitely, uh, always 24 seven round the clock. Talk about Donald Trump. And last but not least love the FBI. I'm so excited. Can you get a couple of your fucking friends to also join the show? Oh, I'm I'm legitimately excited. I'm legitimately excited to have hogs back in here. Cause like I hate it when some fucking dipshit who's like, I'm a liberal and I think you are a racist Muslim Islamist fundamentalist terrorist who should go back to his country for not voting for Joe Biden. Like I hate that. That one lasers my fucking brain. But when I get a hog in the wild and they're like, Yeah, Hunter Biden did gay sex with his dad. And the FBI is hiding it because they did gay sex too. I'm like, yes, yes. I missed it. I missed that kind of thinking outside of the box thinking. Fuck a hog in the wild, baby. <laughs> oh. You know, I, I've noticed uh, as somebody that watches your show. I you can't say you don't lie when you get proven wrong. Then you stick by your narrative. Al Ahli Jadam. Yes, dude. You definitely have uh, represented yourself as a uh, <laughs> genuine party who is interested in Israel's genocidal campaign by fucking bringing up an unsubstantiated aspect of Israel's very, very fucking devastating genocidal campaign in Gaza. Don't ban this guy yet. I want to hear what his uh, takeaway is from this. Israel has blown up every fucking hospital, uh, maintained a siege on every fucking hospital in the Gaza Strip since then, okay? Including when they did actually shell the Al Ahli hospital two days prior to the Al -Ha Ahli uh, blow up. Okay. The Al Ahli explosion. This is what I'm talking about when I say I hate these fucking smarmy, annoying liberals who try to maintain a veneer of intellectual curiosity when it's all fake. It's just nothing. It's just here. It's just here to, to, to recycle the same old fucking narratives and derail over and over and over again. Come on. What's your response? I'm pro-Palestinian, agree that Israel is committing war crimes, but lying about crucial things turn genuine arguments on the pro-Palestine side has? Yeah, you're not. You're not pro-Palestine. You're, you're not. Because if you were pro-Palestine, you would probably be spending most of your time in Destiny's community, which you probably do, shitting on him for being a fucking genocidal warmonger. But instead, you watch one fucking drama farmer who also has no interest in understanding the truth at all, and you came in here and repeated a narrative that you don't know anything about. Okay. To this day, the Al Ahli Hospital, which is one hospital out of many of the hospitals that Israel has sieged, has been a 
mech, uh, has been a mechanism for distraction. That's it. And if you were truly pro-Palestinian, you would shut your stupid fucking mouth on being like, oh, remember when you said El Ali was a JDAM? Because none of that was proven. We still don't know what happened in that situation. And according to forensic architects, a new research came out that disproved the unspent fuel narrative as well. Not that it fucking matters. It doesn't matter. You want to know why it doesn't matter? Because 30,000 people have been killed by Israel. 30,000 Palestinians have been killed by Israel. The majority of them are women and children. And you are still stuck on one of the 11 hospitals that have been sieged since Israel started its ethnic cleansing campaign. Your priorities are so unimaginably out of whack because everyone here understands that you're not actually interested at all in the truth. You're not actually interested at all in putting an end to this genocide. You are not pro-Palestinian at all. How does this monkey have 20,000 viewers? I thought streaming was too hard on you. I have 20,000 viewers and I will never stop regardless of how hard streaming might be sometimes because of dumbasses like you. Anytime someone calls me a monkey or anytime someone says you Islamist fundamentalist terrorist go back to Turkey, you've put another decade on my streaming career. I will continue out of pure spite. Okay? That and also because like this is an actually pro-Palestinian community unlike this fucking dumbass. See, notice how different it is when we got like these absolute limp dick losers in here. That's the difference. Limp dick losers who present themselves as liberals are nowhere near as entertaining, creative, or as funny as like a real hog in the wild who comes in here to be like, hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. Hunter Biden's doing gay sex. And that's illegal. A lot. I think you're, I think you do a fantastic job, but you say 100% certain. I hate to hear it that we're going to have a big attack at some point. Uh, yeah, that you're 100 I, I, It's the funniest and dumbest fucking thing to be like, uh, I'm pro-Palestinian. And that's why I'm still talking about an unsubstantiated, unconfirmed lie backed by Israel that like the El Ahli hospital was actually an unspent rocket that exploded in the fucking courtyard that we still don't know what fucking happened, by the way, to this day. And we will never know, most likely. And I'm still talking about that, even though 30,000 Palestinians have been fucking ruthlessly slaughtered by Israel. I'm pro-Palestine, by the way. No, you're not. Everybody knows you're not, you fucking idiot. If you're pro-Palestine, you'd be fucking freaking out at Rabbi Shmuley, who, like, last week was talking about how, like, Palestinians fucking cut off people's titties and shit and played uh, uh, soccer with them. Well, you're not, because you're not pro-Palestine at all. You just want to use that as a talking point to make yourself seem like you're actually on the side of everyone here. <sighs> that does feel good to fucking shit on losers like that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Remember when Israel dressed up as... Remember when the IDF dressed up as fucking doctors to go assassinate a dude in a hospital? Motherfuckers who were like, I'm pro Palestinian, by the way. Look, look, look, look, look, look, look. Yes, but the issue is that Israelis have an Al Ahli talking point that they can use to say everything is misinformation. No, you dumb fuck. Israelis have been lying since day one. If you truly believe that you are pro Palestinian in your fucking heart, you would recognize that Israelis literally lied about the Al Ahli hospital. They lied. They lied then. Every single fucking point of information that they brought forward was false, was immediately destroyed. And you're still talking about the Al Ahli hospital. You are not pro-Palestinian. You are pro-Israel and you're terrified of openly recognizing that because you recognize that this is the one community where there is actually a lot of fucking, there's, there are a lot of actual pro-Palestinian people in here. Don't try to fucking massage it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yes, but the issue is that Israel's have an Al Ahli talking point that they can use to say everything is misinformation. You have decent takes most of the time, but you very obviously make Western slash leftist propaganda most of the time. Cancel Assange Champagne Socialist Trust Fund, baby. How big was your trust fund? I don't have a trust fund. And he's a European too. So what happened? Because it seems like you just come in here exclusively to repeat whatever the fuck you saw on Twitter. Every single thing that Israel has said since day one, including narratives on October 7, have been falsified. Now, of course, I'm much more understanding of the narratives that were launched on October 7 because it was in the heat of the moment. And it wasn't, you know, a lot of a lot of investigation is required to fully calculate the death toll and everything like that. So I don't, you know, I don't think that that is an issue to the same degree. But they've continuously lied. They've historically lied every single fucking time about all of their military actions. So if you're actually pro-Palestinian, you probably would have recognized that a long ass fucking time ago. There is no one who, anyone who says they are pro-Palestinian 
and is still talking about fucking the Al Ahly explosion at the Al Ahly hospital is just either lying to themselves or trying to do a very fucking silly little way, uh, a very silly little propaganda point to try to get your take on what I saw on Twitter. Yeah, you try to get my take on what you saw on Twitter, which is that I have a trust fund. I don't. Anyway, I don't doubt that this person is uh, pro Palestine. They just think they're smarter than thou. They want to appear as smart because the internet, what it means from a smart is to think like a centrist. These people are hella annoying because they put up the false veneer to appear smart. No one thinks that this is smart. If you're still bringing up Al Ahli right now, which is unconfirmed regardless, okay? If you're still bringing that up, you are not a smart person at all. You are the biggest dumbass because the one fucking group that is like openly fucking lying about everything that they've done every single goddamn day whether it be destroying cemeteries whether it be destroying all matter of civil life in palestine and then lying alongside the entire fucking way you're duped you're an idiot you got duped by israel you got duped by fucking cnn even cnn is basically fucking turning on israel at this point and you're still duped i could fucking you know jiggle some keys in front of your eyes and i could fucking misdirect you like that oh <sighs> anyway can't believe we're still talking about this dumb shit dude holy fuck let's get back to the goddamn border baby i pray that i'm wrong yeah you're probably right and that's a very sad thing but i've heard you say it a few times that i said i'm not going to dispute it i hope you're wrong but there's a certainly come on israel must have told the truth about something yeah israel only fucking tells the truth when it's like uh it, it, when it's hebrew commentary from benjamin netanyahu or itamar ben Gvir talking to israelis about how much death and destruction they are going to fucking pummel Gaza with. But Western focusing, uh, Western focus commentary always is Hasbra. It's always for a Western audience and they're failing on that front too. Yeah, they told the truth when they uh, admitted that they killed their own hostages who were waving white flags because they weren't sufficiently Israel, I Israeli looking. A good chance. They're coming from numbers and countries that we wouldn't believe. So you have 28,000 from China, all fighting age. You don't see women and you don't see men much older than that. It's from 18 to 25, 26 years old. And there's something going on. And they're coming from Yemen that we're bombing. They're coming from the Congo, from prisons in the Congo. The only good thing is it makes our prison. So they're coming from Yemen that we're bombing. Uh, <laughs> I, this is why I love people that think that Trump is like um, a based anti-imperialist or whatever, like a war, uh, not a war hawk, but a dove. And it's like, you you think he wouldn't fucking bomb Yemen right now? Are you kidding me? He'd be putting his dick in. He would literally be sending troops into fucking Gaza, okay? Just so people understand. Like, this just look like very nice people. Just like dumbasses everywhere, you know? In every facet of American existence and in every orifice of American politics, there's like a fucking unique dumbass who is united, whether they are liberal, whether they are Democratic Party voters, whether they're conservative, whether they're Republican Party voters, they are all united on the same principle that they fucking get news on TikTok and on Facebook and are misinformed and they come up with their own conclusions and they think, well, I'm an American. I'm exceptional. I'm an American. I'm an individual. And because of my hyper individualism and American exceptionalism, I come up with a take. You have to listen to it. You have to take it seriously, no matter how fucking stupid it is, no matter how misguided it is. And it doesn't even fucking matter because I came up with it and I'm a goddamn American. You have to listen to me. No, I don't. You're dumb as fuck people i'll tell you because these are rough people that are coming in when you see them from venezuela fighting having fist fights with the cops we never saw that you'd see cops be a lot of bad things happen to cops but you never saw people standing in the middle of a street with in a fist fight and if that happened in their country they'd kill them within seconds they wouldn't allow it they wouldn't stand for it so it's a very terrible thing what's our country is being poisoned we're really being poisoned they're killing and cops it's hard to believe, you know, as a business guy, you always want to understand the other side. I want to understand what is the other side thinking, even if you disagree. I don't know what they're thinking because who can want... Yeah, I don't know what they're thinking either, brother. Uh, preach. What are they thinking? They gave me the greatest gift of all. They looked at my psychotic rhetoric on immigration and said, no, we are going to be the ones who say what Trump is saying about immigration is real. Want this. Who can want millions of people from lots of bad places pouring into our country and you're right we have not seen this is just the beginning you know we're, we're just starting to see i call it migrant crime i really call it biden migrant crime but it's too long so let's just call it migrant crime and everyone's going to know it's because of biden but we've never had anything like this we have an inflow of people at numbers that are unbelievable and you go back to new york and you see hundreds of thousands of people and you can see look the mayor is trying 
he wants to do a job, but it's just, it's impossible. Well, he made the city sanctuary. They, they made New York City a sanctuary city. I want to go back to what you referred to what I've been saying, because I point out, we'll put it up on the screen, uh, the numbers of people coming from Iran, the number one state sponsor of terror, yep. their satellite Syria. Yep. You have the home of the Muslim Brotherhood, Egypt. Thousands came coming from Egypt that we know of. Yep. Thousands coming from Afghanistan. Now Al Qaeda has training camps up again. Then, you know, over 10, 12, 14,000 from Russia. And I read recently over 37,000 recently from China. Now, why would they make that long journey to our southern border and my fear is that we are, we have in this country, because these illegals are not vetted, I fear that terror cells have set up in this country that will plot, plan, scheme the, the next 9-11 or worse. I pray to God, as I said, I'm wrong. I don't think I'm wrong, Mr. President. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, undocumented immigrants coming over the border are fucking going to do the next 9-11. Fuck. Holy moly, dude. Dude. Listen, 911 to Electric Boogaloo 100 P puts us in full fascism territory. Okay? 2001 was an accelerant, uh whether it be the Patriot Act, whether it be the creation of the ICE within the Department of uh the Department of Homeland Security and ICE, remember? Those are not like this is relatively new in American history, okay? But goddamn, dude, that 911 2 would be like, "All right, that's it." Especially under Trump is is so He's horny thinking about that. He's like, yeah, I can't wait for the CIA to do another 9-11 when I'm president so that we can, so that I can be God King. Nobody will ever arrest me for the little minor crimes that I do for fun. Bro, Trump would kick your ass out of our, from our beloved country. God bless USA. Yeah, no, he can't. Cause I'm a motherfucking American citizen and you can't take that away from me. No matter how hard you fucking try, bitch, you can cry all you want. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious. What the fuck? Muslim Brotherhood Egyptians Lamont dude, religious folks don't go to America, only Egyptian liberals do. Yeah, that's the other part. Like many of the people that are coming in to the United States of America from these countries like Venezuela literally hate Maduro. The people that are coming in from China, I don't think are too fond of China. Why the fuck would they leave China if they were fond of China? You want those guys. If you're right wing, if you're reactionary, if you hate China, you want those guys in America. What the fuck? Well, China has, as of today, 29,000 young men, for the most part, uh, in our country for the last three or four months. And there's something going on. Look, there's something going on. Now, hopefully, we don't have that problem with China. I always had a good relationship with China until the COVID came in. That was a step too far. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China. No president took in 10 cents, not 10 cents. And we... Uh, you know, we still got along with them. But when you look at this and when you look at other countries, we have a lot coming in from. Most immigrants hate the illegal immigrants because they think they make them look bad. Mm. Not most immigrants. Some do. Partially because they are. If if you have legally immigrated into the United States of America, and I'm at the peak of that, right? As someone who was legally born inside of U.S. soil, I know for a fact that most immigrants that are able to come here legally are coming from relatively affluent backgrounds. The undocumented immigrants that are coming here are not. That's it. Remember, this country has a direct policy of giving you a fucking green card automatically back in the day for purchasing $500,000 worth of property, okay? Like, that's it. There are obviously still, like, green card lottery winners and shit like that, but that, that process is, like, that process is very, very difficult to... To, to come in uh, to the United States through as well. And it's gotten increasingly worse over the course of the last uh, couple of decades too. Whether I have 500K property and do not have a green card, that's 100% based on the lottery system for us too. No, I'm, uh, this, is, this is the old way. I think, what is it, an EB-5 visa or something? It, it, that number is increased now, by the way. Yeah, it's called EB-5 Immigrant, the Immigrant Investor Program. USCIS administers the EB-5 program. Under this program, investors and their spouses and unmarried children under 21 are eligible to apply for lawful permanent resident, becoming a green card holder. Make the necessary investment in commercial enterprise in the United States and plan to create or preserve 10 permanent full-time jobs for qualified U.S. workers. This program is known for as EB-5 for the name and the employment-based fifth preference visa that participants receive. Congress created EB-5 program in 1990 to stimulate the U.S. economy through job creation and capital investment by foreign investors. By, in 1992... Congress created the Immigrant Investor Program, also known as the Regional Center Program. 
the I think the number is increased now though. It's not just like bro, I think the Turkish people miss you a lot. You should visit them and buy a one-way ticket there. This guy's awesome. Keep crying, bitch. I think I realize that like nothing fucking nothing pisses off dumb reactionary America is more than a dude who came here when he was 18 fucking years old and literally has citizenship. Okay. And and is like owning the the capitalist structures that have destroyed them for obvious reasons. But that dude is Turkish, by the way. You want you want to know how I know that from this? Only Turkish people write like that. That's like how that's how like uh Turkish motherfuckers laugh <laughs> like that. Anyway, Moran, we have a lot coming in from you know places that we're fighting right now. You know, here go the bombs. You don't have to have bombs. We had no war. As the first one, 78 years we had no war other than I defeated ISIS. We knocked out ISIS. We took out the leading terrorists in the world, both of them. Took them out, gone. And now... Baghdadi, Soleimani, yep. the now, yeah. leader of uh, Al-Qaeda in Yemen. Al-Baghdadi and Soleimani, the worst in the world. Worst in the world. And uh, you look at it and you look at what's going on with our country. He's like, we took out both sides. We took out Al-Baghdadi. And then we took out the... The number one killer of ISIS in the region. We were like, we're killing everybody. I tell you, you come to Texas, this is now a war zone. And they view it as a war zone. And Mexico's doing nothing to help us. They're letting the caravans come unimpeded. I mean, they come in by the thousands. You have caravans with 25,000 people in them just walking into our country. So something has to be done. The problem you have is Arizona. You have a governor, a very liberal governor, that a lot of people say shouldn't be the governor. And in uh, California, Newsom's doing a terrible job. He's doing, I mean, other than talking about how wonderful it is, that's about it. You have an outflow of people, as you know better than anybody. I saw your show with him. I said, you know, this guy's talking about California. Millions of people are coming in through California. Free yeah, once again, <laughs> they're talking about this in Eagle Pass, which, which created a constitutional crisis because Governor Greg Abbott said, I'm taking immigration on my Texas border into my own hands. It is no longer the federal government's responsibility while simultaneously saying California, also a border state taking immigration to their own hands is actually a no, no and unacceptable, which is hilarious because in one state immigration is used as a, a uh, way to claim that there's a massive problem in the country. And in the other state, you rarely ever hear about it. You rarely ever hear about it. So it's, <laughs> Just so you understand, it's not it's not states' rights. There's never been a real thing. Um, that's never been a real concept. States' rights only takes you so far. They only use states' rights as a way to hide the agenda, which is, uh, you know, whether they want to own slaves, like in the Civil War, or whether they want to, you know, punish immigrants further. Yeah. Notice how nobody from California is like, oh, my God, massive wave of undocumented migrants coming over the border. What the fuck are we going to do? California is a ginormous state. They even get mad that Gavin Newsom, for all of his fucking failures, like uh, the Panera scandal that's popping off right now, the, the bakery carve out for minimum wage, $20 minimum wage that he gave to one of his homies, um, for all of those uh, obvious glaring problems in the state, they also yell at him for allowing, uh, uh, for allowing undocumented migrants to basically get, uh, basically get like some semblance of social safety nets in the, in the state with our fucking tax dollars. You ask the Californians, they don't give a fuck. They're like, yeah, these guys make the state better. They're just trying to survive. Which is true, by the way. Why is it that California, a blue state, doesn't have the same issues with migration? We're a fucking border state. We got hella migrants coming in from the border. Why don't we have, even the illegals don't want to go to Cali law? Yeah, dude, it's so disastrous one of the wealthiest fucking states in the goddamn country you put some you put some fucking respect on this pussy ass libtard bicoastal elite state okay we carry the rest of the goddamn red states suck my dick i hate that shit people are like oh california sucks yeah dude okay let's let's see how let's see how things pan out let's see how hard texas can carry the rest of the goddamn state dude california in and of itself is like a a, a global a almost a, a a nation state economy it's in like the top I think 10 or top Texas is the sixth largest economy. I know Texas is the only fucking red state that actually does, uh, uh that, that, that also runs a surplus, not one of it's the wealthiest in the country. No, no, no. I'm saying California as a state, California as a state in and of itself 
is a larger economy than entire nations, chat. And so is Texas, really, as well. But it's so, it, it, it's, what I was trying to say is, like, it's one of the largest economies if you carve out California as, a, as one state versus actual nation states. Yeah, it's, like, top 15. Care. Free health care, free education, free everything. Yeah, and you go to jail, they let you out, they don't turn you over to ICE. But not for our veterans. For our veterans, they get nothing. And for people that have been there for a long time and deserve something, citizens, they get nothing. But they give free health care. If you come in illegally into our country, you get things. And this is why they're coming. The incentive is so great. So is New York, but it's all fake. Cali would tank without the rest of the U.S. Every state would tank without the rest of the United States of America. What I'm talking about is a pure theoretical situation. As far as numbers goes, as far as numbers goes, well, California, given its diversity and agricultural output, would probably fare better than most other states. But looking at it, looking at it on pure numbers, California, as of October 24th, is poised to become the world's fourth biggest economy, okay? Overtaking Germany. This doesn't mean that it would be fine without... Uh, without being a part of the United States of America, considering that, like, you know, there's a massive water crisis in California, for example. But you have to understand something, like, like, people that fucking shit on California all the goddamn time, people that shit on California all the goddamn time can suck my dick, okay? Especially if you're a dumb American, being like, oh, California sucks, even immigrants don't want to go there. No, immigrants are perfectly fine in the state of California, much better off than most other places. Now, why? Why does New York have a supposed crisis with undocumented migrants now versus California because California is a border state so we have proper processing we have proper funding mechanisms and proper processing the real crisis in New York which was a border crisis in New York or undocumented migrant crisis in New York was actually born out of the fact that an overflow of migrants were shipped to New York in what I consider a human trafficking scheme mind you from red states and the federal government didn't step in to offer additional funds to help deal with it. That's the issue. It's so fucking stupid. You think New York would not be able to deal with incoming migrants if they, one, knew exactly how many migrants were coming due to apprehension numbers and uh, were able to house them adequately? Of course they would. It was an incredibly successful way to make the country and even make places like New York come across more reactionary to not adequately deal with the problem. It is super fucking reactionary in the sense that, here, let me explain it to you, okay? It is no different than the same exact strategy that I described to you earlier about how right-wingers come in and purposely cripple social funds, uh, purposely cripple the tax coffers and, and do uh, tax cuts and then defund public institutions, Okay. They defund public institutions, and then everybody goes, oh, this shit sucks. It's a manufactured crisis caused by reactionary assholes. And then people go, well, what the fuck? We don't have, uh, we already have these issues. Like, nobody's dealing with it. Maybe it is the brown people that are the problem. In a place like New York, one of the most diverse places on the planet, okay? It is a manufactured crisis that the Republicans created because they hate America, okay? They fucking hate America. Bragging about how amazing your economy is when affordability is the worst in the country is certainly a thing. Good job, Gavin. I mean, I know. There's very real issues. Taking a lunch break from delivering mail, we, USPS, and the amount of mail some of these people get to scare the crap out of them to vote GOP's bananas yesterday is nothing but mail about the end days because the Palestine-Israel conflict. Jesus. Conservatives purposefully, purposefully cripple the system, break it to, to drive home the narrative that like immigrants are actually the ones breaking the system when it's not immigrants at all. Yeah, dude, if you fucking send tens of thousands of people on buses and planes without informing the other fucking uh, state that you're sending them to that there's going to be a massive overflow of migrants in, in a short period of time, yeah, they're going to have a fucking hard time dealing with it. It's manufactured crisis created by people, especially in a place like Texas where they have enough funding and enough processes in place it's gross, it's disgusting, it's inhumane, and the Democrats bought it hook, line, and sinker and are now leaning into the reactionary immigrant, uh, the, the reactionary white nativist, anti-immigrant propaganda that they literally ran against 
last time that this election cycle happened. Our top geopolitical foe, I would argue, is China. Yeah. Uh, Russia's not far behind. Iran's not far behind. Your friend, little rocket man, you got to keep an eye on him. But China's been allowed. Chinese nationals have been buying up thousands. Aren't they sanctuary cities, though? Didn't they want the migrants? Here, this is what I mean, bro. Look, look, look, look. look. Don't hate America more than the left is, though. Yes, dude, I hate America so much. That's why I even want your dumb bitch ass to have free fucking health care and an actual free public education all the way up to college so you can be a little bit smarter and not be this dumbass who says, aren't they sanctuary cities? I just described to you what the problem is. The problem isn't that, like, New York can't he uh, handle migrants, okay? The problem is New York can't handle tens of thousands of migrants coming in that are, are being shipped there without, without the go-ahead. I got a degree and healthcare. Thank you, though. Yeah, well, it didn't take, okay? You have, what do you mean you have healthcare? I want you to have fucking free healthcare, dumbass. You have healthcare that will still put you in fucking crippling medical debt. If things, if you are this stupid as the, as the way that you present yourself in this chat, I suspect that, you know, one accident because uh, you're, you're too dumb to like fucking put your seatbelt on or some shit is going to put you in crippling medical debt. You're going to lose your fucking job and then your health care. And then you're going to be like, oh, I don't know what just happened. The problem isn't that New York is a sanctuary city. That's why I'm comparing the sanctuary state of California to the sanctuary state of New York. Notice how nobody talks about California having a migrant crisis. And the only way that they talk about California is to say it's really fucked up how they're treating their migrants uh, like they're human beings in the state of California because they're dealing with it adequately. That's the whole point that I was making. New York would be able to deal with the overflow of migrants if they were properly funded for the additional migrants that were coming in and told ahead of time. It is gravely inhumane to just like kidnap a bunch of migrants and ship them off like they're fucking cattle to the state of goddamn New York without adequately informing the people in that state that they are coming. That's the whole problem. Tent cities isn't really adequate. Yeah, dude, I know. Tent cities, uh, a, a problem, a byproduct of, of migrants in the state of California and not a direct consequence of unimaginably unaffordable housing. You are literally proving exactly what I am trying to explain to you. You have been duped into thinking that it's migrants that are the problem when the fucking capital owners are just running your pockets, you gullible fools. Oh... It's not migrants that are living in tent cities, dumbass. It's American citizens that are living in tent cities as a consequence of being priced out of the housing market. And the migrants have nothing to do with the housing market unless you think that the fucking Guatemalan migrants that are coming in over the fucking border are actually planting themselves in the luxury condominiums and there's a massive amount of demand for them somehow. Thousands and thousands of acres of farmland, ranch land, and land near our military installations. Now, you know President Xi, if you called him and said, uh, I, I, I know somebody, Sean Hannity, would like to buy land, farmland and ranch land in China, do you think he'd allow me? No, I don't think so. I, they, they don't allow that. And they're, they're very possessive of their country. They're very possessive. Also, here, here's another testament to how reactionary commentary spreads like wildfire amongst a nation of dullards uh, that are motivated to believe it. Sanctuary City is not a designation that means that like, oh, if you're an undocumented migrant, you get more rights than the average citizen. It simply means that the local law enforcement are not going to collaborate with the federal ICE agencies and immigration authorities and that migrants can take advantage or, you know, utilize the hospitals and, and the policing in that state or in that city specifically without fear that they will be thrown in fucking jail. You want to know why? For the, for the record... The sanctuary city concept, although humane, was originally advocated for by law enforcement agencies. Just so you understand the history of the sanctuary city. Do you know why it was advocated for by law enforcement agencies? Because they were like, yeah, if there's crime, we want to be able to fucking deal with it in migrant communities. Because they are not going to talk to us at all if there is crime happening in the fucking migrant communities because they're understandably fearful that the federal law enforcement will come in and fucking deport them. That's the real reason why sanctuary cities originally started and were advocated for at a different time, mind you, of course, by law enforcement agencies as well. I don't think that's a fair argument. The migrants would be taking the lower level housing, leaving the condominiums and more expensive housing for locals, which they can't afford. 
wait, what? You are, you, this is pure fantasy. I don't think that's a fair argument. The markets would be taking the lower level housing, leaving the condominiums and more expensive housing for locals, which they cannot afford. Brother, where are they building affordable housing? Other than, uh, uh, was it Kevin Durant? Who was the one who's like actually building affordable housing? And, uh, in, in, yes, see, dude. Oh my God. Brother, you have subscribed to me for three months. Please don't do, like, uh, this is making me lose faith in my, in, in everything I try to do. Like a three month subscriber coming in here and being like, can't they deal with it? When they tried to, when you try to defund the police, Lamau blows my mind. You are just, you're like a Fox news watcher. How did this happen? It was Russell Westbrook. Oh, how did we get here? The police were not defunded. Dumbass. Shut the fuck up. Actually, you were the person that changed my political views to what? I made you more right wing. Like what's going on? This is like crazy. Or were you even more right wing than this? And you have actually, you are no longer as right wing but still relatively reactionary. Oh my God, he's a Florida boy. That's why. As a Hispanic slash Latin, I fucking hate Latinx people when people use Latinx. No actual Latin person outside of the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we agree on that stuff. Who cares? Uh, is Threads more credible with fewer bots then? Like what happened to this guy? I changed your political views in the what? Fuck, man. I see it even in my own fan base, man. We are, we are slowly but surely, we are... Slowly but surely fucking becoming more and more reactionary in this country is dangerous. Very, very, very dangerous. Actually. Oh, they're a Miami Latino. I mean, no, dude, don't, don't, don't fucking immediately make assertions about this one person. This is a salvageable situation. You can pull this person from the depths of reactionary thinking if you are a, a little bit kinder, even when they're being purposely obtuse. Okay. We as a community have to be nicer to people who are not nice. Like this is something that you got to fucking remind yourself of. Okay. There are many of you who were just like him. Not that long ago. You just called him an idiot. Yeah, I know. And now I'm changing course and trying to be nicer. So what do you mean? See, He's looking for anything and everything to get mad about right now. What's wrong with being a Miami Latino? Nothing. What were your positions that I changed your mind on? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why is it taking so long to answer? He's just probably fucking. Latinos don't like Miami Latinos. Miami Latinos don't like each other either. The joke is, uh, the joke is Miami is comprised of different, uh, different people of Latino descent that fucking absolutely despise one another and get very mad. If you're Dominican, you hate the Cubans. You hate the Puerto Ricans. If you're Puerto Rican, you hate the Cubans and you hate the Dominicans. If you're Cuban, you hate everybody. It's just like literally, I mean, I live there. I'm telling you, it's just progressives are bigger villains than the Democrats and Republicans right now, huh? They've never stopped being bigger villains. Progressive politics actually shows the moral bankruptcy of the Democratic Party because they only run on progressive messaging as a means to win votes. So when there are real progressive people going, well, what the fuck? Why aren't you like following through on this shit? Why do we vote for you? They go, oh, dude, you're fucking up the bag right now, please. You're fucking the bag up. We got a good thing going. We tell you it's harm reduction to vote for us, and then you just vote for us. That's it. And demand nothing in return. Bro, what? You're usually really hard on all those dumb people who come at you? I wish... Yeah, dude, there's a fucking degree of shit that I can take. Like, if someone is coming in here and being like, go back to your country, dumb Islamist Muslim terrorist, yeah, I'm gonna pop off on that guy because that's not very salvageable. Uh, yeah, I get it. I should be nice. I uh, should be nicer and lead with love, but, you know, I'm a human at the end of the day, and sometimes I fucking... I'm at my limit, you know? Yeah, Twitch is back in Turkey and legal, by the way. So congratulations to the Turkish chatters of, of uh, staying sharp and bright and frankly coming into this country and buying a lot. And you could take it a step further. United States steel. And I'm not trying to equate Japan with China, but it's all still it's outside and they're coming in. Japan is buying U.S. steel. U.S. steel used to be the greatest company in the world. Now, it's a long time ago, but I don't like that. I don't like seeing that. And part of the reason is because other countries, in particular China, they dump steel into the United States. I had that problem taken care of largely because I put big tariffs on the dump steel and I saved the steel industry. But now they're letting it go. And, you know, you're not going to... Türkiye'de have... sana FETÖ'cü diyorlar, gıcık oluyorum. Ya evet, al FETÖ'cü, al. Ya hem, hem, hem İbneyim hem FETÖ'cüyüm aynı anda. Nasıl oluyor bilmiyorum ama... People in Turkey will be like, I'm both gay and also uh, a, a defender of the CIA asset Fethullah Gülen was a Muslim cleric living in the Poconos. They'll be like, bro, you must be gay. You painted your nails. It's gayer than sucking a penis. And then they also simultaneously will go, oh yeah, dude, you're actually, um, you're actually gay uh, and homosexual and also simultaneously 
uh, a, a defender of Fethullah Gulen. You want to buy, you want to build an army tank, and you're fighting China. You're going to have to get the steel from China, and it's. Uh, I think it's a very dangerous position. I don't think our country, just overall, I don't think our country has ever been in a dangerous position like it is right now. When you look at what's happened with all of this stuff that we're talking about tonight, but beyond that, just this total incompetence, and it began to a large extent with the election, but it began with Afghanistan. When we showed that weakness and that stupidity, taking the military out first, leaving $85 billion worth of equipment behind, 13 soldiers killed. Nobody ever talks about the 38 that were obliterated. They lost their arms, their legs, just obliterated. And we left a lot of Americans behind. You used to cover that, actually. You used to give it a countdown. How many days? I think you stopped doing it. It's so long now. But it's horrible. You have Americans over there that I guess you could call them hostages in a sense, but they are over there. They're trapped behind enemy lines. It's, it's Still. a horrible thing that happened. So our country, and you have Iran getting close to building a nuclear, having a nuclear weapon. Possibly 35 the days. IAEA, I'm not a fan of the UN, but they said that they think they now have weapons grade yeah, uh, you know, they do. material to it, build it weapons. Would, would have never happened. Iran was broke. I didn't. It would have never happened. Bitch, you did that. You literally did that, bro. The fuck do you mean it would have never happened? Whose fault is that? You. It happened because of you, like single handedly. <laughs> That's so dumb. It is one of the signature foreign policy accomplishments of the Obama administration that had a C of L's, okay? It was a massive W. That and normalizing relations with Cuba, okay? I'm objective. I'm honest. I will always tell you, even if I despise someone, and I certainly despise Donald Trump, I will tell you, like, for example, his dealings with uh, DPRK was actually pretty good. Sidestepping whatever our State Department interests were, and allowing the South Korean leadership to communicate with the North Korean leadership was good for Trump. It was devastating to throw the Iran denuclearization deal just because Obama was the one who put it forward and just because you had a bunch of reactionary anti-Iran uh, uh, pro-MEK psychos like John Bolton in your fucking cabinet and even before John Bolton. Bro, you're too honest, chill. But if the plan worked, Obama would be the person who gives the credit. The plan was working. We're going to talk to we're going to talk about John Kirby in a second. And let China, I told China, you're not going to buy or you're not going to do business in the United States. If you buy no business in the United States, I told that to many countries. Nobody bought oil from Iran. It's all about the oil. Nobody bought oil from Iran. And they were broke. They were acknowledged to be broke. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for Hezbollah. Now they have $231 billion, $231 billion that they made over the last three years. And Joe, Joe is helping to make the Iranian mullahs rich again. Well, they've, they've become the very 10 rich. Million, the 10 billion that he allowed from Iraq? They laugh at him. They laugh at him. They think he's the worst. Look, he's the worst president in the history of our country. Jimmy Carter is a very happy man now because his presidency is brilliant by comparison to Joe Biden. Brilliant. Let me ask you this. Speaking, yeah, think speaking think of your friend great. Joe, um, would have been nice if he came, he, he would sit with us. Um, I'm not sure if he's capable of having a discussion like this. Uh, I tend to doubt it. I've covered that fairly extensively. Um, he shows up today. I didn't really show up at one of the hot spots at the border. No. But for, I, I played that tape, you know. Yeah. See, this is the perfect demonstration that, like, if you go right as the Democrat, you will lose no matter what. He goes to the border. He has a border bill. He's trying to fucking push a right-wing border bill. And they're like, he didn't even go to the right part of the border. You're an idiot. You're a fucking dumbass. This is propaganda that fucking works. Why are you leaning into this? All you're doing is letting them get away with even more reactionary shit. He says Mexicans are rapists. You say, you know what? Mexicans are a problem. We got to fucking do a, a, a really right-wing border bill, okay? Then he's going to turn around and be like, Mexicans are super rapists, actually. And then he's going to start saying slurs and you're going to be like, uh, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh. Four years later, you're the one who's doing the Mexicans are rapists line. Nice. Everybody has children and if the children, if they get children, they're all going to get in trouble. I don't care about what they did so much, but if they lie to you, they get in a whole lot of trouble. Right. And they've been lying to the American people for three years. I played that montage. The border's secure. The border's closed. The border's secure. The border's closed. Osana, are you sure Soleimani being the number one ISIS killer? I don't think he had any problems with ISIS existence. They killed him in the name of Sunnah and he hates them so. But I know for sure that he killed a lot of Syrian freedom fighters. Brother, 
the correct way to criticize Soleimani is about internal uh, uh, issues within Iran or uh, Kurdish in general. But if you're talking about if you're talking about like Salafis being fucking slaughtered and then masquerading that as like Syrian freedom fighters, I don't know what to tell you. Like the the Syrian freedom fighters of Al Nusra. No, it wasn't. You know, our eyes were not lying to us. We've been showing this video of these migrant caravans for three years, and now all of a sudden they have changed the narrative. This is Republicans' fault. Your reaction? It's all disinformation. Uh, Russia, Russia, Russia. Everything they do, the Demo and I guess you have to say they're masters at it. They'll say something a thousand. The, the border is. You have the blue MAGA shit so incredibly locked. You say yesterday the Liz are gonna start making sexy Trump style photoshops, and I clipped the shit from the front page of Reddit yesterday. Oh yeah, I mean this is old school. This is an old ass uh, uh, photo, but like they're recirculating it. There's like Biden. There's sexy Biden photos out there too. It's great. The border is closed, and they'll say it a thousand different times, and some people are gonna believe it. I think that's probably the hardest thing that they've got to do because they have destroyed this border. And they're in the process of destroying our country. We're allowing people in our country that we shouldn't have. In we are allowing. So you don't like Salafist extremists like Hamas? Yes, dude. Hamas being Salafist extremists is a really funny fucking take that immediately gives me, immediately tells me where, what community you're coming from and what your fucking framework is. You're like, oh, they're Muslim. They must be Salafist. Hamas? Are you fucking killing? Are you, are you kidding me? Do you, do you understand what any of the words that you're saying mean, actually? Or are you just, like, repeating someone else's uh, takes in here? This is some, like, straight up, I am Muslim, bruh. You are, there is no way you're Muslim if you think Hamas are Salafist extremists. Or you're the dumbest Muslim I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. What do you think Salafist means? I am Pakistani. Hamas are Wahhabist, yes. Oh, brother. Okay. So, I'm betting British. I, it, dude, no. He he wouldn't take this position. He would be saying that it's good. He's a Hamas or Wahhabist. No, he's not British. I don't think he's British because he would be. <laughs> some of the British Muslims will take a pro uh, pro Salafist stance. What you are describing, what you are what you are describing, is completely wrong. Okay, not only is it not only is it just objectively patently wrong, like hilariously wrong, but Hamas is anti ISIS. Hamas started as a Muslim Brotherhood cutout, okay, or Muslim Brotherhood adjacent uh, Islamic charity that turned more, uh, uh, uh, that turned into the only form of, of coherent resistance against the Israeli apartheid regime. They are Islamic extremists and anti Semitic. Stop coping and support Fatah. Notice how he fucking dropped a couple words in here. They, he first said, he first said, uh, dude, this has got to be like an idea, a IDF troll op or something. I hate you, Hassan. You're the worst human being ever. True. He first said they were Salafists. Then he said they were Wahhabist extremists, which is hilarious because, like, uh, Israel has actually aligned with al-Nusra and has offered medical treatment to al-Nusra, which are Salafist. Hamas, on the other hand, has executed ISIS members inside of Gaza. You can say that that is out of self-interest because they want to be the only game in town, and that much is true, okay? That, there's definitely another additional reason for that. But the notion, the notion that, like, uh, these guys are, are Wahhabists or Salafist extremists is ridiculous. <sighs> then he went on to the, oh, they're actually uh, anti-Semitic, okay? And then said support Fatah. Except Fatah, in and of itself, is, you know, not nearly as popular any longer as it once was due to the Palestinian Authority and due to be uh, due to the way that the Palestinian population sees them as CIA backed or in uh, even worse instances directly a cutout of the Israeli administration and and a part of the Israeli security oper apparatus just so you understand you just hit the full Monty on all of the talking points and every single thing that you mentioned was wrong objectively an extraordinarily group, tough group of people into our country. When you have prisons and jails and mental institutions being emptied out, not just in South America, all over the world, all over the world they're being emptied out. You can check your prison population throughout the world and it's all coming into our country. And how can that be good? And how can it be good politically? Joe Biden is here today. I want to get your reaction to that. And 
you just saw the other tape, and the other tape showed uh, that, that there, there are so many of Trump's policies that we reversed, I can't even list them. Yeah. It's so long. I gave a short list. And what is your reaction? Why do you think he's here today? Uh, I don't think it's an accident. And he had bragged about reversing the policies that you put in place. Uh, what's your reaction? Well, I know why he's here, because he found out that we were coming. We were here. Look, you and I made this agreement two weeks ago. No, actually, I a said, month and a half ago. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. But we made it a while yeah. ago, and the word got out. And yeah. a couple of weeks ago, it started getting out. And then uh, they found out for sure. You put up the nice little picture on the right-hand bottom corner of your television set yep. that I was coming. And all of a sudden, they announced that they're coming. But they went to the wrong area. They went to an area that the governor and myself have done a good job on. And there's essentially nobody coming through. So, you know, you're not seeing it. This area is tough. So if you win in November, the election's on November 5th, about 249 days of, if I'm right. Hamas is as evil as Zionist fascists without power. No, they're not. Hamas is a resistance group to the Israeli apartheid regime that is currently doing genocide in Gaza. There is no moral equivalence between the two. They're not. They are the lesser evil. Try to understand, are you with or again against Trump? Brother, I'm all of the above. Empty semptic. Yeah, notice how he had no fucking talking points, so he just tried to counter again. I hate Israel and Zionist Hamas are Iranian proxy. Hamas would not exist if it wasn't for the Israeli occupation becoming increasingly more and more brutal. You cannot talk about these issues, especially at the top of the hour, when there's a three-minute ad break, when you're about to get hit with a three-minute ad break because you have no defenses against that. Hamas is the defensive posturing of the Palestinian people. If it wasn't called Hamas, it would be called something else. And it was throughout time. The only way to stop any kind of resistance towards the apartheid state is to no longer have an apartheid state. Bro, what the fuck are Pakistanis on these days? How about y'all deal with your American public state? I mean, don't even get me started on this shit. Here's a term and break now, by the way. Call my colleague a debate pervert today after you tried to tell me during an Israel-Palestine debate that actually Palestine never used to be a country and the river to the sea chant is anti-Semitic. The topic hops when I challenged him. What are your go-to answers when dealing with these guys? But the guy's also a debate pervert. I mean, you can follow them down, uh, especially when it comes to Israel-Palestine. There's not really any, like, valid uh, uh, answers. It will always devoid into might is right and Israel's in the right because I say so. That's it. Like, but you can go down the, wh whichever, whichever angle they use, whichever direction they try to steer you in, you can still destroy them because there is an objective right and an objective wrong. Um, and there is no, there is no world in which they can answer certain questions like do you deny that israel is an apartheid state number one do you deny that israel is currently conducting an ethnic cleansing campaign you're all right all the time no arguments allowed you guys are totally right oh, odds price i have duked it out in the marketplace of ideas with many people on this issue including professional propagandists i am not saying i'm right all the time no arguments allowed i'm simply stating that Yes, on this issue, we are absolutely right. It makes you feel bad, so you try to deflect and act like, oh, yeah, you're just saying that you're right even though you're wrong without actually presenting any evidence to why I'm wrong. Provide an argument. Provide an argument instead of fucking complaining. You are allowed to argue in here. I welcome it. That much slaughter never happened if Hamas atta never attacked Israel. Even my father says that. Well, first of all, your father can also be stupid. Sorry. And secondly... Oh, uh, Hamas forced Israel's hand to do ethnic cleansing in Gaza is not the phenomenal argument that you think it is, okay? Hamas is not the reason why Israel was an apartheid state. Hamas is not the reason why the Nakba happened and continued to happen for 75 years. Hamas is not the reason why until 1967, Palestinians living inside of Israeli borders were second-class citizens in the exact same way that the Palestinians living in occupied West Bank, which is illegal, by the way, uh, in the, la in the lack of rights that they have now. In the exact same way, Palestinians living inside of Israeli borders up until 1967 were treated under the military tribunals in the exact same way that Palestinians currently living in the West Bank are. Just so you understand. This all, every single thing that I just mentioned to you predates Hamas. And also, you said support Fatah. How far has Fatah gotten? What has the Palestinian Authority done for the Palestinians? There's a reason why Palestinians are polled all the time and they consistently say that the Palestinian Authority is the second 
least popular figure in the region. The second, le uh, second least popular figurehead. Second least popular organization. Of course, after Israel. There is no Hamas in, in the West Bank, and yet Israel has been incredibly cruel and unusual in the maintenance of its apartheid regime in the West Bank under its illegal occupation. You cannot defend this position whatsoever. Please, I hope you reconsider your stance. On October 6th, the Middle East Eye came out with an article before October 7 happened. The article correctly said that 2022 or 2023 was the deadliest year for Palestinian children. The deadliest year so far. Why do you think that was going on? Do you think that that regular maintenance, that regular order that you don't pay attention to before October 7th was good or normal or just? No, it wasn't. It was a violent apartheid regime. But Gazans were relatively safer from now. I just cry, watch people cheer for their death. You are looking at a situation where the entire world is celebrating. Well, not, not necessarily, by the way. But a lot of people in the Western world are in the most reactionary uh, uh, position possible celebrating Palestinians being ruthlessly slaughtered. And then looking at not the country that facilitates those bombs, the United States of America, not the country that utilizes those bombs on this civilian population, Israel, but instead shifting the blame over to the one fucking militant resistance group that is actually defending Palestinians. That is true. Gazans were not safe. It's like saying the Jews in the Warsaw Ghetto were safe before they uh, did an uprising. They were not. Right. And on... How do you reverse this? Nearly 10 million unvetted illegal immigrants. We don't know where there are. Many are given court dates seven, eight years down the road. They're never showing up for those court dates. Now, you've talked about deportation. How do we identify? There was no Hamas or Israel, just another radical Muslimic group would pop up to kill in the name of God. You think Hamas is killing in the name of God? The fuck are you talking about? The original Palestinian Liberation Front was organized with secular entities. You're just wrong. You're completely wrong. Hamas is a relatively new version of the Palestinian resistance because all of those other secular formations were slaughtered ruthlessly. They both lost popular support as a consequence of trying to negotiate peacefully with Israel. And the Palestinian population saw that through that peaceful negotiation process, Israel only maintained a stronger stranglehold on the Palestinian population, increasing settlement expansion rapidly. God has nothing to do with this. And you also said Muslimic. The fuck are you talking about? Identify them, identify where they are, find them and deport them. And is that your promise to the American people? Well, absolutely. And you have no choice because this is not sustainable. The cities are going bad. The cities, the country, the whole place is going bad. You know, every state is really a border state. And I was talking to the governor before, and he has done really a great job, uh, Governor, governor Abbott. Abbott. You By the have... way, Ted Cruz wanted to be here, but Chuck Schumer kept him back in D.C. Oh, is that right? Probably yeah. for, for a good reason, right? Mm -hmm. Look, we have to deport a lot of people, and they have to start immediately. People don't know that Dwight Eisenhower is a pretty tough president. I like how people that don't agree with Eisenhower will say shit, but have no actual facts slash talking points. I'm new here and not really sure if I agree with them, but I think they just hurt their case more when they don't know anything about the topic they brought up shaking my head thank you i am thy god for having an open mind doesn't hamas use civvies as shields or is that propaganda i swallow just trying to educate myself yes it is propaganda because the entire point and in the entire premise of a human shield relies on the other side not shooting the shield okay it's just another way for Israel to justify killing, ethnically cleansing Palestinians and saying, well, Hamas put them in the direction of our missiles. It's fucking bullshit. It's the same exact talking point. It's in the same vein as Israel being like, why didn't Hamas take all of the funding and build bomb shelters? Yeah, dude, you think fucking a bomb shelter is going to withstand a Mark 84 rocket, JDAMs, precision guided munitions? No, it's a 2000 ton bomb. There is no bomb shelter that can fucking withstand it. The only thing that can, in many instances, withstand it is the tunnel structure, which they did build. I never thought of it as that, but 10 years ago, you start reading and you start really seeing. And he was a big deporter, and he would deport tremendous numbers of people, and they'd bring them just to the other side of the border, they'd come back. He'd bring them again, they'd come back. Then he brought them 2,000 miles back, and they didn't come back. We have no choice. And the way you do it is your local police. We have the greatest police. They don't get the respect that they have to get. They are treated so badly. They do something and they end up losing their pension, even if it's a good thing. 
if they stop crime nowadays, they lose their pension, their family, their house. And we're going to give immunity to police, and we're going to let the police do the job that they have to do. I think it's very important. They understand who these migrants are. They know them by their first name, their last name. They know where they come from. They know everything about. It's going to be the local police are going to turn them over, and we're going to have to move them back to their country. When the FBI was the world's premier law enforcement agency, and I, I believe when? we will achieve that again, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, Inshallah, the, the FBI will be the premier once again. May Allah guide them. Top FBI officials, they have said what we are witnessing is an invasion of military age men. You ask the question, you try to understand people that think differently than you. For the life of me, I can't come up with any rationale or reason for this. So there's two things that you think of. Number one, they maybe want the votes. They think that they're going to get these people registered and to vote. And I'll give else. you citizenship. I hope yeah, you remember you know, me at the polls. At all sorts of things. BBC October 12, 2005, IDF appeal in Supreme Court ruling banning use of Palestinian human shields and raid, raids. IDF to appeal human shield ban. The Israeli Defense Ministry will appeal against the Supreme Court ruling banning the use of Palestinian human shields and raids. Yeah, the human shield one is like a perfect case of pure projection, by the way, because Israel literally uses Palestinians. Like they will straight up trot out a Palestinian person that they've apprehended in front of them when they're doing raids in the West Bank. They still do that, by the way. So it's just complete nonsense. What else is jihad than killing in the name of God? Hamas stated that they are committed to jihad, if I'm not wrong. Oh, my God. I'm literally duking it out with dudes coming in here with Sam Harris talking points from, like, 2014. Things never change. Oh, my God. Jihad means struggle, okay? Just like martyrdom in Islam doesn't mean that they are, like, fucking strapping themselves with a suicide vest of bombs and blowing themselves up. It means death in conflict. Jihad means struggle. Struggling against, like an intifada, for example, resistance against an apartheid uh, state is still struggle. When they say jihad, doesn't mean what you think it means. All you're doing is, this foreign word has scared me because it carries a lot of implications that I've learned socially. I don't know. I'm doing very well his with Hispanic, and you have a lot of Hispanic coming. But the fact is that you have two things. Either they're stupid, right? or they hate our country. Because it can only be basically one of those two things, other than the voting element, which, I don't know, I'm not so sure that they believe that so much. I think it's down the road, and although they are trying to register people right now as we speak, which, well, who have no idea what they're doing and who may not know this. In New York City, for example, uh, local elections, yeah. illegal immigrants can vote. We gotta take a break. We're just getting started. Oops, they're just getting started. And joining us now is Lieutenant Colonel Richard Hecht, the spokesperson for the Israeli Defense Forces. Lieutenant Colonel, thank you very much for, for being with us this morning. Just want to start with, can you clarify, did Israeli forces open fire on civilians waiting for aid on Thursday? So thank you for having me. This, this is not the case. And again, you, uh, I'll just uh, jump on to what uh, Raf Sanchez said. We did not intentionally open fire on the mob that, st that basically uh, the, tried to, uh, the animals we did not open fire on the animals reach these uh, uh trucks again this is a tragic event where you can see from the footage he is scottish chat he is that we released that uh, yeah they just keep unintentionally using sniper rifles on children women medical personnel it's just always unintentional though here here's a more recent usage of uh like direct meat shields. Uh, the people that came looking for food, the, it was a stampede. Very, very tragic. But we did not open fire on, and you can see this now running in, in the background, we did not open fire on the crowd during that event. There was one specific event at the end of the convoy where um, our soldiers, uh, some of the, the Gazans approached our soldiers, they felt threatened, and they fired non-lethal shots. Just cop shit, dude. Some of our soldiers felt threatened, so they opened fucking fire. You know, there's nothing more dangerous to our soldiers than a Palestinian baby. Disgusting freak, dude. Fucking monster. Lock in 2018 in the Great March of Return, our snipers felt threatened, so they shot a medic and a pregnant lady through her stomach. Oh. Sadly and tragically, the most of the death cases, and again, I would take the numbers with a pinch of salt, were from this tragic stampede. 
So let's. Uh, what what would qualify as non-lethal shots being fired? And I'm just thinking, if we take a any of the evidence that, that seems to be uh, being put forward by uh, different, for example, video sources, we're looking at that Al Jazeera video that says that, that people were Al Jazeera is Hamas. Ya know? Don't you fucking know? Motherfuckers from Edinburgh being taken to the hospital with gunshot wounds that's that's not a stampede wound that's that's a gunshot wound and, and what exactly is non-lethal palestinians were shooting themselves to make israel look bad while well, israel was the one shooting at the palestinians because we were scared that's what it is we were scared that's why we shot at them the bullet wounds were fake is is palawood fire Non-lethal fire is when, again, we were, we were securing this convoy in, our, to, in order to facilitate the, the movement of food uh, to the north. This is where... In a, where yeah. Gaza doctor says gunfire accounted for 80% of the wounds at his hospital from the aid convoy bloodshed. Doctors are Hamas. Why is mainstream media trying to look like they're siding with Israel now when they are, when they are promoting pro-Israel propaganda? There is a number. There is a number out there. And I think we've reached that number. It's apparently it's 30,000 for some, for some, it was 100 for others. It was a thousand for some, it was 20,000. The number is 30,000 for many mainstream outlets. And they are recognizing that they are recognizing that, uh, this has gone on for far too long, which it has. And they're still for the record being as friendly as they physically can. But at least nowadays they're like providing counters IDF spokespersons. Three months ago would go on like that fucking dipshit Frankenstein, uh, Jonathan Concuncreus or whatever the fuck his name is with that big ass Frankenstein dome. Okay. That dipshit would go on and be like, yeah, we had to kill them because they are Palestinian Hamas babies. And the, and Jake Tapper would be like, huh? Okay. Huh? Very good. Huh? Okay. The Polk Awards confirmed to me that the New York Times story screams without words how Hamas weaponized sexual violence on October 7th is included in the coverage that won a full Polk Award for foreign reporting. We stand by our award for foreign reporting at the Times. This is just straight up, straight up, just does not meet the muster of the New York Times, like their self-imposed restrictions. It is so controversial that there's internal struggle within the New York Times uh, about its release. And yet, you know, reputable George Polk Awards for Journalism, like like Pulitzer Prize and, and, and other, other prizes are still being fucking afforded. Uh, still being given to ridiculous, ridiculous pieces of propaganda that are devoid of factually accurate information. <laughs> yeah. Another photo from the same soldier's TikTok account of another genre favored by IDF soldiers. Pics with displaced dead Palestinians' women's clothing items. This is the new meta. They go through, like, different waves. I Really Hate You does a phenomenal job of documenting this stuff. Um, he, this is, this is literally, like, this is the new meta now. Before it was like the same knock knock joke where it'd be like, hello, knock knock. Why is no one opening the door? Is there Hamas behind the door? And then the camera would pan away and it was like a bombed out fucking kindergarten or some shit. Now the most moral army in the world is doing this shit. New York Times did this as a treat yesterday. Oh my God. Yesterday's New York Times crossword, the day of the flower massacre in Gaza. Gaza, meal, Zatar. Jesus Christ. There you go. What more do you want? They're recognizing it. I think this will be in textbooks the same way they show what happened to, uh, to uh, in the Holocaust, what happened to Jewish belongings in the Holocaust. It depends. Um, it's either going to go the way of like uh, America and the indigenous uh, ethnic cleansing campaigns that the United States of America engaged in, where we just whitewash it and say that they were barbaric, or it's going to go the way of of adequate coverage. Probably, probably not the second thing though, because there's a lot of fucking. There are a lot of genocides that are, are unfortunately contested. You know what I mean? So who knows? We're in a war. Uh, this is a combat zone. Uh, the soldiers are, uh, again, again, we're losing soldiers every day in this fight. We're aware of the humanitarian condition in the north. Again, non-lethal fires when we are securing the convoy. People came uh, too near our soldiers. They felt threatened. They would maybe take... That's delusion. If you think that a Muslim using fighting jihad just wants to say he's tanking an effort being beefing a good Muslim. Wait, what? The word Nazi also just means nationalistic oriented socialism. It has an inherently neutral meaning, but due to the history of what it stands for, its meaning is totally different one. 
then the word itself implies. I argue the same goes for jihad, at least in the West. Did you just compare like the the a, a tenet of religion that just simply means struggle to national socialism, which is inherently a, an oxymoronic sentiment that was utilized for uh, for the purposes of Holocaust, like conducting a Holocaust. What the fuck, bro? This is why I say kill the reactionary inside of you. Okay. There's like a little, little demon inside of you. That's like, no, no, no. I promise. Like you're explained to me. Yes. Words and their meanings can change. The problem is you're literally fucking looking at national socialism. Okay. Which is a political movement, which it inherently is at odds with one another. Nationalism versus socialism, which historically was utilized the political terminology was utilized by people who were anti-socialist, for the record. I don't know if you know the, the old poem that goes, First they killed a socialist. I did not speak out, for I was not a socialist. Versus a, a, just a different language. Like a word used in a different language that, is, that has its tenets in, in, in, uh, in, in struggle for your faith. The overwhelming majority of practicing Muslims do not mean they're doing jihad when they are, uh, when they're, when they're just practicing their faith in, in, in and uh, utilizing the the Wahhabist interpretation of it or, or the Salafist interpretation of the word, okay, that is a marginal group that was propped up as though they were the representatives of Islam globally. You are unfortunately blinded by how out of touch you are to say these things. I am not arguing with you on facts. I am arguing against your delusions that were socially fed to you, okay? That's the problem. It's the reality. Again, I am arguing not against actual information that you are presenting, but instead arguing against what you think is the case. You are, I'm arguing against your bigoted beliefs in this circumstance. This is the same exact thing I talk about all the fucking time, okay? Yeah, jihad is literally like a name in Turkey. You know what I mean? Like people are named jihad, for example. So that is what Hamas is doing. Oh, I'm going to lose my mind. Hamas is engaging in a struggle against a violent apartheid ethno state that is currently conducting ethnic cleansing. Okay, it is a form of struggle. That's it. That is what they're doing. It is very different than someone like uh, an ISIS member saying that they are engaging in jihad by killing a bunch of fucking Muslims in an area that they are occupying. If you think ISIS is more representative of jihad than jihad in the way that it actually uh, is utilized in the language, in the Muslim languages, different languages uh, of, of, uh, of nations that uh, are Islamic or believe in Islam, I don't know what to tell you. There are people named jihad, for example. Do you think that they were named that because that means that implies that they want to strap a suicide vest on themselves and blow themselves up at an American forward operating base? Jihad means to struggle through. Saying jihad has a negative connotation is saying Allah Akbar has a negative connotation, which is a racist thing to state. Exactly. What is this? It is the disambiguous. Uh, this is literally the, the, what jihad, the Wikipedia page for the word jihad. The word jihad appears frequently in the Quran with and without military connotations, often in the idiomatic expression, striving in the path of God, conveying a sense of self-exertion. He said, what is this? The term jihad is derived from the Arabic root jihada. Oh, yes, atheist Arabs also use the word jihad, just like Allah means God in Arabic. That's it. Because as far as I'm aware, Hamas is rated a terrorist organization. Well, so was the IRA and so was the ANC. America's terrorist designation doesn't always get it right. Nelson Mandela was on the terror watch list until 2008. Look at what is actually happening and you will understand a little bit better. Also, Islam does not really have a holy war, but rather an explanation to defend yourself and how Allah God allows you to defend yourself. I don't want to defend Israel. I hate what they're doing. I don't really understand what you're saying here. This is absolutely not a single person is saying that you should be defending Israel or that you are defending Israel. You are lending defense to uh, Israeli sentiment, the Israeli government's uh, opinions, by making it seem like Hamas, a terror organization, is conducting a holy war against Israel because they're anti-Semitic. That is not true. I don't think what Hamas did was right either. October 7, October 7, definitely had its fair share of atrocities. Okay? 
acts of terror against a civilian population. Everything Hamas has done since October 7, as far as resisting, and it wasn't just Hamas that did it, by the way. It was the entirety of the Palestinian resistance forces. It was a coalition, okay? It wasn't just Hamas. That's just a convenient way to just say, like, it's just Hamas doing it, and they're a terrorist cell. They're a terrorist organization. You keep getting one guide. Please stop getting one guide. I think it's instructive and informative for me to explain with, uh, with certainty what is going on so that, uh, you know, there are other people here that will also be able to understand it. It's not a bad thing. These are very commonplace opinions that many normal people have. Here's a funny story, chat. I'm a Palestinian citizen of Israel. My dad's name is Jihad. Once he worked for a Jewish company, they made him change his name to Jojo. There's absolutely fucking not one guy. They're in here like crazy. Yeah. Bro, it's crazy how some of you motherfuckers care this much about this shit when in fact politics has no had no impact on 90% of your daily lives. Yes. It is this attitude that causes politicians to be able to fucking keep destroying your life as you know it. Politics has had a 100% impact on your life, dummy. It absolutely has. The fuck do you mean? If you got potholes in your neighborhood when you're driving your car, that's politics. Politics is a consequence of why the, that pothole is not being fixed. Because all that funding is going to the cops instead. That's politics. Smart as liberal, yeah. The only people that think politics does not actually have no impact on your daily lives are people who are deluded and think that that is not the case. It's great. Politics, of course, has an infinitely larger role in your life if you are not in the comfortable in-group either. There is no part of your life where politics doesn't play a role. Take uh, non-lethal shots to try and distance them from them. Again, I would take the numbers coming out, and again, we're looking into this event. The numbers coming out uh, from the Hamas, uh, Hamas health agency with a pinch of salt. We are looking into this. We are aware of this severe event, and uh, we're taking it very, very seriously. Uh, the UN and France are both demanding an independent investigation into what happened. Will Israel, you think, support this? We do not need uh, any other country to launch investiga investigations. We have the means <laughs> and will to do this ourselves. Yeah. He's uh, like, don't launch an investigation into the acts of Israel. We'll do it ourselves. We are notorious. I'm lying to you right now on national television. We notoriously have never lied, including right at this moment. Yeah. Palestinian eyewitnesses, Palestinian doctors, and Israel's own national security minister disagree with you, Elon. Blood libel. That's so funny. Dude, all you do when you say this is blood libel is lend credence, okay? You are bastardizing blood libel and what it actually means, okay? You, it is losing its historical significance. It's disgusting, and it's fucking anti-Semitic. Uh, and again, I just want to remind everyone here, this is... This is a war zone. We're doing everything we can. We're trying to facilitate other yeah, ideas. We're doing everything we can to kill babies. There's literally a video from Al Jazeera of them shooting at the convoy. You can see the tracers. I don't know if I can show this. This might be TOS. Okay. I mean, you see the tracers pretty quickly before any casualties. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Wonder how that, wonder how that happened. He has, uh, Raf mentioned it before. Things from the air. Uh, we're still. Dude, you don't understand. Those tracers are actually non-lethal tracers. Oh, fighting this to dismantle Hamas. This would end in a minute if Hamas laid down their weapons and brought the hostages back to Israel. In a minute. Yeah, and, and so where do you, from the Israeli, from the IDF perspective, go from here as far as trying to determine what Israel had as far as a responsibility in this incident or not? Well, um, you know, I'm, I'm very aware of international law. And then there was people saying, once you occupy an area... You yeah, and I'm well aware of the international law. And honestly, it's Hamas. Hamas wrote international law. You have to uh, make sure that food is there. This is th There's still a war going on, and we do not want to occupy the Gaza Strip. We want to dismantle Hamas. But again, we're not fighting the Palestinian people who Hamas is... Even though I'm talking about, I'm contextualizing why we did have to fight these Palestinian people. Lock and at. It's taken as a human shield. Flower and I will from keep the repeating that sentence because that is the tragedy and the cynical use of Hamas of their people. And we're doing everything we can to uh, move food. And again, there's an issue here with. No, he's not. They're not, by the way. They're objectively not. Food is being held up inside of Israel. And at border points, 1,000%. It's a fucking lie. 
Elon Levy, let's set the record straight. IDF forces did not shoot at the convoy. IDF forces did not shoot at people looting the trucks. IDF forces used fire when masses ran towards them in a way that threatened their lives. They were there in the first place to secure the convoy. My heart goes out to all the civilians who got trampled in a stampede and run over by Gazan truck drivers. I can't imagine the desperation of knowing the Hamas terror regime is hijacking vital aid while UNRWA covers it up. Demon. Demon. Distribution. It's not with the quantity of amount of food going in. The distribution to the north is a challenge, and that's what we're trying to facilitate and come up with uh, creative ideas to get food up north to the poor Gazan people. And uh, Lieutenant Colonel, I mean, right now there are about a million four civilians in, in Rafa with Israel's deadline of March 10th for a potential invasion there. How does what happened, for example, yesterday uh, play a, a role in maybe disrupting talks, for example, on the hostages that are still being held by Hamas? Well, I, I'm a military man, and uh, again, I, I will tell you that we're, we're also very, very attentive to uh, the voices about and the concerns about uh, the 1.4 people in uh, Rafiah. And uh, I will just uh, quote uh, my prime minister, who said, we will not uh, act uh, aggressively in that area without finding a solution for the civilian population there. We did it in the north. A final solution. And we can do it also in the south. I would just mention to you that we did a specific event in Rafah, which was a, a special forces <laughs> raid, Rafah. to save two of our hostages inside uh, Rafah. Lieutenant Colonel Richard. Israel has again stopped talks on a ceasefire. New, Israel tells Qatar in Egypt, no more talks until Hamas provides list of hostages still alive in Gaza. My story on Axios. Sad, but good that they stand on their grounds. Hasn't there been Israeli public blockades of Palestinian aid trucks? Yes. Dude, it's a deeply unwell nation, okay? They are deeply unwell. Straight up. It's really fucked up. For joining us tonight. It's good to see you. Look, Israel, as we just laid out in the last few hours, have tried to frame this as a tragedy, but just not one that is their fault. The IDF says it fired warning shots to try to disperse the crowd around that convoy. Do you lend any credibility to that explanation? And from the eyes of the world, does it matter what the explanation is for what we saw unfold? Well, Abby, thanks so much for having me on the show and thank you for that very important, very powerful intro you did just there. In terms of believing the Israelis, I would say that it took multiple innocent black people to die at the hands of police in this country, whether it's Breonna Taylor, whether it's uh, Freddie Gray, whether it's George Floyd, for people in our industry, Abby, to start saying, well, maybe we shouldn't just blindly believe police statements after shootings happen. And I feel like we still haven't quite reached that point in the Middle East with the Israeli military. The Israeli military tend to say things that turn out not to be true, both before Gaza, when they killed Shireen Abu Akhle, you Wait, what? The protesters literally stormed into northern Gaza? I didn't see this. A group of settler activists violently breached the military checkpoint near the Erez border crossing and entered the Gaza Strip earlier today. The IDF says, oh, that's awesome. No, that's great, dude. No, no, no. Keep that coming. No, no, no. Keep that energy. That's, that's not a bad thing, actually. No, no, no. Go get in there, dude. Get in there. They will absolutely get fucking killed. If they were allowed inside, they would get killed by the IDF. It wouldn't even be Hamas. It would be IDF that fucking kills them. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, the, dude, I, I welcome this development all day, every day, okay? I didn't even know this happened. Holy shit. I welcome this. I welcome this in open arms, I think. I welcome this development as they will assuredly get killed by the Israeli occupying force if they continue. Dude, do you really think the idea will kill them? Fuck yes, they will. Are you kidding me? If they don't get killed, that's new hostages. That's number one. Spelling? Israeli occupying force... Yes, I-O-F. That's not bad wording. I do not spell IDF wrong. It is not a typo. It's on purpose. It is the correct spelling. Maybe don't post welcoming the killing of Israelis. That won't look good. <sighs> Capital the first I, maybe. Yeah, the only reason why I won't post is because uh, it's not the optics. The only reason why I won't post is because I don't want under any circumstances for it to come across like I'm pro-Israeli settlers going in and, like, trying to fucking kill Palestinians that steal their homes. Disgusting. It was probably already clipped. Someone's definitely clipping that. I don't give a shit. I stand by the... I stand by the sentiment. I just don't want people to personally think that I'm, like, in favor of Israeli settler psychopaths fucking uh, rummaging through Palestinian homes. That's the only reason why I wouldn't tweet something like that, because it could be misconstrued 
to make it seem like I'm uh, saying that that is like pro-Israeli settlement expansion in Gaza. I am not. Aren't they going to clip you typing it out? Who cares? Whatever. I stand by what I'm saying. I just don't want Palestinians and pro-Palestinians to think that I'm saying, oh, it's great that the fucking settlers are are, are uh, furthering their uh, colonial efforts. <laughs> but it will definitely lead to the Israeli occupying force slaughtering them. It will either lead to, one, more hostages for any kind of Palestinian resistance group, or two, it will lead to the Israeli occupying force just fucking murking them. Gross freaks. Why would the Israeli occupying force kill them? Hello? Anyone and everyone inside of Gaza is an enemy combatant. That much is clear. They've already fucking presented as that. They've literally killed their own fucking hostages, dog. The hell are you talking about? I mean, even inside of Israel, they killed their own fucking, uh, they killed their own citizens. The fuck? Bro, the IDF is scared of their own goddamn shadow. They keep killing their own people. They keep killing their own soldiers. They keep killing their own hostages. Lord knows how many, Lord knows how many fucking hostages have, uh, have already been murked by bombs. Today, also we're going to discuss the Middle East and yesterday's tragic and alarming event with Gaza, trying to get humanitarian assistance in there. And uh, the loss of life is heartbreaking. People are so desperate that uh, uh, innocent people got caught in a terrible war, unable to feed their families, and you saw the response when they tried to get aid in. And we need to do more, and the United States will do more. In the coming days, we're going to join with our friends in Jordan and others in providing airdrops of additional supplies into Ukraine and seek to continue to open up other avenues. <laughs> Bro, it's because everybody thinks he's like misspeaking, but no, actually, they're just, they're getting the Jordanian uh, Royal Air Force to drop supplies in Ukraine, actually. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a misspeak, dude. <laughs> oh my God. Sitting across from this fucking demon is pretty funny, too. Into Ukraine, including the possibility of a Marine corridor to deliver large amounts of uh, humanitarian assistance. In addition to expanding deliveries by land, uh, as I said, we're going we're gonna to insist that Israel facilitate more trucks and more routes to get more and more people the, the help they need. No excuses, because the truth is, aid flowing to Gaza is nowhere nearly enough now it's nowhere nearly enough innocent lives are on the line and children's lives are on the line and we won't stand by and let until they until we get more aid in there we, we should be getting an investigation by the bbc founds that uh finds out that the israeli military lied about its involvement in the flower massacre in northern gaza in the early hours of thursday the investigation points out that israel released edited footage concealing parts where bbc can provide gunfire was heard here are the israeli military vehicles this is the direction of the convoy here are all the dead people that were murdered by Israeli gunshots. <sighs> Hamas's Qassam Brigades announced that it confirmed the killings of seven captives in an Israeli bombing of Gaza. Following investigations conducted over the past weeks after it losing contact with the fighters who had been holding them. There you go. I mean, what do you, what do you think was going to happen? BBC verify piece on this. What video and eyewitness accounts tell us about Gazans killed at the aid drop? Um, three of the hostages killed were the old men who were featured in one of the previous Hamas propaganda videos. The seven captive story is what spammed with as a retort to the war crime story I shared. But that's Israel killing them. It's no different than Israel just using fucking uh, conventional weapons on, on uh, Israeli hostages that had escaped and were trying to be uh, saved by IDF and got shot. It's no different. It's just less personal because it's a bomb being dropped, but it's still Israel that killed them. If Hamas... What? This makes no sense. How could hostages in a bombing zone be killed by bombs in a bombing zone? Exactly. That's what I said, but she still says it's Hamas's fault. Well, they're fucking delusional. I don't know what to tell you. Ask them, uh, ask them how hostages were released during the ceasefire period, then if it's Hamas's fault. What is this? There's a new ContraPoints video? About what? It's three hours long? Jesus Christ. This is so unfair. The ceasefire is actually dependent on Hamas releasing hostages while Israel keeps shooting. IDF boot camp is shorter than it takes to get a license to cut hair in the U.S. Uh, all right, we're going to we're going to move on, on from this stuff. Election fodder for Donald Trump. House member slams Hunter Biden's deposition. It's not just House members that are slamming Hunter Biden's deposition. As a matter of fact, it turns out even fucking Newsmax and all these other goddamn right wing outlets are starting to get mad. I think when the transcript comes out, 
It's going to read. It's going to read well for them because they did a great job prepping for a read. But that's. Oh, but, interesting. But the reality is, yeah, yeah. But when it, when you get down to it and you start parsing the words, you start realizing, oh yeah, yeah. That's that's very interesting. Well, what? So, uh, quote, when the transcript comes out, it's going to read well for him. That was Republican member of the Oversight and Judiciary Committee, Andy Biggs of Arizona, with that assessment of the transcript of the Hunter Biden closed door deposition to which he received interesting. Yesterday, the House Oversight and Judiciary Committees publicly released the full 229-page transcript of Hunter's testimony as part of their impeachment inquiry into his father, President Biden. The document, with some redactions, addressed numerous topics, including Hunter's laptop, laptop addi uh, addiction, Joe Biden, and Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, was mentioned. Hunter attempted to draw a contrast with the scrutiny he's received from the committees and questioned why they were not probing Jared Kushner for his own foreign business dealings. When a lawmaker asked Hunter whether he worked with foreign government. Classic, classic. <clears throat> that right there is classic lawyering. OK, debate pervertry. And he responded, I never worked for a country. I am not Jared Kushner. Hunter also pushed back. I think he did this. Uh, originally, he was like, originally, he was not going to do this. Obviously, he was like, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to appear in a closed door meeting because you guys are going to like lie about everything. But then they set the terms and conditions to like reveal all of the details to the media immediately after the closed door meeting in an effort to uh, in an effort to basically make these sorts of arguments so they can do a full court press in the media. To make Hunter Biden look good, which I think is probably succeeding. Like I, that's what I think is going on here. Hassan, you fucking called what this case was about. Rewind that shit. No. On Republicans for not investigating the. It's a lapcock. Everyone's got dick on the mind. Okay. When we're talking about Hunter, when we're talking about Hunter, it's hard not to have cock on the mind. Money Kushner's firm received after he left the White House in 2021, when Jared. Rewind chatters don't realize that at the top of the hour, you can't rewind because there's a three minute ad break. So even if I did rewind, you wouldn't be able to re-see what's going on there or my reaction to it because there's a three minute ad break for you. Unless you, of course, subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime or by getting gifted a sub. If you're lucky, use a three minute ad break now. Red Kushner flies to Saudi Arabia, picks up Thank $2 you, billion, dollars, comes back and puts it in his pocket. Okay, and Trump is running for president of the United States. You guys have any problem with that? Hunter Biden also testified. This is the last story on the serious news front before we move on to fun shit. But he never crossed very bright lines of asking his father to help his business partners and was always sensitive at keeping his father at arm's length. One thing that we, that I was fully aware of my entire life is that my dad was an official of the United States government, he said. And there were very bright lines that I abided to and that I was very, very cognizant of and made certain that I never engaged with my father in asking him to do anything on my behalf or on behalf of any client of mine. Joining us now, a Democratic member of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman Dan Goldman of New York. So what did they find? I mean, what happened here? I okay, boring, boring, boring. I don't care about Dan Goldberg. Give me the clips. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. I'm, I'm making an executive decision and we're moving away from it. It's fucking boring. I'm not going to, I don't want to hear John Kirby ever again. Oh, this is the last thing I was going to say. President Joe Biden's team is increasingly taking extraordinary steps to minimize disruptions from pro-Palestinian protests at his events by making them smaller, withholding their pr precise locations from the media and the public until he arrives, avoiding college campuses and, in at least one instance, considering hiring a private company to vet attendees. The efforts have resulted in zero disruptions at the events, the White House or the campaign have organized for Biden in the five weeks since he was interrupted a dozen times during an abortion rights speech in Virginia. But they've also meant that Biden is appearing in front of fewer voters and not personally engaging with some of the key constituencies whose support he's struggling to gain, such as young voters. It's really, really, really bad. Um, this is super sick. We have an actual person with the title Game Master, a single Helldivers 2 dev named Joel, pulling the strings on its galactic war like an all-powerful D&D dungeon master. War will become more and more sophisticated over time. 
Over 180,000 Helldivers 2 players are storming a single planet and are on track to liberate it under 24 hours unless Arrowhead's devious DM gets mean again. Update he did. Despite the uh, valorous efforts of the Helldivers, automaton marauders have invaded Super Earth territory. Patriotic citizens mourn as the sufficiently sized homes burn to the ground. Super Earth citizens demand justice and they will receive it. But for now, the Terminant control system is ready for activation. Veld was determined clear of Terminant presence months ago, but it appears a subterranean hive eluded detection and has been gestating undemocratic vermin for weeks. Now the spawn have erupted, creating a massive outbreak that threatens to engulf the entire planet if we do not act quickly. Contain the outbreak now before bugs are able to spread it further. I love that they have like, they just like continue on. It's, it's like a living, breathing world, basically, in this regard. It's super sick. Why does this sound like an Israeli occupying force tweet? Well, it, it sounds like an Israeli Criminals. occupying, Israeli occupying force tweet because like it's fascist. It literally is fascist. That's the whole point. It's satire on fascism. Israel is, of course, not sat satirical in its fascist uh, agitation. Israel is fascist. All right, let's watch this Finland solved homelessness video, and then we're going to move on from Finland solved homelessness to when suspects try to seduce the police from Dr. Insanity, one of my favorite types of cop watch, cop watch videos. Let's watch this. in our country has gone from bad to worse. As the crisis deepens, so is the criminalization of homelessness. Immediately, my girl, Amy. Immediately, my girl, Amy's voice, I heard. And as soon as I hear Amy, I'm in, uh, you know, this is comfortable territory. Ain't nobody with a reactionary bone in their body is making a fucking video on homelessness and they're going to feature Amy Goodman. RV after RV parked here because people have nowhere else to go. New data shows that homelessness in the United States is at an all time high. But there's one country that has redefined how nations can tackle homelessness. Finland is one of the only countries in the world to significantly decrease homelessness. Invisible people travel to Helsinki to invest. <laughs> people going, this is, this is politics where is fun bitch of course like my fun co my fun shit is still gonna be like somewhat political i'm watching a fucking cop video too shut the fuck up i was walking you know where the fun is when when we learn about how we can combat homelessness that's what's fun suck my dick in areas in the city if it was america you would have seen countless homeless people with the leaders who made it happen the worse the situation is the, the more important it is that you at least start a change citizens living in housing first units is your life better now in housing i don't want to lie it's not and everything is better when i live here and the staff that supports them. A person needs a home so the other stuff can happen. You can never get so low that we will not be beside you. Housing first comes from USA. We changed the systems completely. We went all in with the housing first. And at the same time, this kind of camps disappeared. In America, people don't want to give housing to homeless. What would you say to them? She would say that it saved her life and it will save others' lives too. And so that's why Housing First is so great because otherwise uh, she might be dead. How has her life changed in housing? She doesn't use drugs anymore and that's quite big. Work. There's a rhythm in life. Normally. Normal life, which is what she wanted. What's the favorite part of your apartment? Thank you. They are about gate Bed and the kitchen. What is homelessness like in Finland? Very bad. And it was very scary. Winters are cold. We only care about the homeless if they're vets. No, we don't. No, we don't. That's just a lie. People just say that as a talking point. The extent of Americans' interest in veteran homeless people only goes as far as using them as a talking point against other people that are also le uh, unfortunate. We don't give a fuck about the vets, dog. Homeless or with a home, okay? 22 a day. 22 veterans a day commit suicide. 22. We don't give a single shred of a fuck, dude. America's extent of giving a fuck about veterans is basically giving them a fucking 20% discount on Wednesday mornings or some shit, okay? That's it. It's gross. It's like, oh, yeah. And also saying, hey, you can skip the line at the fucking airport. Or uh, every now and then, somebody being like, oh, thank you for your service. Yeah, America does not give a fuck about the veterans, dog. Oh, my God. It's like, 
Like literally, not even a single shred of a fuck. Yeah. And they are long. Mm. Oh, much as hell in, in Finland, cause <laughs> you be real cold, real wet. Not very nice, but where? Where is it? Nice. 1990s, we still have 20,000 homeless people. And of course, at some point, the, there was a real struggle that there were many people sleeping on the street. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh. It's just like, it's hard not for, it's hard for me not to laugh when, when this guy is literally saying like, wow, we have such a big problem with homeless people. Like we, we are so cruel and unusual for 20,000 people to be homeless. There are 60,000 homeless people in Los Angeles. Like right now, or more like in just the LA County, I think there's 60,000 homeless people in LA. Oh my God. To be fair, 20,000 for Finnish population, Finland population in the nineties. Let's see. It probably was a big problem. I mean, there's, yeah, there's 5 million people in Finland right now in the nineties. There was still 5 million people in Finland. It seems not a lot of, not a lot of population growth for Finland, homeless population in Los Angeles right now 75,000 people 75,518 homeless people in Los Angeles to Los Angeles is 3.8 million population 75,000 homeless people right now in Los Angeles to its 3.8 million population the homeless population in LA is growing faster than the whole population of Finland yes bro your brain is turning American you forgot other countries don't have 360 million population bitch no it's not you don't understand how numbers work because of the reason that I just described to you. Even on the per capita argument, LA fucking laps Finland. That's the whole point. I just gave you a per capita argument. I accounted it for the population size. Los Angeles population, 3.8 million. Los Angeles homeless population, 75,000. Finnish population in the 90s, 4.9 million. Finnish population of homeless people in the 90s, 20,000. And then, you know, because the winters are really harsh here in, in Finland, they would also die on the streets. So I think that was a really, really the wake up call that we need to do something. But it's still, a pretty, it's still slowly, a pretty, it's still a pretty significant then, number. And we get uh, the rapid phase when we start the housing for 2008. That's when they went all in on housing first. They renovated almost all of the shelters into housing first buildings to give homeless people their own individual apartments. They also built more affordable housing across the country, and it seems to have paid off. In five years, we both created the program and halved the long-term homelessness in Finland. Homelessness in Finland has changed quite dramatically since 2008, for example, in the city of Helsinki, which is the capital city. You will not see tents, sleeping bags, or... Well, they must have killed them then, right? Because there's no other way to deal with homelessness is by fucking ruthlessly massacring homeless people, right? You put them in a tent city and then you kill them away from the population centers or rough sleepers whatsoever we I want suspect. to end homelessness or we want to end rough sleeping in america when americans say we plan to eradicate homelessness they mean we plan to eradicate homeless people by killing them i think you know some people would have laughed at that that you know that's not possible ever but you know uh, i think we have proved them wrong we spent days on our own in Helsinki looking for homeless people and we couldn't find them it was surreal so are there really none left you wouldn't solving the homeless problem help the rich get more workers? Why do they push against it? What are you talking about? More workers in this circumstance is already... Uh, they're, they're, no, no, it's the, it's the opposite. Homelessness in the way that it exists is phenomenal for the wealthy. Why? Because one, their police is always going to fucking push them away. And I say this to, as a person who lives in a wealthy part of Los Angeles, but not like wealthy, wealthy, you know what I mean? Still a very wealthy part of Los Angeles, but there's still a shit ton of homelessness here, okay? Um, as you guys know, famously, the, I had a serial masturbator. He's gone now, but I don't know what the fuck happened to him. But there's other, uh, plenty of homeless people around. But the threat of homelessness as what will happen if you don't work really fucking hard is one, pretty good for a lot of the capital owners. The other part... Uh, the other part is that uh, homelessness happens as a consequence of the housing market constantly, uh, uh, constantly pushing artificial scarcity despite the demand, right? So for the wealthy, it's infinitely more important to protect their assets and to ensure that their property values continue rising rather than, uh, rather than you know, fixing the problem, fixing the root cause of the problem, which would greatly hurt the wealthy.
Yuhak told us this isn't a visible phenomenon, so we needed to go inside to find them. So welcome to our organization, No Fixed Abode. You entered to our day center, Vepa, where people who are sleeping rough, they can come here. And this is kind of living room. We serve every day a warm meal, mainly the peer support and also the professional guidance how to find an apartment. The housing first started in our organization and we are still running the first housing first unit, Sallikoti, here in Finland. How does this connect with the city services? Our functions are separated from the, the city services. We do lots of collaboration with, uh, with the city. People who are doing the outreach work come here in regular basis. Is artificially scarcing in how city, like impossibly in housing, like impossibly high cost? No, it's just like not building uh, low low cost housing, not building social housing, public housing. It's not building housing at all. Or if you do build housing, you just uh, fucking only allow luxury condominiums. Things that d would depress, um, look, make no mistake. The greatest reason as to why we will never fix, with the way things stand, the housing crisis in this country and homelessness in this country is because a shit ton of Americans and I'm, I'm not talking about like billionaires. I'm talking uh, not even millionaires in certain instances, but a shit ton of Americans rely on their houses being an investment vehicle, rely on even the house that they're living in as a, a vehicle for wealth accumulation. What do I mean by this? What I mean is a lot of Americans, when they are fortunate enough to be able to purchase a home, they sit on it and the property and they're, they're used to the property value rising dramatically. Okay. What do they do with that? Well, one, that contributes to their net worth. Two, they can take money against that by putting a mortgage on their houses if they've already paid it out, for example, or a second mortgage, even though they have a first mortgage. You're talking about people's retirement plans. You're talking about the entire, like, we're not talking about just, uh, you know, 1% of the American population. We're talking about fucking close to 60% of the population. That is a ginormous amount. And all those people vote too, by the way. So for that reason... For that reason, it is uh, incredibly unpopular to push for any kind of measure that would genuinely fuck up the bag for 60% of Americans. To them, I say sucks the suck, by the way. Don't make a mistake here. I, I, personally, I, I personally, as a homeowner myself, don't give a fuck because I am not reliant on the property that I currently own increasing in value. I use this as the primary focus. Shelter. Okay. So for me, it doesn't matter if the prices of this house, if the price of this house goes down or up, I'm using it for shelter. That's the purpose of it. 60% um, of Americans own a home. Yeah, home ownership rates in the United States of America, I think are like 60%, uh, something like that. I think it might even be 66%. Let me look at it real quick. Home ownership rates in the US. Yeah, 65.7%. Homeownership rate in the United States rose slightly in 2022, reaching the highest figure since 2011. However, in 2023, the proportion of households occupied by owners declined to 65.7%. What do they mean by ownership? I think a lot of you as younger people in this chat don't realize that like there was a time and place when a lot of Americans owned their own home. It was the part of the American dream. Okay, but you're sort of missing the point. You're also not relying on your home to provide for your retirement because you're wealthy. This all goes back to the decimation of the pensions, yes, or a, or a not inadequate social security, as well as the decimation of pensions. So a lot of people own homes, and every single person, pretty much every, I am unique in the sense that, for me, this house is not my retirement plan, and this house and its value, its property value increasing, is not a factor of consideration for, like, uh, my net worth. I don't care. However... For all, for almost every single person in the 65.7% bracket, their houses are their primary value provider, their primary source of accumulating wealth. This is perhaps the single greatest hurdle in combating the homelessness crisis that we are facing. This is why there needs to be a relatively authoritarian measure that is not even so authoritarian after all, as a matter of fact like in California or in many other parts of the country, we pass anti-homelessness initiatives by incredibly popular, incredibly wide margins. California has a fucking bill, uh, a, a ballot measure, almost every election where they're like, we are going to increase property values, taxes, 
by, I don't know, 25% if they're over $5 million. And that gets fucking passed uh, with tremendous support. And then we collect the money to the tune of billions of dollars, mind you. And then nothing ever happens. The real reason why nothing ever happens is because, although people voted for it, the calculation that the Democrats make in places like California is that they do not want to upset the massive amount of homeowners in the country, in the state. I want to see what the homeownership rate in California is. I wonder if we have that. I wonder what it would look like. See? Yeah. Look. California has declined from around 50% in 2000 to around 44% in 2021, with younger Californians aged 35 to 45 experiencing the steepest decrease. So that's like 50% of fucking Californians, 44% of Californians that'd be like, what the fuck? My housing values went down. Sure, there's no more homeless people in the streets, but my fucking home value went down. And that's my entire fucking life savings. We're talking about an entire century almost of uh, the American dream being propped up and with people legitimately purchasing homes at a time when they could. So yeah, I don't see the problem. Just save up and budget and buy your own house after saving for a couple years. Chatters all just need the latest smartphone and Starbucks every day. Okay, shut the fuck up. That person is memeing. Please don't yell at this guy. He's memeing in, in the dumbest way possible. Jesus Christ. Yeah, dude, just cut back on the fucking jalapeno powers or the avocado toast, depending on where you're living, and you'll be able to buy a house in no time. Oh, stop spamming the fucking climate defiance Joe Manchin video. I'm not going to watch it today. But that is just plain stupid investment. If you invest in housing in an artificially inflated market, it doesn't matter. It is the democratic process in some ways that holds it up. Because guess what, dude? Out of the 44%, you bet your fucking ass almost every single person in that 44% is voting. They make up an overwhelming population of voters. That's why they don't do it. Although they should. I think they shouldn't hold public town halls and have every reactionary NIMBY come and fucking yell at them. I think they should actually follow on the democratic process and follow through with the promises that they made that the voters voted for. I never got why you chose LA. Aren't there better spots, cost and weather wise? First of all, the cost is not obviously significant for me. And secondly, I like living in Los Angeles. I've lived here for 10 years. I'm comfortable living here. I'm comfortable living in the area that I live in. This is what I know. This is what I love. That's it. And the weather is, is definitely the best. There is objectively no other area that you can live in that has better, better weather, in my opinion. It is currently 61 degrees and actually sunny as shit. Why exactly does it make the value go down? Well, it doesn't make the value go down. It makes the value stay the same. Because if there's more supply on housing, then all of a sudden, the house that you have is not going to always increase in value. There's a finite amount of land, but God forbid if we were to use that land for anything but single family homes, by the way, which is another zoning regulation that I hate to admit the Yimbies are correct on. And it's not just about building homeless shelters. I'm talking about like, there are a million different reasons as to why people uh, abhor the concept of more housing being built. One, construction in your backyard. That's going to lead to complications. Construction can take a very long time. Two, if you build affordable housing, all of a sudden, your housing value will also uh, go down because, well, there's an apartment right next to your single family home. People that buy single family homes do not want to live around apartments. I do not have such uh, fears or opinions. I do live in a uh, mixed zone regardless. West Hollywood is not only single family homes, contrary to popular opinion. Then subsidize now, pay the NIMBYs as annoying as they are. I think that would also be ridiculous. You're talking about fucking 50% of the population, brother or sister or MB. So how do we get people to stop caring about their property value? You don't. You just do it. They voted for it. It's democracy. Sucks to fucking suck. But that would require bravery. That would require leadership. That would require moral courage, which is something that our politicians lack. They're also obviously uh, vested in interested parties themselves many of our politicians also own properties many of our politicians are also landlords many of our politicians are also friends with people who own a shit ton of property i don't understand why americans prefer a huge homeless population in their city centers over a few more taxes and shelter spaces i'm describing to you why it's not a preference it's not a matter of preference at all and it's pure information. class interest and then kind of like what is going on 
with people who are sleeping rough. Onks kaikki ihan ok? Ei mitään hätää, ei tarvi meidän takia nousta. Hello, I'm doing street work in streets of Helsinki. I want to invite you to see outreach work. So people who are walking their dogs and walking around, if they find tents, they maybe make a call. Some, sometimes we find find a new one, uh, get informed for a new place. Yeah, it's really under a bridge. <laughs> of course, it's so different before 2010 because there was so much people rough sleeping in this kind of tent camp. 2010 and 2013 have built many new places and same time this kind of camps disappeared. Housing First is, a, is an idea where people have their own rental contracts and own homes and uh, they also get support in the housing. Earlier it was like that you had to kind of like earn to get a house, you had to like rehabilitate from uh, abuse problems and things like that. But the Finnish people let one important truth guide their policy. It's kind of impossible to rehabilitate from the streets, so a person needs a home, so the other stuff can happen after that. Everyone needs a home. We try to make sure that everyone... It makes too much sense, I think. Everyone gets that opportunity. And that sounds incredible, but we wondered, how can Finland possibly keep up with the demand? Aren't more people falling into homelessness every day there, too? So we asked Finland's former housing minister, who spearheaded the entire project. The housing market do not work perfectly. We need also to regulate part of the markets, not the whole, not at all. And the, the way we have done it has been in Helsinki that we have uh, built affordable housing where both the, the federal state and the, the city uh, subsidizes this, this construction uh, actually quite a lot. So this is one of our buildings constructed by Y Foundation USAT. And it's meant for people with, with low income. We have built this one actually together with the living. Yeah, this guy's a liberal, by the way. Part of the business lobby is so funny to think that like, you can have a fucking neoliberal. Yeah. John Vapavuri is a neolib, but at least the homelessness program worked well under him. Not a woke person at all. Yeah, because he wants to solve it. There's no other way to fucking solve it, dog. That's it. The music association, which means that there is certain parts. Part of the reason why it's easier, I guess, in a country like, uh, in a place like Helsinki, in a country like Finland, to be able to solve this problem is because... Their outlook on housing is not the same as the United States of America. I need you to understand. The calculation that American homeowners make is that this is their primary way of, of having like a nest egg in some instances. If you don't view housing as a investment vehicle and as your primary source, don't say Finland has a population of 6 million. Please stop. It doesn't fucking matter. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Listen, listen, even on a per capita front, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. Compare it to Los Angeles. Like I did earlier. And you will realize that there's a massive problem in LA and Los Angeles has a smaller population than the entire fucking country of Finland. Economy scale, the major factor, the major factor at play here is that when you have a government that has social safety nets better social safety nets there is more social cohesion there is more interest in dealing with these problems because more of the homeowners in finland do not see their homes as the primary vehicle for wealth accumulation in the same way that americans do capitalism and hyper capitalist sentiment like that creates an environment where it is a a zero-sum game where every single person is out for themselves, where they think like, well, what the fuck? I, uh, of course, like my, my home, my home value is going to go down. I don't want that. That's fucking crazy. Like this, this government did that for me. They decimated my, my housing value by building more housing to put it into simpler terms. There are more people who see, and I'm not saying that like people are socialist or anything. I don't think it's a socialist principle to think that like you buy a house so you can live in it. Right. I don't think that's socialist at all. I think it's just normal. But in America, we don't think about it like that. You as renters think about it like that. But many people who purchase homes, once they have that home and rely on that home value going up, don't think about it like, oh, well, this is my shelter. They think about it as this is my shelter. And perhaps even more importantly, 
this is my primary source of wealth accumulation. This is my nest egg. This is my, this is what is a substitute for my pension. It's so funny to me that you fully understand these things and have hella empathy, but liberals in my city with realistically much less money cannot access reality or empathize with other people. And half of Twitter still thinks you're the enemy. Yes, because the reason why people think I'm the enemy is because I'm rich. That's it. And it's totally valid for people to think that I, I, I get that. Why wouldn't you? You it's normal. And I would even say, dare I say healthy to be resentful of rich people. OK, how you make your money is obviously important. And I think that uh, people should probably uh, find better villains. But I get it. People think I say this is a grift. It's a very profitable grift if you think about it ex exclusively as just myself. Of the apartments are reserved for low-income rock musicians. There is a rehearsal space for the musicians and those kind of things. So the city of Helsinki has decided that there has to be at least 25% affordable housing. Let's be real. Most people in your position would do the same damn thing, brother. Yeah, why aren't they then? How many fucking... How many YouTubers and, and streamers do you know? I mean, streamers are a little different, especially my friends. They're pretty, they're pretty kind people and pretty empathetic. But in the broader scheme of things, how many top fucking Twitch streamers or YouTubers are spending all their time and effort and also a disposable income on fighting for things that they believe in? The fuck? That's, I don't think that is true at all, as a matter of fact. So people with different backgrounds, different income levels, they share the same playgrounds and, and same services. It's really proud that the city of Helsinki has decided to do that. So affordable housing is dedicated to, to reduce homelessness and give low-income people a chance to get a flat even in the cities. But then uh, that is not the way you can tackle the Aiden Ross is funding the people's protracted war on the instruments of capital. Yes, this is true. Except for Aiden Ross. It's severe homelessness, and there you need different kind of methods. We then had the, the housing first. We are in a housing unit, Pessi, right now. Our tenants who live in, in this floor. These measures are easier in monocultures. No, they're not. Wrong. America is a fucking monoculture. It's just a bad one, okay? People that think that America doesn't have like a single unifying American culture is wrong, okay? We do. It's just a shitty one. The notion that like, I love, I love people being like, well, that's a monoculture. That's why, okay? Why do you have a contract with Night Media who is owned by Disney? Because I'm secretly in the pocket of woke uh, Disney. That's why. I also am represented by WME, which is far worse than Night Media or Disney. You should fucking hit me on that angle instead. Literally owned by Ari Emanuel. Oh, fuck. Helping the haters. Well, it's because it's fucking idiotic. I also have a contract with Amazon, which is probably one of the worst companies on the planet. Hello? Think about it. Twitch owned by Amazon. Far worse. Anyway, um, the monoculture argument is really, really stupid. Why have a contract with them? What do you mean, why have a contract with them? I have a contract with Amazon too, dumbass. The fuck are you talking about? You're on a platform that is owned by Jeff Bezos. The answer is within the question. Within the, within the logistics of you being able to ask this question, you will be able to answer the question that you asked. Think about it a little bit further, and you will immediately recognize the answer to the question, why? We know you're a bad dude, and we're still supporting because we like the delivery. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. So... As far as, uh, as far as monoculture goes, America is a monoculture, okay? <sighs> you are sitting in a country where white is the monoculture in America. White capitalism is the monoculture in America. And plenty of Hispanic uh, uh, people in this country are also participating in that. When they go out and fucking vote for the Republican Party, when they say that they're white, you know what I mean? The reason why I use the Hispanic population specifically is because... They were recently brought into the white categorization not that long ago. That's the monoculture. Why can't you just make your own streaming platform then? That's your count. Stop. 12 month subscriber. Yeah. Make my own streaming platform that will still have to rely on Amazon Web Services and IVS like Kick that still pays Amazon money. Anyway. So yes, America is a monoculture as well. It's just racially diverse and i think that's what a lot of people are trying to say when they say monoculture they can uh, make food together and uh, they uh, also take care of the flo floor uh, cleaning and such kind of things they come to my penthouse that's in Koti. <laughs> it's his home this is my home how long was he sleeping rough um 
he, he left his step parents when he was 15 and he was living in a uh, hallway. How long has he been in housing? 13 years. 13 years in housing? That's Is this his longest time in housing? His 15 years is the longest period ever. How has his life changed in housing? No. His life is more orderly right now because he doesn't use constantly drugs. He's doing substitute treatment for opiates. How did you survive homelessness, especially in the cold? He knows how to open doors without a key. He had some kind of like tool, so he knew how to go the hallway. So he slept in doorways? Yeah. In 1985, in the city of Helsinki, there was around 2,000 shelter beds, and now the number is 200. There is still, still, you know, rooms that you share with two or three different people and, and so on. If the solution for you is scattered housing or a housing first unit. Yeah, you don't have to choose AWS. You have a plethora of options such as Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform. It's definitely not tech feudalism, as Yanis Varoufakis said. Yup. You are not waiting in a shelter or on the streets. Then the time that you need to wait that apartment and support to come available, you will have access to temporary accommodation, which means that you have a room of your own and then you share the kitchen and bathroom with someone else. For a year, I had to go for the night's emergency housing. Then when I contacted social services on this Mother didn't take long to get here. Own room with the lock. But even with his own room, he's still considered homeless. He'll stay there until placed in his own apartment with a signed lease. Only then is he no longer homeless. And this process generally seems to take months, not years, like in the US. So even though the social benefit system costs a lot of money, it's still cheaper than having people sleep on the streets in a tent or having, having to go them through with the shelter and temporary accommodation over and over again and using the extremely expensive emergency services in the health sector or social sector or in the justice department sector. And then of course it's the right thing to do for the people to make sure that everyone has a home of their own. So even with the low number of shelter beds, there is actually space in shelters to be used as emergency shelter, which makes the outreach team's job a bit easier, less frustrating. This empowers them as boots on the ground to play a larger role in improving the problem as well. We went out with an outreach team where they talk about areas of housing first that need to be improved. I'm so mad. Okay, I thought this was fun stuff. It's starting to piss me off. It's just like, we could have this. We could have this in the United States of America. This exists. This exists in other parts of the fucking world. I'm so mad. Finland also is another country where, like, the education structure is, like, phenomenal. It's just... Mm, mm. We are doing outreach work, but all... They literally have the highest number of cousin fuckers per capita. How are we getting lapped? Oh, my God. Well, that's not true. It's Iceland. But God damn it, I'm still mad. Also, we try to change the system. Yeah, social reporting and uh, this kind of structural social yeah. work. When we are writing the social report, we are sending straight to the people who are making decisions. So politicians get our social reporting same time that our boss is getting that. Media is getting same time that our boss is getting. No one can eat. People from Finland, by the way, are either some of the best chatters I have, and there are plenty of them in here right now, or some of the most unimaginably fucking annoying. I'm actually a social democrat, son, but let me tell you, I'm so pro NATO, and also it was normal for us to use the swastika. It was so normal for us to use the swastika in our air force. You're so wrong. It predates the Nazis. Also, don't ask us what we're doing in World War II with the Nazis. It's just like, it's either some of the most base motherfuckers or some of the most annoying and nothing in between. It's so fucking annoying. The plan was a gift. You're stupid. No, we can't have this. CEOs and billionaires need to buy their ninth mega yacht. Think of the rich, bro. Don't be so self-centered. Yeah, except like Norway, at least uh, like a decade ago, had more billionaires per capita than fucking the United States of America. So there's that too. So like they're lapping us on that shit too, baby. Influence what we are riding in. People who have experienced homelessness, they are the best advocacy workers. They are the best to explaining to decision makers, to the politicians, what they should do. What happens when politicians change and stop supporting housing first? Basically, we shouldn't 
need to be worried about the issue. But then again, if you follow the conversation at the moment in the newspapers, it might be a little bit um, uncertain. But then again, we have a, I think we have a written commitment from the new government to, to be in this and, and take care of the issue. So let's hope that happens also. I think it was important from the very beginning that the program was actually led by a center-right politician like me. We needed the 10 biggest cities in Finland uh, to be on board. And, and uh, those 10 cities... He just says it too. He's like, yeah, he's center-right. They had different kind of... Dude, look at this, dude. Look at this. Oh my God, they're pooping on us, dude. Finland is pooping on us again. Like, that is the Democratic Party guy for Finland, okay? Because Democratic Party is a center-right party. Even their center-right guys are... Like, I can't even imagine, dude. I can't imagine a fucking Democratic Party guy openly pushing for this policy and not immediately getting called like a psychotic socialist who wants to execute billionaires in fucking Times Square or some shit. This is what I mean. This is what I get mad at when, I, when we talk about like American politics. People are like, oh, what are their thoughts on trans people? It's like, dude, dude, how do you not see that the conversation surrounding like civil liberties for trans people and whatnot is is genuinely considered a distraction to make you feel like you're actually quote unquote woke it's not real especially when push comes to shove and you have a fucking democratic administration trans people have seen worse and worse provisions being passed in red states across the fucking board under the biden regime like the democrats don't give a fuck about trans people okay just like they openly demonstrated, they don't give a fuck about immigrants until it's just a talking point that they will drop. And on the economic front, we are so far right. The Democratic Party is incredibly far right. You may not see this, but I work in DC for a homelessness nonprofit that practices a housing first model. We do this work in the US now, specifically in the DMV. However, it wasn't adopted on a large scale by the US government. So it's, le so it's left to nonprofits to do a shitty job with overworked staff and resources that can be raised by MPs themselves political majorities. We explained each and every mayor and a lot of city councillors and so on. It is the interest of everyone that we are able to reduce the homelessness. Explained how it makes cities safer, how it makes cities more pleasant, and that in the long run, you even save taxpayers money. So you could say that we had all the main parties in Finland somehow involved Jean Vapa Vuri, the guy in the video is not center right. He's full right wing together in government for fascists. You're being duped by him. This is propaganda taking credit of leftist ideas while privatizing everything and destroying the social safety of Finland. It don't matter, dog. It don't matter. He still did this shit. He passed it. Like, think about that. He fucking passed it. Like, that only further proves the point I'm trying to fucking say, which is that when it comes to when it comes to fucking economic issues, when it comes to like genuinely pushing provisions. Like, issues like this, he still, when push came to shove, he still passed this. It's an operation, is it not? The point here isn't to say that this guy is woke by any measure, or a good guy, or a good politician. The point is to show you how fucking bad things are in America. You started the stream by saying sometimes privatization can even be better until it's the only option, then you're cooked. No, what I was talking about is sometimes when things are privatized, first and foremost, while the public-funded... Uh, well, the public funded initiatives are still being crippled personally, right, by right wing politicians, neoliberals like this fucking dipshit. It can, for a brief moment, look like it's cleaner or cheaper until it's not. And it very quickly turns into, oh shit, it's not actually. If I were to ask people in the UK, I'm willing to bet that they probably still think a lot of the public transit lines that they utilize are not actually owned by the public any longer but they probably still think it's a consequence of the fucking uk government and socialism that's how it works people literally think that oh like it's it's it's not working because of the fucking government lad it's the socialism we must privatize it it's like well that they did do that that's why it's fucked that's another wonderful little marketing opportunity for neoliberals to make it seem like it's actually all still publicly uh, it, it all still publicly owned. From the beginning, which of course then creates a better basis that these programs and these uh, concepts will be respected 
even in the future. So what would you tell Americans that don't support housing first? They say, oh, that's... I have to say the railway privatization failure is actually resulting in the renationalization of some of the lines in the UK. Okay, maybe that's not a good argument because Thatcher is so popular and still on the minds of many people in the UK. So they actively recognize that like conditions worsening are a byproduct of privatization. Farmer Second says they will do Thatcher's privatization of council housing. I don't want to talk about the UK. I don't, I never want to talk about the UK. It makes me so mad. It makes me more mad than American politics. Okay. I don't want to talk about the Labour Party. It is a somber reminder of what they fucking did to our big, beautiful boy Jezza. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. It makes me so angry. Like they had, imagine if like Bernie Sanders was the leader. For, of the Democratic Party, and then they just like they shanked them like fucking Caesar, and then the guy that they put in uh, in in that position was like Nancy Pelosi, or worse, Joe Manchin. They took they shanked Bernie and put Joe Manchin as the president, or not even president, but the, like the leader of the Democratic Party. Better than Bernie. Corbyn was better than Bernie. If it makes you angry, how do you think it feels being British? Oh no, I'd be fucking I'd be red hot every goddamn day because it's like it's the it's the classic. Is the classic question, is it better to lose something after having it? Or is it better to never have it at all? Because in America, we never have it. <clears throat> we never had it. So, like, I don't even know what I would do if I had, a, like, a moment of solace and a feeling of, like, uh, uh, of genuine, uh, uh, of, like, my nation prospering. Like, the last time we had something similar to that was fucking 100 years ago. <laughs> so... It, it ain't happening. It's great for them, but we can't do it. So we are very sm small country and you are a big country. You have a lot of money. So if you want, you can really do that. Make the change. And housing first comes from USA. <laughs> He's laughing. You guys took the idea and ran with it. And we have more resources and obviously more homelessness, but we're not doing it as good as you. And if we did, we would be reducing homelessness. Yeah, if you want, you can do it. In the US, uh, Housing First is, is doable. Trying to think about why we want to build affordable housing and how that connects with the Housing First. And at the end of the day, if you don't care about people and humanity, then I think most people will care about the finance things. So it's always much cheaper to house people and, and have them. This is the other part of it too, but <laughs> nope. <laughs> Good luck explaining that, the motherfuckers right support for people than that they are sleeping on the streets on the tents going through the shelters and then this kind of revolving door effect it's totally doable there's need to be a lot of courage to do different kind of decisions regarding affordable housing and housing first but also different kind of prevention solutions so when people are struggling with their mortgages or their rents so that there would be different services to help them so that they don't end up being homeless altogether so combining those things prevention affordable social housing and housing first miracles can happen it's been a great relief it's been so long since i had placed go home Oh yeah, this is it. Yeah, AB 309, the Social Housing Act, vetoed by the governor. Is your life better now in housing? Uh, I don't wanna lie. It's not. I should stop doing drugs and get back to work. When did you start using? About six, seven years ago. How old are you? 22 now. The biggest reason for starting to use intravenous drugs was because my best friend killed himself. Residents, they have history of years of abuse problems or mental health problems or homelessness. Of course, giving them an apartment, it doesn't fix anything in a, you know, months or even years. It takes a long time to learn to trust, trust that, okay, this is really my home and it, it is permanent. I don't have to move out soon. It's a normal one I go to sleep. Yeah, I just throw stuff. Messy apartment is... Uh... Yep, there it is. Even in the worst case, even in the worst case scenario of a person who hasn't been able to... A person who hasn't been able to heal, right? Still better. Uh, better than the streets. It's a place where they can feel safe. It's a place where they have a door they can lock that they can... Reg when push comes to shove, it's still better to be subscribed at the top of the hour than not. Because at the top of the hour, a three-minute ad break is coming for you. So you can be 
out there watching a three-minute ad break, or you can be someone who subscribed for $5 or for free. Here's a three-minute ad break now. Leftist Fascist 69420. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Regulate who comes in. They can sleep there in peace. Anybody that has a very messy room, they also have a very messy mind. And when you lose hope and when you are very depressed, you don't have much energy. And sometimes it's also because you've never learned how to keep a tidy home. Nobody never taught you really. Maybe you've been in an, you the some kind of an institution living your childhood. You've never seen what a home looks like. What do you do at home? How do you clean your kitchen table? How do you do your, uh, how do you clean your toilet? Should you do it every week? Why should you do it? How to do it? So there's a many ways we can help because if you have been ge getting these problems for 10 years, how can they be solved in one week or two weeks? We have to be patient. You can never get so low that we will not be beside you. We will walk with you. The problems That's of awesome. housing first do not overshadow its impact. This young man is no longer homeless and this young man is going into treatment. Everybody's talking about housing first, housing first. Yeah. It's important, but it's more than housing first. It is. It, yeah, is. it is. It's also support. Yes, housing first is the first step. This is important to also recognize that and understand. That comes together with housing. So we don't leave a person. Guys, you're taught, you're watching social workers, by the way. Like, of course, they're going to be more more uh, empathetic. They are professionally passionate and empathetic people. Um, that is, that's like... Someone in the chat said, like, wow, these people have more empathy for this person than my parents did for me. And it's like, yeah, these are the types of people that we should be funding and, and creating more of. Alone with apartment. And their definition of support is impressive. Every building we visited had jobs and activities for its residents. We're talking recording studios, gardens, gyms, outdoor fireplaces, finished saunas. It's clear they're thinking less about housing numbers and more about improving the lives of each individual person living there. We have to understand that housing first is not housing only. Sauna is a sauna is a huge deal for Finnish people. If I have Yeah, it's like constitutionally enshrined. Finnish sauna is a human right. Problem? Here is stuff and I can call them. Hey, I have little not good feelings. They help me if I have something paper, but I don't understand. I can go there and say, hey, I don't know what I do in this. They help me. We have work here four days in the week, Monday or Thursday, four hours. We give little money. So how long have you lived here? Almost two years. Almost two years. You like it? Yeah, yeah. It's very, very, very. If I not live here, I drink uh, more and more. And everything is better. Sauna. When I live here. People are saying a lot. Yeah, I already know people are going to be like, this is nice in the college dorms in the US as if it's a bad thing. Like, yes, they are. Maybe we should reassess our housing situation here and not the other way around. Yeah. Same goes for Norwegian prisons, right? Like, Every single time we look at a fucking Norwegian prison video, motherfuckers will be like, damn, I'm about to do a crime in Norway. Isn't this like literally getting people to do more crimes in Norway? And it's like, no, dog. No, it's not. Okay. As demonstrably not. There's empirical evidence to suggest that it does not. Okay. It does the exact opposite, actually. It causes people to reorient to, to becoming productive members of society rather than uh, increase the recidivism rate. It's crazy, but I, I don't know. It's just like... Americans are so cooked, dude. We are so cooked. We literally are like, we look at like, uh, we look at living conditions for prisoners in Norway and go, damn, that should be worse. Instead of looking at our normal living conditions outside of prison, uh, you know, outside of prison in the United States and go, damn, we should fix that. They used to drink because there's nothing. They were alone. They don't have really nothing to do. And when they're here, the community is helping and they have this little work here and of course the staff who can support them to be sober. So she was using drugs when she was homeless? She was like so scared she had to be under intoxication in order to cope with that situation. So that's why she used drugs and that's why she doesn't use them anymore. She ne needed no treatment because she, when she got her own home and own key and, and then she started working here, it changed her life and she said that she just left the drugs after that uh, by her own will.
Of what kind of drugs? Kaikke. Everything. That's her answer. So he did it all. See this? That is a housing first building. Almost a hundred formerly homeless people because it's not a shelter. Many of them are still substance users, but they're using inside and families are walking by children playing safe smiling that's how you end homelessness we're in downtown helsinki area called Tööl, which is a quite wealthy neighborhood ruusulankatu housing unit is 10 years old the people who work in that housing unit are doing a lot of work regarding that issue the nimby effect then we also have our own specialist worker she organizes meetings with the tenants and with the neighbors. It is better to place these units downtown and in those places where you have a lot of people instead of those places where you have less of them. Because in downtown Helsinki, downtown cities, people are used to, to all kind of people. And actually, you don't notice these units as uh, easily as you certainly do in other neighborhoods. But from the very beginning, we also understood that we yeah, I'm I'm I'm red with anger. Not a single not a single Costco in sight. Not a single Apple uh, Applebee's. Where are the jalapeno poppers? I don't understand. I'm so mad. That is perhaps too high a price to pay. These people as human beings, not as homelessness people. You lose hope when perhaps. you are on the street, and it means that you die sooner. That's, uh, that's just a fact. It's quite uh, hard to survive on the street for like for decades. And so if you get a home, you get hope and you start taking care of your life. So you can become part of the society again, because when you are homeless, it feels like it, that you are not part of the society any, anymore, that you are invisible and you, you are like an outcast. I lived 10 years on the street. Really, really upsetting. I felt that I was like on the bottom of society. It's a it's a priority that if you have a place to be, like even a place to stay, or if you have an apartment, it's it's like uh, you are human. Without that, you are not. Okay, so yeah, I wouldn't call this a house full of drug addicts. I would call this a house full of people who have problems with uh, substance abuse. I believe that no one should be on the streets. Like it, it's not good for anyone it's not good for them and it's not good for the society like who benefits from from that and we used to think that uh, those people need to get rid of alcohol in order to be able to live in a flat in that time they went long rehabs and after that when they collapsed they lost their homes and that's not very good <laughs> where the fuck are their cars do these freaks not have transportation yeah, dude, it's really fucked up. I've been I've been kind of scared about that too. I've yet to see a single fucking F three fifty King Rancher uh, collaborative edition. I don't understand what's going on. Where are the truck nuts? I think they might all be gay. They're all biking around, which of course notoriously is only a, a homosexual activity, misconduct. I, I don't really understand. Where are the massive parking lots? What the fuck's going on? Thing as we as we can see it, and that's why we think that our housing first program is the best way to uh, make people uh, believe that they, they can live with a little of support, not losing their homes if they are using drugs or drinking alcohol or have some other problems in life. With some people it, it, it might be really difficult for, for helping them in, in the housing support because they might be extremely violent and uh, in some cases they have to be just signed out and then they continue queuing to the to the next place and now that it's been already in um... this works because finland is a homogenous society people are more empathetic to those who look like themselves unfortunately we suck in america yeah totally dude that's why your boss that looks like you is just fucking you over every goddamn day. It has nothing to do with capitalism. Please do not look at the capital. Please do not look at capital owners, you know? You're getting ass fucked by your white boss every goddamn day and thinking that, oh, it's because it's homogenous. Like, no, it's not. It has nothing to do with, like, a culture being homogenous, okay? Please. If you're a seven-month subscriber, I'm going to be as charitable as I physically possibly can to you. I suspect that you... Do not know what you are saying and do not recognize how fucking insanely racist that shit is.
That is just an excuse racist people use to try to fucking instill racist shit. Work for over 10 years. Uh, I think there's a lot of experience already, <laughs> how it's working or what's not working. And mainly um, it's that we have to talk with the tenants all the time. We have to have meetings and we have to talk with them every day. And when we hear each other, we also have respect for each other and some kind of an appreciation. And that's how we change things that need to be changed. In America, people don't want to give housing to homeless. What would you say to them? She would say that it saved her life and it will save others' lives too. And so that's why Housing First is so great because otherwise uh, she might be dead. But you could say that the worse the situation is, the, the more important it is that you at least start a change reducing the homelessness. It is a human right. It is a basic right. Everybody should have a home. I'm sure that everyone can do housing first. It is actually, you could say that it's human being first. In all democracies all around the world, you see homelessness people in the streets. In Finland, in right Helsinki, winger. you see less because of the housing first. This is a safer and more pleasant city, and it's also a better city for visitors, for tourists, and also a better city for, for example, foreign direct investments, knowing that this is a, a clean, safe, pleasant, well-organized city. Putting housing first, and that can be scaled, that can be copied anywhere in the world. I've been in 10 different countries, over 300 cities doing this. When I arrived in Helsinki, it was hard to even to put words, the feeling because I didn't see a homeless person. In America, we're often selfish. Wow, this guy fucking built a whole, whole fucking organization to eradicate homelessness. And look at how excited he is that he didn't see a single homeless person. I, for one, am a liberal and woke, and therefore I love when I see homeless people. I love when I see people basically rotting on the side of the fucking street, eating garbage. I'm more morally righteous than him. <laughs> people are driven by what's in it for them. I mean, we can't even get affordable health care for everybody. So how are we going to change culture so that we can have affordable housing for everybody. We know how to end homelessness. We've known for a long time. This week, we've been able to see how Housing First implemented at scale can solve homelessness. But Phenomenal the question video. remains, will America- Phenomenal video. I know we always do like the Austrian shit. We always do Vienna. I'm glad that there's uh, finally another fucking city, Helsinki, that we can use. Kids do what we need to do. It literally always is like either he should just move the Finland amount, bro. He wants to fix America. That's the whole point. That's why I live here too. That's why I live where I live. <laughs> Instead of just like running away and leaving, you know what I mean? Do they have freedom though? Uh, I think we demonstrated that they definitely do not. Where are the mega churches? Where are the mega parking lot complexes? And where are the Applebee's? Freedom ain't free, brother. Freedom ain't free to fix the affordable housing crisis and to start providing homeless people with the housing and the support services they need. One phenomenal example of like uh, culture being uh, upstream from your material realities and your material conditions, I would say, is talking to a single fucking European about healthcare. okay? This is seemingly an issue. While this is seemingly an issue held in contention in a place like the United States of America, Ask a fucking single European about the healthcare structure and watch them be like, what do you mean? Watch them be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like I, I explained to my French friends recently, the American healthcare structure alongside Austin. And it was hilarious. Like they were shocked, appalled at the way things work here. Anyway, let's get to another funny America moment. When suspects try to seduce will do anything to try and escape the law, but what happens when they try to flirt with police officers to escape instead? You're gonna put it in my mouth. I'll put it in your mouth. Oh, 
This is interesting. From tempting the cops during an arrest. You see, spread. How much spread do you want me to spread, good. Daddy? To trying to take a police officer home. Here is the ultimate compilation of suspects who think they can seduce the police to get out of jail. Let's start with the case of Grace Spoonamore. Stop! Don't get out! I'm asking you questions. You answer. Okay, and I wait. Right off the bat, I feel like I'm gonna hate this because it's gonna be this is gonna fucking cause a shitstorm in the chat. People are gonna be like. Right off the bat, I feel like the the the slant is not going to be like desperate people resorting to desperate means, but instead like making fun of desperate people resorting to desperate mean means. And then there is going to be a classic. This is technically sexual assault conversation. I don't know if we should watch this honestly. A lot of hossos flying around. I can see it already. People getting mad at other chatters for tossing hossos around. I mean, we can we can see we can see if as a community we have evolved. I fear we have not. Pizza, why did you get on me like that? 26 at court, it's a female. All right, step out. A white step female. Out. Put your hands behind your back. It doesn't take a genius to realize Grace has been drinking, and the cop now has a fairly menial DUI investigation ahead of him. At least, that's what he expected before Grace decided to make it a stop to remember. Can you stop pulling me like that? Nope. Do you have anything in your pockets? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You want to check me? <clears throat> Search me real quick. It may feel intervised. All right, stop. <laughs> Sitting there. No, you don't want to stop. God damn, ladies as zooted as a fucking Florida congressperson. Holy moly. Are you on something right now? No, I just came for dinner with my trick. How much you have to drink there? Two doubles. Two doubles of what? Patron. So you are drunk. Ooh. And I'm going to keep it above you. Where's the owner of that vehicle? I don't know. Who's Don to Smith? I just bought it. It wasn't simple suspicious driving that got Grace pulled over. She'd actually crashed into another vehicle and then fled the scene. And not only was she driving drunk, but she wasn't even old enough to drink, as she was only 20 years old. That's probably why she was so eager to get the cop to search her and talk to him like this. What is your name? Stay in the right. car. Stay in the car. Okay, I understand. Get in the car. I, okay. Get your leg in the car. Listen, handsome man. Get your leg in the car. You feel some type of way? She, she thought she, her face card would not decline. Look at her. She's like, look, look at me. I'm hot. <laughs> get your foot in the car. Okay. I'm going to get your driver's license out of your purse, okay? You can do that. All right, put your foot in the car. Do I have to? Yes, put your foot in the car. Why you gotta be so demanding? It's not taken long for the cop to get fed up with her antics, so he brings another officer onto the scene and tries to get to the bottom of things. She just rear-ended that car 30371. This was the flock camera hit. I thought he was taken off from me. 15 frank, but she said she just bought the car. I'm telling you that I am, but I'm not. None of that even makes sense. Clear, confirming she's under 21. Three doubles. Doubles. Remember when the first cop asked the same question? Grace said she'd had two doubles, and now it's been upgraded to three? Clearly, she's not even sure of how much she had to drink, so being sober is pretty out of the question for her. But she still wants to make sure the cops have extra information and starts to act even weirder. What's that? Oh, she's just gonna fight with us. Yeah, I'm not she's she's six doubles. She's yeah. very small. It's not like she's gonna me. So... Do you have insurance for that vehicle? Yes. What do you think I am? Some broke ass hoe. I think you're drinking and driving right now. Um, definitely. Because who can stand a regular without drinking? Yo! Yo, she's not even wrong for that. She said, yeah, driving is boring as fuck. Hello? Officer, have you tried driving sober? That shit's lame as hell. It makes me pay attention to the road and, it, and it, I drink for my anxiety. Now, you, you can't sell a dick without selling it before it comes. What do you mean? You understand that? No. No? No. You gotta make Ancient proverb. Before it comes. Inappropriate comments are something cops can shrug off and deal with easily. But after just five minutes in the back of the patrol car, Grace starts to have what can only be described as a temper tantrum that does nothing other than add a slew of potential charges to her already long list. What's your current address right now? Where are you staying? Don't worry about all that. What's your current? Well, I need your current address. No, I'm not giving it to you. You need to give me your current address right now. And what do you want to do if I don't? I'm going to charge you with obstructing. 
Constructing what? Constructing official business. <laughs> what is okay, your address? Okay, that's cool. Address? I don't care. What is your current address? I don't care. So here's the thing, Grace. I don't care. You will, though, because if we can't figure out who you are or where you stay at, you, you sit in jail until they fingerprint you and find I out. I'm good. Do it. I don't want to do that. Do it. What's your current address? Are you staying here? Where y'all are investigators? Who protecting that? And let me know about my I don't care. I'm sorry. Did she just spit on you? Yeah. All right, she's going down. We're not going to test her. Grace has escalated this from drunk driving and now to assault of a police officer. And she doesn't plan on stopping there. All right, what do you, no, what do I you don't want? Believe no, Chatter, we will not be watching the new ContraPoints video that is three and a half hours long instead of this video. <clears throat> you. What do you want? I don't For what? I don't believe you at all. For what? Because I've been abducted and cut up and you wasn't needed when I needed you when I was was that in Georgia? No, it was in Cleveland. Well, we're not in Cleveland right now. I don't now. give a fuck. <laughs> what the? Fuck? We're in you let me out. Right. You don't know what the fuck you're dealing with. Okay. You don't. Okay. You no, not okay. Okay. No, you're in the car you don't right now. trust me. Okay. Grace, stay in. Stay no, in. You don't trust me. Stay in the car. Come on. You don't trust me. Stay in the car. You don't trust me. Go ahead, pull Grace, it. Get in the car. You don't trust me. You don't trust me. I don't trust you. You just spit on me. Grace isn't making any sense at all now, so the officer drove her back to the station where she appeared to have calmed down somewhat, but not in a cool way at all. What's your name? Logan? You oh. look like a Logan. That she's not pissing. Go ahead. You gonna let me keep pissing? No. Oh, Come on. Shit. I don't want to piss through you. Come on. Okay. Shit. Bye. Uh, okay, just stay in that blue box. Here. Just stay in that blue box. Whatever. Yo, that's Can respect, bro. No, that's like, wow, Hassan, when Kaya does it, it's all right. When she does it, you have something to say. That's like real piss maxing right there. That's crazy. I've never seen it in action other than Kaya. She's literally asserting her authority. This entire precinct belongs to her now. I don't think you guys understand what just happened. That's dominance. Um, leave it on. Grace, just stop. She's now the police I chief. Be you wanna try me? Stay oh, in the blue box. No, hold on. Stay in the blue box. You, you wanna taste me? No. Do it. Stay in the I blue like box. It. I like it kinky. Stay in the blue box, Grace. Don't. Stay in the blue box. Step back. You can touch Step me. Step back. You touch me. We've done it. We found a video where I unironically don't think the cops are even remotely in the wrong. That's crazy. I have never watched seven minutes of body camera footage without literally being, without pausing to be like, well, that's fucked up. He shouldn't have done that. I cannot believe it. This is legitimately, I think, a fucking world first on the Hostile Hyper Broadcast where I just watched seven minutes of uninterrupted body camera footage where there is not a single moment where I was like, wow, this guy really fucking escalated the situation. Like maybe the... Uh, assault charge for spitting you know what i mean i guess like the assault charge for spitting would be like an escalation because like come on it is technically assault but like yeah come on stay in the blue box no get the fuck from me just stay there get the me into pieces you didn't catch them there is clearly some history between grace and the police department based on a seemingly traumatic past experience but that's no reason to treat these specific officers in an angry and frankly disrespectful saying? manner nevertheless the damage has already been done and after this outburst in the police station she was taken to jail and charged with ovi speeding obstruction of official business and assaulting a police officer but there's a lot more at stake for this next girl who was willing to go a lot further to seduce and escape the cops in the early hours of the 30th of october October, this cop observed a vehicle driving suspiciously in Florida. At a red light, it was almost completely over the stop line and its plates were expired. However, when he went to pull the driver over, things took a turn he wasn't expecting whatsoever. Your fake cut had scared me when I walked up. Oh. Forgot tomorrow's Halloween. I'm like, oh boy. I know, right? The reason I got stopped, few things. When you're sitting at the light back here to make the left, yeah. you're all the way out in the intersection. Oh, okay. Like you were past the crossing.
crosswalk that you were you were on Toledo Blade for making the left. Is the car registered to you? Yes, sir. Okay, the tags on the car expired back in March, um, and your license is suspended. The cop should already be suspicious of the girl he identified as Naomi Furrer, given her strange driving. But the more he talked to her, the more it seems that she definitely shouldn't have been driving. She told the cop she'd just come from a Halloween party and had a wristband that was given out by a bar in the local area. The cop is now certain she's over the limit, so he asks her to step out so she can perform some tests. But things immediately start to seem different to his usual stops. Your eyes are bloodshot and glossy. Your speech is slightly scared. I'm just very tired, that's all. There's alcohol coming up, okay? Check your eyes. She's keeping composure. Like She's keeping composure. She's keeping composure. <laughs> Keep your head straight. Just look back and forth. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. You're going to take nine heel to toe steps. The cop is a liar and a son of a bitch. She's keeping composure. She's holding frame. One, two, like that. Three. Nobody could perform those physical fa uh, feats. Honestly, who amongst us? I mean, come on. 15. Do you think if I give you a number to start on, you can count backwards to another? Yes, sir. Okay. I want you to start on the number 46. Oh, come on! And count backwards to the number 29. 39, 38, 37, 36, 6. Do you remember what number I told you to start top on? You said start at 38 and then uh, start at 49. And... Come on now! It's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. Unfortunately for Naomi, the cop wasn't convinced and determined that she was way over the legal limit. But right after he put her in cuffs, she decides she has a plan to get out of this mess. Do me a favor. Put your hands on your back. Put your palms together like you're praying. You're under arrest for DUI. Okay. DUI. But I'm not drunk. Okay. Did everything okay. that you asked okay. me to, right? Okay. Sir, I can't have a DUI, please. Sir, I'm from Switzerland. I can't have a DUI, please. I don't want to get kicked out of Wait until I'll find another white female to have a I understand. I won't do that until. I just fucked up. I just fucked up. Free her. Free her. Free her. I'm saying. Free her. She should get diplomatic immunity. This is fucked up. They are not accepting her face card. <clears throat> And honestly, I'm shocked. Oh, please, sir. I literally stopped. You're not, even, you're not, even, you're not even supposed to be driving in the first place. You have five different suspensions on your license. You have an insurance suspension and three. Five different suspensions. Oh, for traffic tickets. Okay, never mind. Bro, God, when they said five different suspensions on your license, I thought like she was a fucking habitual criminal <laughs> of driving. Like, do not put her behind a vehicle. You know what I mean? Fail to pay traffic tickets. Things are obviously not looking good for Naomi. So when begging doesn't get her her way, she switches her strategy. You're getting tricked by this exotic woman? Yes, blonde women are exotic to me. I am Turkish. ...to a more seductive method. Please, it's, sir. It's out of my hands tonight. But you're the one arresting me. Yes, I am the one arresting you, but the decision to make the arrest is already out of my hands tonight. So let's walk back into the Why? Because well, everything we've done tonight is on video. It. Everything. I have a camera here. But I have you can still make your decision about who, why you're going to arrest me for what. Do you have a pair of a shorts or something in here that we can... Bro, I'm losing my fucking mind because she's hitting like every every different accent. Like, she's like, she said, I can't get arrested. And then she like hits the southern twang for some reason. Like, what's going on? I can't get arrested, officer. <laughs> I can't. Put on oh, to cover please. you up a little bit. Jersey. I'll put that on her. I'll take everything off. Please don't charge me. But I don't want to go to jail. Oh, yeah. Please, sir. Oh, I don't want you to take everything off. I and promise I'll of... have somebody pick me up and drive me home. I promise. I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit of decency and cover you up a little bit. You don't, don't, don't, don't want to go into jail like that. Thankfully, the cops ignore her offer and instead opt to cover her up with a hoodie before they take her back to jail. Please, can you not make an exception? Please, I, I promise we're, I'll be We are past home. that. I need you to sit in the car. What, what I have to do. Wait, this is pretty crazy. It's like two for two. Cops being respectful and shit. Oh my god. White women is like genuinely a fucking debuff, dude. Like it actually just destroys like 90% of of cop stats. Like it's not fentanyl that is kryptonite. It's white women. Dude, when when dude, dude, when it's a white woman doing some shit, especially if they're like somewhat attractive, cops turn into like Japanese police officers. You know what I mean? They start giving you directions. They're like, hey, let me, please, let me do your taxes for you, actually, as a matter of fact. Like, did you forget that you're fucking cornbread Iowan? What's happening? Like, this is insane. Like, all of a sudden, there is a, there is a beautiful world out there where American police can be, like, de-escalatory, helpful, uh, 
you know, nice overall, dare I say, circumstances present. That's insane. What's happening? Respectful. These are not words that I ever thought I would talk about when I'm talking, when I'm watching a fucking body camera video of a cop arresting someone. Nothing. The only thing that you could do to not go to jail tonight is not drive drunk. So. But I wasn't driving drunk at all. Okay. Like there's no taser. No gun was pulled out. What's happening? Why is there no taser pulled out? Not to say that that would be the proper thing, but I'm just like shocked. I have never had a conversation with a cop ever in my life, with the exception of the two detectives that uh, came to my house the other day when we were talking about where the cop doesn't have his hand on a service weapon. Like it don't matter. I'm white. I'm a white guy. I've literally never had a conversation with a police officer that did not already have their service weapon at least unholstered with their hand on their service weapon. What the fuck is going on? Not white, but okay. I just, I don't get it. Please have a seat. And there's nothing I can do, sir? No, ma'am. Even if uh, somebody picks me up? Mm -mm. We're, we're past that. A search of Naomi's vehicle recovered two containers of whiskey and of beer. But back at the station, she refused to give a breath sample. Her car was seized, but as of this video's upload, the case is still ongoing and she has not been charged. Naomi's attempt at flirting didn't work at all with these cops. But the same can't be said about Brooke Teague's encounter, which actually worked out well. So well, it's rumored that her and the cop are still together to this day. Brooke was pulled over after an officer witnessed what? her swerving around the road slightly a telltale sign that the driver was either intoxicated or in need of help. So he swiftly pulled her over only to be greeted in a surprising way. Hey, I'm Officer Smith. That was not, that was, no, that was, what? Bro, she was not swerving, dog. That's like eight lane changes. What the fuck? She was making a fucking K turn on the middle of a highway, brother. That's some diabolical shit right there. What the fuck? Smith, go play nice hey. to meet you, Mr. Smith. Um, I've never heard that before in Travis Stop. I appreciate that. Um, hey, so I'm just stopping you for improper lane use. Sorry, I was stuff. on the phone. You're on the phone? I'll be honest. Okay. Who are you I on the phone with? My baby daddy. I'll show it to you too. Okay. Yeah. Zachary? Yeah. How much you have to Damn, drink? he got sad. He's like, who are you on the phone with? Oh, damn. This is like, this is actually a excellent case of misdirection. Immediately give him a much more minor crime. So he focuses on that and not the potential major crime. Because honestly, it's like I do this thing as well um, where like if there's a cop behind me and I don't notice them and and let's say maybe I'm my my interest is elsewhere. Let's say while I'm driving. As soon as I see a cop, I pick my nose because ain't nobody ain't nobody's going to tell me that I was on my phone when I'm very clearly picking my nose. And that's not illegal. Picking your nose ain't illegal, dog. Immediately, I will go like this. I exaggerated too. I'm like, oh yeah, look at me picking my nose. Drinks not. Only one drink. Just one drink. Yep. Yes, Final sir. answer. Miller. A Miller Lite. Yes. <laughs> I won't lie to you, a Miller Lite. That's, that's all you've had. Yes, sir. You can ask Zachary. I don't really want to talk I to Zachary. I know you don't, but I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, he said, I don't want to talk to Zachary. He's sad, brother. He's sad. Okay. In just this first minute of conversation, two things become clear immediately. Brooke has definitely had more than one beer to drink, and how well she and the officer seem to be getting along already. Both points that will get increasingly more obvious as the footage continues. Yeah, I can smell it from across the car. One Miller lot. There's no, I wanted to say like, a Miller did that to you? Big Miller, 128 ounce Miller. Freaking bucket of Miller. All right, where are we at on it? Awesome. Brooke? Yes. Teague, am I saying that right, Teague? Yes, like baseball league. Teague like baseball league. That's yep. <laughs> it helps people spell it because they never spell it correctly. <laughs> Brooke then gets taken out for some sobriety tests, which take much longer than anticipated. You're making me giggle. I'm sorry. Oh my god. Oh my god. She's got so much swag. Dude, I swear to god, save me, white woman. White women have superpowers, bro. What the fuck is this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I snore. I'm from sorry. Huntsville. We're, we're supposed to be Oh my god. Bro, there ain't no fucking way, dude. Riz isn't illegal. This kind of Riz should be. <laughs> I'm from Huntsville. Isn't yeah. gonna make me snore. Alright, stop laughing because you're making me laugh. I'm not. Right? Seriously. <laughs> I'm giggling. I'm All sorry. Right, this is a serious deal. Alright. Yeah. Okay. You're smiling. I can't <laughs> help it. Alright, so, stop. Okay. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, despite all the jokes, Brooke failed all the sobriety tests and was oh, put God. under arrest. How much you've actually had a drink? I've had two Millers. Two Millers now? 
That's it? Yes, sir. You can call Mitchell, the manager. Okay. Well, hey, go ahead and put your hands on your back for me, okay? After a search of her car, which turned up nothing but a loose car seat, she was driven back to the police station where the sparks continued to fly. I'm with you. Let's go over here. Oh my God, is there a dog? There is a dog. Where? He's over there. Over here. What's his name is Kolyak. Kolyak? That's my dog. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God. You missed it? Wait, did he fix her hair? She was driven back to the police station where the sparks continued to fly. I'm with you. Bro, this makes me even more angry about like regular police altercations now because it's like, oh, they do have the capacity to behave like humans and go even above and beyond. You know what I mean? We need a drug. We need a drug that makes every cop think that the person that they're dealing with is like this woman. Okay? Just drug all the cops so they can like actually treat people like human beings. Here. Oh my God, is there a dog? There is a dog. Where? He's over there. What's his name is Kolyak. Cleo? That's my dog. Is that your dog? What's his name? His name's Coach. Coach? Bro, he's fucking pulling out his own dog and shit. Yo, it's crazy. It's so Jover. It's like, oh my God. He's literally trying to riz her up. I've been like, yeah, I got a dog. And I got that dog in me, if you know what I'm saying. Hey, hey, how you doing? He's on a date, yeah. Did I go to high school? I don't think so. Where'd you go to high school? Yeah, Where'd you go? Indiana. Really? Yeah. Note that despite the obvious chemistry, both Brooke and the officer have remained professional and are continuing to move on with the investigation. The officer had Brooke take a blood alcohol test where she blew 0.14%, a number Ooh. that pales in comparison to that of the next girl, who was not only extremely intoxicated, but also acted very inappropriately with the cops. I'm good, bro. Check me. I don't care. I like men. Come on. Just search me. A 19 year old girl was seen weaving between lanes and throwing unknown items out of the window. Officers immediately thought this was suspicious and pulled her over for a chat. Hey, how's it going? Hi. The driver states that she's a stripper at a bar called Dancers, and that she was texting her boyfriend who was home with her kids. However, the officers noticed something off about the driver. Her speech was slightly slurred and her eyes were glazed over. There's a good chance this girl's been drinking. What, what time did you get off with Dancers? 11. Damn, bro, the texting my baby daddy is the white girl strat, dude. It seems like every white girl's texting the baby daddies all the time. That is the white girl... That, that is the winning strategy, it seems. Well, not super 11. winning, but kind of winning. You got off at 11? It's 10, 23 right now. What? Did you have anything to drink? What? No, I'm 19. You're 19? I cannot drink. I at the strip club, nothing. Nothing? No. Are you sure? Don't get on my eyelashes, bro. The light will hurt your eyelashes? No, but they falling off. From the lights. Despite the girl's claims, the officers are fairly sure she's had at least something to drink last night, especially when she seems to forget the time completely. So they ask her to step out of the vehicle and perform a few sobriety tests. Well, hold on. This is. <laughs> we're gonna start. I'm cold. We're gonna start right here. All right. Do you wear any? Do you wear any glasses or contacts? I do. You do? Are you wearing contacts right now? No. No. I'm okay. Cold. You're gonna, I just I mean, walk in the straight line and I'll be good. Well, that's that's not even. I haven't even told you the exercise that I'm doing yet. So you gotta. I'm cold. Okay. <laughs> I mean, just give me ten minutes of your time. Okay. Okay. Okay. Come on, the straight line. What do you want to do? Cough from. Hold on. I didn't tell you that's what we're gonna do. Yet. I know, but I know where the police is. Despite her enthusiasm to begin the tests. She doesn't exactly pass them with flying colors. And after losing her balance on the final test, she's placed under arrest by the officers. But that's not where the story ends for her. On the way back to the patrol vehicle, she mentions that there are in fact weapons in her car and her behavior starts to change drastically. Y'all can check me. I don't that's care right. if y'all are male, bro. We got, we, got, we got plenty of uh, female officers around. To do I'm that, so. good, bro. Check me. I don't care. I'm giving authorization to you. Why not? I gave you authorization too. Oh, I'm not gonna do that. So. Well, I like men. Come on, just search me. What's that? While the cops maintained that they couldn't search her, they did take the time to search her vehicle. 
Inside, they found multiple guns, a large stack of cash, though it was decided this was likely just tips from the bar. However, she was still charged with DUI and sentenced to nine months probation, despite also being underage. It was fairly difficult for the cops to judge if this girl was drunk or not. However, this next girl didn't show the same amount of class, instead resorting to manipulate and trick the cop into letting her go. Hello, how you doing? I'm Officer Hot in New Mexico State Police. Using for the stop, you're going 55 back there on, M on uh, MLK. Five? Yeah, 55. I was right behind you the whole time and you just Honestly, booked it. I've had a, I had a bad night. The girls that I thought that were my friends are not my friends. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Where are you coming from? <sighs> no. Like right off the jump, this fucking, uh, this level of like the, the window not even being fully open. Like that's crazy. That's like, I feel like if I did that, a cop would treat that as like a hostile thing to do. Cops fucking hate that. Some of you have probably never interacted with cops, I feel like, if you don't know that. That's like a that's like a major fucking no-no for cops. Could you, could you shake your window down, please? Could you roll your window down, please? Roll your window down, please. It's like, damn, dog, chill. Fucking it's cold out, you know? Resisting arrest. Go. Knockout. This girl doesn't seem to be having the best night, but that still doesn't explain why she was driving 25 miles an hour over the speed limit on a residential road. She also mentions that she came from a place called Knockouts, a gentleman's club that could explain the sparkly outfit and why she was driving so erratically. Okay, you have your license? One time my window got stuck and the cops shot me 63 times. What? As a six foot four ambiguously racial man, these cops would light you up before you even pulled over. Okay, chill. I feel like I can't take that. I, I have a lot of white privilege when dealing with cops especially. Like, you gonna tell me you're my friend? This is bullshit. Yeah. Here's my registration. Do you have a jacket or something that you could put on? What? Do you have a jacket or anything? A jacket? Yeah, like in the car. No. You failed a TSA whiteness test? Yeah, because the TSA doesn't operate on what I look like, and it operates on what my name is and what my background is. So that's why it's a little different. But a cop doesn't fucking know my name is Hassan, or I don't know. Don't, they don't have a fucking file on me. You know what I mean? I'm definitely a white man until maybe my ID comes out, in which case I am no longer a white man and the same, or at least like a, a lower status white is what I am, if that makes sense. Hi. Because I'm going to ask you to step out that way we can talk out here. I don't have anything. The girl seems to be upset about a disagreement with her friends back at the bar, but this officer isn't buying it. There's many examples of suspects pretending to be sad or distressed during a traffic stop to try and get sympathy from the cops and walk away with a lighter sentence. This can work in some circumstances, but it doesn't excuse driving at almost twice the speed limit. But this doesn't stop the girl from trying after she steps out of the car. Okay. Here's my registration, and I can give you my progressive, um, it just sucks, like, yeah. a bitch here, me... tells me that she's my friend and she's not. Okay. All right, let's go back over here. I'm moving next weekend, and my friend said that she's my friend but she's not yeah could you stand up street yeah all right so how much alcohol you consume no i haven't nothing i smoke weed i have my my medical um card if you want to see it mm -hmm. i have that but i mean i've been smoking because i'm mad yeah you're mad you know what i mean like okay the Here, are... let, let, just just try to calm down a little bit so you're gonna you say that you haven't consumed no alcohol just be honest with me how much alcohol what kind of knockouts Honestly. wait um, did they say why they blurred her face? I missed that part. <clears throat> also, she failed the misdirection thing. She failed the misdirection by saying, oh, no, I don't drink. I smoke weed. Because it's like, that's still a DWI. You know what I mean? Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? You can't fucking smoke weed and drive. Honestly, the way I feel is because the girl, she went behind my back and shit, you know what I mean? No matter how hard the cop tries to keep the girl on topic, she keeps breaking down and talking about her friendship issues. After some more pressing by the officer, she admits to smoking marijuana and alcohol back at the club. But she keeps trying to excuse it by saying she's having a rough night, and that's her way of dealing with it. Unfortunately for her, though, the officer needs her to focus, which she seems to be having a tough time doing throughout the sobriety tests. All right, just wait right here. I'm going to move my unit back just, just a little bit, and uh, I got two more tests. Lol, you definitely can smoke weed and drive with a high weed tolerance. A joint is basically a cup of coffee. Puritanical drug laws don't work, my man. Smoke crack. Medical crack. 
is the last thing he said before that. Okay, dude, crack baby. Okay, stoners, here's a really cool thing you can do. Just don't say anything, okay? Because you sound no different than a fucking alcoholic when you say that. It's crazy. Hell nah, A cab. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but, you know, the only problem with driving under the influence isn't necessarily just cops arresting you. It's, you know, killing children while you're driving. <laughs> That's like a. <clears throat> yes, administer. You feel okay walking in those shoes? I mean, I'm just fucking upset. That's it. You're just upset? I'm just fucking upset. No, like. So, Miss yeah, Miss Ramos, really, my, my main concern is just that you're safe to drive, okay? Obvi it. Obviously, you were no, I truly get it. traveling at a high rate of speed up. I have three okay. kids. Okay. My baby daddy just died. I'm sorry to my hear that. My best friend just said that. It's just a lot. One, two, three, one, two. Unfortunately for the girl, though, complaining to the officer didn't seem to sober her up at all, and she failed all three of her sobriety tests. So all that was left was for her to be arrested, a fitting end for what <clears throat> appeared to be a pretty rough night for her. All right, so at this point, you're going to be placed under arrest for DWI, driving while influencing some intoxicating liquor and or drugs. Just face me real quick. What's in your mouth? Nothing. Open it. Lift up your tongue. All right. So on my watch, 0213, okay? But Kelly Barton made it a little easier for the cops. Not only was she seen crashing into uh -oh. a lamppost while transporting a special needs patient, but when police arrived, she was looking a little worse for wear. Kelly? Uh-oh. How are you doing? Good. Kelly admits that she had too much to drink that evening, but doesn't admit to driving, despite it being her job. Unfortunately for her, though, security camera footage from the gas station proves that she was, in fact, behind the wheel and is now facing charges of both DUI and neglect due to the responsibility she carried while driving with... Okay, I highly doubt that this person seduced the cops, okay? I'm assuming that this is just a woman getting arrested. No disrespect to anybody, but I don't think this is a trying to seduce the cops... Uh, trying to seduce the cops moment with the patient. But as an ambulance pulls up to perform some tests on her, Kelly reveals that she has another trick up her sleeve and begins repeatedly flirting with all of the officers at the- Okay, never mind. Okay, I was wrong. I was corrected in a matter of seconds. I was so wrong. I was so fucking wrong. Look at your hands. Do you want the life squad to check you, ma'am? Let them do what they gotta do. Come on, boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, let her go. Let her go. She's a queen. You have to. She's cool as hell. You have to let her go. She's cool as hell, dude. Hey, hey. I want the little young boys. Ask me how I'm feeling. Let the little young boys oh. tell me. Oh, it's weird. Let me tell you something. Uh -huh. What weird. I would do to you with your blue eyes. So let me check your blood sugar. Okay. Look at him. I would do him in a way that he won't eat me. Hey, look. He can look tough all he wants. <laughs> After what multiple tests, it's clear to the officers that Kelly was way over the legal limit and is arrested for driving while intoxicated. And after struggling to get her into the police vehicle, she's sent on her way to the police station. But if you think Kelly was bold for talking to cops like that, 18-year-old Skylar Flutz is on a completely different level, going so far as to post this video to thousands of people bragging about how she got away with the DUI. Bro, that's crazy. That's crazy. What the fuck? I mean, she's 18. I guess she's literally a baby. She's basically a fetus. That's insane though, still insane. I got out of a DUI and got let off with a warning. Skylar was pulled over after an officer saw her weaving around the road in a way that suggested she Yo, might have- Oh, she's going fast too, what the fuck? been completely sober but according to her video she claims that using her flirtatious and quick wit she managed to trick the officer and get away with a warning you will never get away from the top of the hour ad break by flirtation and quick wit by the way i am 100 percent worse than the cops on this front you will see a three minute ad break at the top of the hour unless you subscribe that's it that's the only way you can get away with it for five dollars or for free you too can subscribe at the top of the hour and avoid seeing the ad breaks that's right here is the three minute ad break now. I blew a 3.8 and he let me off with a f***ing... A 3.8? What? That would mean you have, you have more blood than you normally would. Three times, four times more almost, and it's all alcohol. <laughs> what the fuck? I think she meant a 0.38, but 
that would also be almost dead. So I don't think that that's correct either. So it's probably a point zero three eight, in which case it's under the legal limit. I think, right? Isn't it point? Yeah. <laughs> zero point zero three eight would be under the legal limit, which is why it doesn't make sense. Not if she's 18. No, no, no. I'm saying like in general, yes, anything above a zero is, is you're going to, you're going to get your license suspended if you're under the age of 21. <sighs> But she doesn't strike me as someone who's blowing a fucking 0 0.03. That's like 0 0.03 would be literally like fucking mouthwash or some shit. Morning. And gave me his number and said we should meet for coffee or lunch. He was hot. So I'm getting lunch with him tomorrow. If her story is true, then the officer would be in serious trouble. But luckily, the officer in question recorded the entire interaction on his body cam. And the video tells a completely different story. Oh. My name's Deputy Stallman, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. I pulled you over because you were weaving a little bit back there. Where are you coming from? Um, I was coming from Okay. So I was like crying and like, I'm really okay. sorry. Okay. Were you, were you on your phone and stuff too? I was trying to get a hold of him because my heart. Oh my God. It's an alt. It's like straight up an alt, dude. Oh my God. Oh my God. Dude, white women are aware of their power. It seems. It seems like they are aware of their power. That's crazy. Okay. Well, I'm just concerned that you were weaving because of alcohol, but if you're on your phone, have you been drinking or anything tonight? Oh my god, the guy's like letting her go? What the fuck? Oh my god, he's down. No, okay. The deputy then does give Skylar a card with the sheriff department's information on it, but it didn't include his personal number and it didn't come with an invitation to dinner. Sounds like you're having a rough night, so I'm not going to add to that by writing you a ticket or anything, okay? So, I'm just going to give you a warning, it's not a big deal. I just want to make sure you're okay. You were weaving a little bit and I just want to make sure you're okay to operate the motor vehicle and I believe you are. Oh my god, she was just fucking lying. Is she... Wait. Um, so my information's right here on the front. The reason I stopped you here is on the back. Wherever you're headed, uh, get there safely. And I'm sorry you're having a bad night. Yeah, I'm just okay. Back. No, you're you're fine. Yeah, well, no, you don't need to apologize. I mean, you were weaving a little bit with no traffic out. I just want to make sure you're okay. That's all. Skyler's video doesn't just contain disgusting footage of her laughing and bragging about exploiting this officer's kindness, but also states that she blew a 3.8 on the breathalyzer, ignoring that she wasn't even tested in the first place. The legal limit. Dog. 3.8 is not physically possible. It means you have four times the amount of blood somehow. You have four times the amount of alcohol that you have blood. Is only around 0.8 and already makes driving dangerous. But a reading of 3.8 would imply Skylar was not only blackout drunk, but close to death, as at a level of 4.0, respiratory failure is likely. But this doesn't mean Skylar was lying about being drunk underage. Videos were later discovered of her chugging tequila from the bottle and acting drunk at a party just hours before she was caught driving. After she was confronted with this, Skylar confessed and admitted to everything. I ended up getting a little too intoxicated. Um, I was taking shots all night. And Yo, this made it to the news? That's crazy. Cops love this shit. They call it job security. Quit sucking the police dick, my dude. What? Sucking the police dick? What are you saying? Chatter, are you okay? And I decided to make the dumb decision to get... Steven, keep doing the crack you were doing earlier. It was making you funnier. Now, now you're unnecessarily contentious. ...into my car and drive. She also admitted that the officer never asked her out. That was just a lie for social media attention. Regardless of her confession, though, no further action was taken against her or the officer who failed to test her. But the same can't be said for <laughs> Officer Deanna. She also lied and said he was hot. <laughs> Yo! Yeah, attention. Regardless of her confession, though, no further action was taken against her or the officer who... <laughs> Damn, dog. <laughs> who failed to test her. But the same can't... She did say he was hot and we're going on a date tomorrow. <laughs> he said for Officer D'Angelo Reyes, who switched... The okay, this video is actually much better than I thought it was going to be. Good job, Hassan Izabai. You did it. I thought this was going to be a fucking high intensity situation that would be annoying and everyone would get mad and stuff, but so far it's been decent. The roles when he instead tried to seduce a suspect and took advantage of her criminal record in the darkest of ways. You're sexy. You got like a, you got a room? On April 17th, 2022, D'Angelo was on duty searching for a murder suspect, but instead he ran into this girl on the street and his body cam captured the following conversation. What's your name? My name? Hmm? 
I'm, I'm Eric. Nice to meet you. It's obvious D'Angelo knew exactly where he was planning on taking this interaction as he gave a fake name when introducing himself to the girl. I mean, I heard some noise that, that direction, but I... Bro, this video took... Dude, I've never been so cooked. I'm defeating the pre-watched allegations so hard. Like, first I was like, that woman's not going to flirt with the cops. Immediately starts fucking flirting. Then I was like, oh yeah, this video is pretty good. It's like not that bad, actually. Immediately, it's like, here's a police officer trying to rape a, a person that's not even a suspect. Okay. Hey, oh, do you live around here? Uh, yeah, I stay at the motel. Oh, which one? The studio. Oh, okay. You're sexy. Is that unprofessional of me? I don't know. I'm sorry, but like, I mean, I'm just like, damn. You just chilling tonight? Okay. If I'm wandering around, where should I wander? Probably somewhere around the star. Okay. You got like a, you got a room? It's me and my dog, Felony. Oh, really? Okay. This is where D'Angelo turns off the body cam and allegedly gets her phone number. Later, he ran her name through the system and discovered that she had an extensive criminal record. He then called her, menacingly claiming that it wouldn't take much to put someone with her record back in prison. From there, he visited her in the motel and proceeded to have non-consensual sex with her. He initially denied meeting her at all, but eventually admitted to having sex with her, but That's claimed crazy. he thought it was consensual. In June of the same year, he was charged. Bro, understand something? Oklahoma cops getting fucking arrested for this is like, I guess that's the relatively uncommon part is like getting arrested for this. If you know anything about Tulsa PD or Oklahoma police departments in general, just search Oklahoma PD sexual misconduct and you will find very quickly that there are not tens, not dozens, but literally hundreds of cops that have uh, been fired from the force after... It's really fucking bad. OKC and also, yeah, the Holtzclaw case is like, the Daniel Holtzclaw case is a very interesting one due to the fact that uh, I still low-key suspect that like he was a bad dude, but he was set up as a fall guy. Like, I, I think he was a bad guy for sure, but he I think he was definitely set up as a fall guy and like so many of the other crimes were pinned on him. And what I mean by that is, Immediately after he was arrested and, and uh, you know, put in prison, I think they fucking put a shit ton, pinned a shit ton of rapes attributed to him falsely. Wait, what? Wait, what? Didn't he rape like a dozen people? No, I don't think, I think he, he did engage in sexual misconduct. Because I remember, if I recall correctly, there was a couple that were like direct personal testimony. But there was a lot more that was like, definitely not him. Hold up. And, and. But that's not the reason why I'm saying that. This is the reason why I'm saying that. Where is it? There was like 200 of them or something. Yup. It's pretty fucking nuts. Like it, hundreds, chat. Hundreds of officers lose licenses over sexual misconduct in Oklahoma City. More than 40 Oklahoma officers banned for sex crime convictions in the last five years record show. Does this even feature Holtzclaw in it? He does, it doesn't even have it. It's the most famous version. I mean, it's the most famous story. Yeah, it's really fucking insane. This guy's also a Tulsa guy, so for the attack. But this next traffic stop came as a surprise to the female driver who had a plan to get out of her reckless driving charge. Well, hi. In the early hours of July 1st, 2023, a Montville police officer noticed a car being driven erratically and initiated a traffic stop to figure out what was going on. Hi, the reason I'm stopping you, why? Well, the article says thousands of officers Part of the actual reason that cops hate our quitting cops that cops hate are quitting on mass after new regulations because of the threat of violence is what enables them to be able to use coercion to their own ends like this. Anyway, let's continue. Actually, I didn't stop you. Why did you stop? Let me ask you that. Okay. The fuck? Well, the reason you caught my attention when I pulled up behind you is because when you came out of there, you swerved completely all over the road. Yeah. How much have you had to drink Hi. tonight? Nothing at all. What's up, YouTube? Today we're arresting someone for drunk driving. No. The driver, who was later identified as Karina, denied that she'd been drinking. But the cop doesn't buy this and decides to remove her from the car to perform field sobriety tests. And sure enough, just a few minutes into go. the tests, Let the go. cop confirmed that his suspect was indeed Let drunk. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. I'd be shocked, too. I'd be shocked. Where are we going? Like my shoes on. Okay. We'll do that when I say. Let her go. Karina is arrested and put in the back of a patrol car, where she quickly admits that she did have a few drinks. And once they arrive at the station, she starts to make things a bit awkward for the officers, but in a more charming manner. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. 
Do breathalyzers not exist in the U.S.? Um, they do. In a lot of states, you can actually uh, refuse to use a breathalyzer. The field sobriety test, for the most part, is and and the field breathalyzer test, for the most part, is only uh, enough for them to uh, for them to basically apprehend you and take you to the precinct or do a blood test. No problem. No problem. We try. I'll do an Air 5. So far, Karina has been very cooperative with the officers during the booking, but once... Never forget, field breathalyzer and field sobriety tests are inadmissible in court to say that you are 100% uh, uh, guilty of drunk driving. It's actually the breathalyzer at the precinct that is more... Uh, that is actually consistent and can be used in a court of law. The field breathalyzer is... Uh, is actually super inconsistent and you can blow over it even if you're under the legal limit. It literally happened to me. So something to, something to remember. Yeah. Always ask to go to a hospital for blood work. What if you refuse a breathalyzer at the station? I don't think you can refuse the breathalyzer at the station. Since it's time for the breathalyzer test, we start to see just how charmingly entitled she can be. Will you submit the samples of your breath? No. So right now you have a chance that you're not over the legal limit, right? When you go on the box. But if you say no, then it's automatic that you're found guilty of driving on time. If you deny breathalyzer, they can and will just arrest you. Yes, technically they're not supposed to, but they can. In certain states like California, if you refuse a field breathalyzer test, for example, you can still have your license suspended, even if you're fucking sober. There's a lot of like weird wonky state laws uh, that, that <laughs> completely do away with the innocent until proven guilty shit. Oscade and the refusal. Will you submit to breath testing? All right, Karina, can you just take a seat? Definitely don't try and take that off. Karina, Karina, stop. Yeah, take Listen, I want, no. Karina. I want to. In, I live in Florida. Is this applicable? If you're in Florida and if you get arrested for drunk driving, it's probably good for your political career. So this is not legal advice, but, you know, I'm just judging it off of, like, what I've seen of Florida politicians. Like, you could probably become a state legislator fairly quickly, depending on what your dad does. Just take a seat on the bench for now, okay? And you're gonna. Is go there home even a soon. crime here? What do you mean? She's sloshed out of her fucking mind. She was behind a wheel. Yes. So let me call my mother off my own goddamn phone. We will call her, okay? Off. Give me my phone. We'll and call I'll her call on that phone mom. very shortly. No. Give me my phone. It's my mom. This young driver is making this arrest as difficult as possible and doesn't seem to grasp just how much trouble she's in. She's already violated New Jersey's zero tolerance policy when she admitted to drinking and by refusing to provide a breath sample, she will likely be found guilty in court. However, Karina already knows all of this because it's not her first time here. It's not a good thing that I know what it looks like here. Well, have you been here before? No. Well, that's what I'm saying. Just take it slower right here. I my, fall up these my, stairs. My um my pronouns are you as I. Not bad. Not bad. All right. So we just have to get a signature from your dad before yes. we can let you out. Okay. My dad. Here, just uh, Karina, just hang out mom, for a second here. Well, mom feels mom feels classy. We All I gotta say is mom is classy. I'm gonna explain the tickets to you real quick. Oh, Officer okay. Green Dyke will do the same too, don't but... Don't even bother. I, I'm gonna cry about them later. Uh, let me just explain to you real quick. I will cry about them later. There's two yeah. tickets there because there's a the court date, man. so I have to tell you. Hey, motherfucker, <laughs> I know you. Yeah? Why is that? I was thinking... You man. I respect pronouns and xenogenders, which is why I did not say anything when she said her she identifies as usa and you guys are not woke so fuck you in an endearing way yeah okay well hi <laughs> yeah sometimes we don't get it in that kind of way so it's always in that kind of way wow Montville police station is kind of nice yeah Karina ended things on a good note with the officers and was released shortly after. She was charged with driving while intoxicated, refusal of breath testing, reckless driving, and failure to maintain lane. Turns out this was her second DUI in less than two months. And then she had two more run-ins with the law when she ignored a stop sign and again when she got caught. Bro, what the fuck? She is a DUI champion, dude. What the fuck is ha- A menace. Okay, you gotta get her to stop driving.
caught speeding, all of which were documented on Drive Through Tours channel. But when it comes to seducing cops, there's no better example than Lydia Badillo's case. I'm looking at your eyes. Why? Because you look pretty handsome. She was caught trying to transport two illegal immigrants over the Mexican border, and as soon as everything started to fall apart, she decided to try seducing the officer. Just wait for me right here, okay? You don't I'm have anything? I'm looking at your eyes. <laughs> Sorry, sir. What, what? I'm looking at your eyes. Why? Why is she saying human trafficker if she was like, like, was she, was she transporting them for, because they wanted to go in, or was she like transporting them for, for actual trafficking? Because you look pretty handsome. As soon as the officer realizes something might be up with her. For underage sex, dude. Wait, first of all, it, it fucking, what, wait, what do you mean? Like, did they say that? Do you guys know additional the IDs? details? What the fuck? Lydia or did you just make that up? To smile and stare directly at his eyes before telling him how handsome he is. Obviously, this is just a trick to... Holy fuck. Former... What? No, dude. Stop. I'm gonna stop clicking on good boy Steve's fucking links. He's just like, still on a tangent. That's what cops do low. I know, dude! Shut the fuck up! God, you're so fucking annoying! God damn, dude! Fucking go back to doing crack, dumbass! Hassan, I'm from the Russian segment of YouTube. They are now discussing you here, and they say that you are not even close to a socialist, a person who was born to a rich family and collects donations on the ca most capitalist platform. By his very nature, cannot either be a communist or socialist. That's awesome. Russian YouTube. Maybe the fucking Ukrainian uh, YouTube will finally be like, no, actually, you know what? Uh, maybe he is uh, sufficiently anti-Putin now. Just kidding. They're going to be like, no, we actually agree. I'm the one issue. I'm the one issue that everybody fucking unites on. It say human trafficker on the video. I know, but I, but he could just be saying that. To try and get out of the position she's put herself in. A trick that isn't going to work on this officer. Estos documentos por un momento, okay. Pues son, son falsos, okay. Y tener documentos en estados de Texas es un delito. Las ID, a esta te sale a un señor, a tuya. A esta no me sale a nada, okay. So estas identificaciones son falsas. Okay. After running the woman's driver's licenses through the national database, the officer discovers that the ID numbers return completely wrong results, meaning that both of them are totally fake. It's later discovered that the two women with Lydia in the car are both illegal immigrants from El Salvador. What's worse is that they were being transported through a service that often forces women into debt bondage, where the people who transported them will make them pay off their debt through forced labor and sex work. So, while Lydia was arrested and the two women sent back over the border, they may have been saved from years of horrible treatment and abuse. One thing's for sure though, Lydia's attempt at flirting didn't work one bit. But the same can't be said about this next girl, who was so bubbly and flirtatious that the officer couldn't help but smile throughout the entire encounter. I'm too cute for prison. Don't do that to me. On January 5th, 2022, officers responded to a car accident. As soon as they got on the scene, they were given some useful intel by a witness. She's drunk. And she already said that I don't want to get a DWI okay, okay. in a single car. Okay, thank you. Was she in, on, in the wrong no, lane? No. no, she was on that See, side. See, I was coming this way right, right before the curve, and she pulled around me. I mean, pulled around me, pulled around another car to make the curve. Jump no, the curve. See, see, her, see her train yeah. stop there? Hit the curve, and then slack this. I don't know what to feel for. It sounds like this driver completely lost control of the vehicle and was lucky nobody else got hurt. But if they want to understand exactly what happened here, they're going to have to talk to the driver. And it doesn't take long for them to figure out the situation. So they said you're, you're not having anything medical. No, that would no, sir. Okay. Now, just based on this driving behavior and what people have been saying when we came on scene, um, which we want to take some standardized physical sobriety tests. Absolutely. How much have you had to drink today? Not very much. Okay, what is not very much? Like the legal limit. Okay, which is what? Like very, not very much because I ate and I drank okay. water in between cool. two. The driver is being honest and complying with the cop's request to take a field sobriety test. But unfortunately, the sobriety test quickly shows the cops that even if she's acting nice, she's still a criminal that put many other lives in danger. All right, man, go ahead and put your hands behind your back for me, okay? You're being placed under arrest for DUI. All right, I'm going to have to pat you down before I put you in my unit, okay? The cop pats the girl down before placing her in the back of his patrol car and reading her her rights. But this is when she starts to put her plan into action that she thinks will cut her loose. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. God. You don't, you don't need to apologize. You know, I'm doing my job, that's all. I know, and I respect that. I respect 
Have you ever been arrested for a DWI before? No, sir. I've never been arrested, period. So, I hope at least I'm like one of the cuter people that you've had in your cop car. <laughs> Do not confirm or deny, please. He laughed. She's in. Uh, yeah, I can't talk about that. Yeah, you can. For illegal purposes. <laughs> I'm too cute for prison. Don't do that to me. Anyways, I'm sorry you're stuck with me, though. That's all right. You know, I've been, like I said, with worse. Back at the station, the seduction doesn't stop. All right, so I'm going to count this in front of you. I remember you. You would come up to the Ocotillo with your face mask, and I'd be like, that one is so fine. Yeah. And then, like, respect. Yo! Yo! First of all, yeah, they cuffed her in the front. That's how you know they were like, we we love you, <laughs> queen. Front cuff is only afforded to, like, fucking police chiefs being pulled over for DWI, DUI, you know what I mean? That's like, she knew. Exactly, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember, remember the fucking, like, chief of police that they, like, <laughs> had to unfortunately arrest? And they were like, front or back, sir? <laughs> sir, we don't want to do this to you, but front or back? <laughs> Yeah, that guy was hammered at 7 a.m. It was crazy. Obviously, because, like, I'm a mess right now. I had your face mask on, but I was like, that man is so fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. Let's get back to business, though. Obviously, nobody wants to date anyone that's looking like this, so, yeah. You are such a happy man. Oh, thank exactly. you. I appreciate that. I do. Okay. I'm getting prepared. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't need I hope problem. I haven't been, been disrespectful. No, I hope I haven't been disrespectful to your job. But even as she waited for her medical examination, she couldn't resist flirting with the officers in an attempt to lessen her sentence. What do you suggest? Okay, maybe a little. <laughs> Let's right. Hey, hey, come over here. This way. Oh, I just want to say hi. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wild, Just come over here. I'm sorry. It you lead the way. Yeah, just have a seat. Right How the hell am I supposed to do? Hi, Brandon. What are you doing? I'm a foul now. Oh, why you should? I still have to triage. Oh, Look how cute it is. Okay. Because, because, because you're so cute, sir. That's crazy that the fucking ER nurse is like, I have to do, I have to triage still. And she's like, yay, you're so cute. Oh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, might as well choose to be happy if you're in a shit situation. You shouldn't be. Plus, I got stuck with this cutie. Uh, I got stuck with the cutest part. Thankfully, this didn't seem to change anything in her charges as she was hit with an aggravated DWI and reckless driving. At the end of the day, though, a DUI never gives that big of a sentence, at least not compared to what Amelia Bassoon was trying to dodge as she attempted to seduce the cops and get away with murder. Amelia was arrested in connection with the murders of what? Cindy and Sean Stack. They think she helped her husband. Bro, that, okay, that's like, what the fuck? I thought we were doing like DUIs, law, and <laughs> what a change of pace, a dramatic, a dramatic change of pace. Husband cover up the crime, but she will do everything she can to get away with it, including flirting with the detectives. But while this case started in a playful manner, it quickly evolved into one of the most intense interrogations of all time. They're dead. Dead. I didn't do anything. The detective starts by reading Amelia her rights and getting some basic information. Am I like getting arrested or something? Or... Explain it to yeah, you. It's been oh. I can't be the only one who expects everyone to be drunk now, right? Because, like, the video primed me so much that I'm, like, I expect every suspect to speak uh, and, and slur their speech now. I just, like, I was, like, a little taken aback. Normally, this starts, like, someone getting in trouble or arrested or something. Well, we just, like I said, we want to be able to talk to you. Already, it's obvious that Amelia is making her voice high-pitched and speaking in a timid tone of voice. While this could just be what she sounds like normally, other footage of her suggests otherwise. I, I don't want to press charges, but I, I would like a no contact. Okay. Her change in tone could also be a reaction to being in a stressful and uncomfortable situation. And as the interrogation continues, she begins to show... Bro, if your husband is wrapped up in a murder charge, how do you not immediately lawyer up when you're called in? for questioning like that makes no sense show more and more of these flirtatious signs what up with josh did you say that did i hear you say he shot himself in the leg yeah so in december someone said no money bro what do you mean no money okay well you're going to prison then like you know what i mean you can get a public defender call a lawyer call lolo lolo overruled better call saw baby remember he we went bowling the bullet went around the bone or and around the artery. I guess flirt with the oh, cops too. unsuccessfully. Jeez, that's lucky. Some people think it makes you look guilty. Bro, 
when a cop is talking to you, you are guilty by design. Okay. That's the system. So you might as well have a fucking lawyer present. Okay. <laughs> like cops are not talking to you because they suspect your innocence. Okay. They're talking to you because they suspect that you're guilty and will do a lot to make sure that you come across as guilty. Even if you are not, I'd rather look guilty than be found guilty in a court of law. <laughs> yeah, well, you guys been married? Um, it'll be a year until... Oh, okay. Here, Amelia gathers her hair and moves it all to the right-hand side, exposing her neck on the left. The neck carries the jugular, an important and vulnerable what? part of the body that many people... Bro, this JCS React is cooked right now. What the fu... This is a wild change of pace on jcs and we'll make an effort to i didn't realize that we were gonna hit i didn't realize that we were gonna hit new lows on the pseudoscientific side of criminal justice okay <laughs> cops are <laughs> cops are notoriously vampires <laughs> and therefore when they see your jugular cannot resist protect however when someone feels comfortable or safe around someone they're likely to expose their neck by tilting their head or moving their hair to the side suggesting attraction or at least the desire to show it all right so I mean I can tell you the reason why we're here today is because of that okay all right does that surprise you um for this type of situation yeah okay. like this is Sense, but... Well, let's let's walk through it a little bit, okay? Um, let's okay. walk through that and see how maybe we came here today, all right, and find out if this was just a misunderstanding or what. <laughs> she opened her mouth to speak, indicating she may be in heat, like an animal. Okay. The story ended with Cindy and Sean dead, but started with an equally disgusting crime. Amelia was an employee at Chase Bank and exploited her position to steal $50,000 from a dementia-ridden man. She wrote two checks. When he said an equally disgusting crime, I did not think that it was going to be legitimately a disgusting crime. I was like, what's equally disgusting to a double homicide? Turns out, okay, never mind. Stealing thousands of dollars from a dementia patient is genuinely disgusting this this video has given me whiplash from the first half of it being like cops genuinely not uh, escalating to to uh, me saying oh man this video is sure really good to a cop to a tulsa police department guy being arrested for sexual assault all the way to every part of this video has been wild from his account and her husband josh deposited them in his accounts when Cindy and Sean started asking questions, Josh purchased a gun and shot the pair in their own apartment. This interrogation is not only to uncover the details behind the theft, but also to determine what part she played in the killings. So how did you... Yeah, there is no... Another chatter said this, but like, there is no thematic consistency in this fucking video. It goes from like, teenager tries to riz up a cop to like, double homicide and stealing from dementia patients. Like... Like, it just jumps back and forth so wildly. What happened with this write-up? So, I mean, had you been a banker for him for a while? I mean... Yeah, so I've been his banker. So, so what happened with these checks? Um, to be thought of ready. Mm -hmm. So when they came in, call wall, camera, signature files. Because, I mean, it's still federal. So mm -hmm. they wanted to make sure, I guess, ceiling. Mm -hmm. When you talk to Gerald, I mean... Yeah, this one I don't think uh, works on the seducing officer's theme, but maybe. I mean, I've been wrong already, so maybe she will try to, like, fucking suck his dick or something. I don't fucking how, know. How did he appear to you? Is he a young guy, old guy? Oh, how did he appear to you when you talked to him? He was okay? Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any issues when you he, when he talked to him about remembering things or anything like that? Like, I know, like, a little about himself. Like, mm -hmm. he had brain surgery. Mm -hmm. Um, But for the most part, he was other than that, he's... Okay. Yeah, nice guy. Amelia does her best to seem open and honest here, but as soon as she finishes up talking, she brings her shoulders up, hunches over slightly, and crosses her arms. All movements that are done to protect vital parts of the body and are obvious tells that someone feels uncomfortable. These signs only become more apparent as the interview continues. Wait, there's a show called Random Breath Test, an Australian show about pulling over drunk drivers? And you can guess what their blood alcohol comes in at? Some wild people on that show. <laughs> Wait, what? Australia is just fake, dude. It's a fake country. It's a fake continent. It doesn't exist. That's insane. That sounds, that sounds fucking insane. What the fuck? What did he have you do? Like, how did he, what did he ask for? Nothing you see. Mm -hmm. The grandson came and picked him up? Literally just redneck England, yeah. The world's toughest race. A record. Mr. Big, she might just drive your ambition. Tonight, 
on RBT. Didn't turn down here because there was a booze bus set up. No, not at all. Or a possible drug bus. I'm going to look at that car just there. Especially. If you think you're over, then you shouldn't drive. And the best practice is not to drink and drive at all. It's the biggest mistake in my life. Immediately, one of the first things that jumps out at me whenever I see, like, cops in other countries is how fit they are. <laughs> how visible they are also true. But, like, it's always weird that they're just, like... Like they're actually, they actually look like they're going to run and not immediately pull out their service weapon and start shooting you. A buddy of mine was on RBT. They literally take into consideration your consent to air the episode when you go to court. All right, let's finish this one. It was one. either the day before or the day after. Mm -hmm. I opened up an envelope. Oh, so he must have just deposited those checks into the account? I think your best bet right now is to be completely honest, okay? Mm -hmm. So let me, let me, let's go on a little bit more, okay? The truth is going to be the best thing. Mm -hmm. This happened in May? Mm -hmm. The account still open? Mm-mm. No. Amelia's speech has become much shorter and unclear, and she continues to seem more and more uncomfortable when pressured about Gerald's banking records. Of course, the detective has noticed this and is seeing straight through her original timid and playful demeanor, so he decides to ramp up the pressure. At a certain point, right? He's a nice guy, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you really do care about him. I do. You see now? But it's not like I, I don't uh, want to make it. Uh, okay. No. Did you take advantage of that old man? I don't want to say because he's a really... Yeah. And uh, Josh, did he ever talk to them? He never... He doesn't even know. Would he have been at their house? Mm -hmm. He doesn't even know. I don't even... Well, you have access to the account. Yeah. I mean... You opened it. Can you talk to Cindy? Possible she gave you their address? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be in the text messages? But you don't remember if she gave you the address or not. Well, Josh went over there and you didn't know? I mean, how would he know where... I'm mean, not the question. Is it possible that he went over there? So you don't... You can't say for sure he did it. When did she start flirting with him? I feel like he just wanted to do a JCS at the end of this. How can Why you not? Say no? Because he doesn't know where they, he doesn't know them. Amelia now decides to change strategies. Instead of her original flirtatious and playful demeanor. That's what she was being flirtatious because she did this? Yeah, okay. This part I don't think is, is flirtatious at all. <laughs> she just she was flirtatious because she showed her jugular. Okay, the other ones were pretty the other ones were spot on though. She switched to an innocent and clueless one. At points, she even smiles and laughs while being asked serious questions in an attempt to downplay the intensity and pressure. This is a sign that the facade she's put up is starting to break, and the detective takes this as an opportunity to press her even further. I think you need to start understanding the severities, because I don't know if you really do, right? And I think you need to start understanding that how this interview goes and where, what, you know, what decisions you make here are going to affect your life for a long, long, long time. I think you think that you had this all planned out and I think you and again not to say it in a bad way but this is what we do okay when we make mistakes we figure things out and go okay all right there's a lot more going on here all right and you know whose name is all over this right now you and Joshua okay you need to start thinking real hard and real fast okay who who is involved in this and what happened okay, okay. that's all I know okay things got out of hand okay this got out of hand I think what happened was Cindy was asking you for this money back and you didn't have it and there's there's some issues right? sometimes again when we make a mistake we do something wrong and things, the ball gets rolling. We can't stop it. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. This is boring. No. All right. Um, all right. We got an option of seeing the, uh, have you, holy shit. Have you seen this TikTok? Uh, we have the option of watching, uh, the, the pig fattening inside the Chinese colony in Laos, human trafficking hell. We have the option of watching, uh, couples in Sydney, arrest drunk drivers, or we have the option of doing fucking okay buddy. Which I don't even know if uh, Lil Bear has uh, updated. Okay, buddy. Don't know. Wait, what do I do? Do I press newreddit.com to fix it? This is like annoying. Oh, there it is. More like, uh-oh, bucko. I think, okay, buddy, is what I'm going to be doing. New Emma fan cam just dropped. And I find her very attractive. She does CrossFit. Is here to, with an announcement. Me. Perfectly crafted by liberal media and the liberal FBI. Fire. Give me 10 minutes. I haven't checked it. Also, Weeby, I already downloaded Supermarket Simulator. Okay. Clear the fucking way. It's Fat Boy Friday. Bro, even their fatties are lapping ours, dude. I ain't, I don't know a single fucking... I know a single American fatty that can do this.
Okay, we'll do uh we'll do okay buddy. I mean not okay buddy, sorry, we'll do tic tacs. Where the fuck is it? Where is it? Is it TikToks one? Can someone link me the we have Jack Black? Kevin James easily. I don't think Kevin James has this level of Dude, no. No, it's under stream clips. Where is it? I can't fucking find it, dude. What the fuck? Oh, stream clips. Oh, TikToks. Under stream clips. Can I show this? Rules. Must be an upload of a TikTok. No links. No links to uh, no TikToks longer than two minutes. Use up and down to vote for the best TikToks. Posting anything TOS is a one month ban. True. Dude. Lenin did fucking mew. Uh, little known fact. Little known fact. Lenin. Oh, this one was a classic, right? The Home Depot guy. The Home Depot men is. Prey warrior. Living the dream. You hate to see someone else living out your fantasies, dude. Kill Dozer too. Gunshots. Gunshots. With some respect on his name. What is it gonna do? <laughs> okay. Driving with gumbo without a top. Who's he calling? Ooh, this shit is so fucking. Don't put them on. No. I ain't gonna to eat. Ooh, I asked off. Mama, why you gonna take a ticket to that stuff? <laughs> ain't got no top. Now it's wasting all over the car. <laughs> yeah. Be quiet, be quiet. It ain't got no top, mama. I'm finna pour it out. <laughs> oh. It's wasting all over the car. There's no top. <laughs> yes, I'm holding it, but it's. It's like a fucking extraction mission. Lord, if you love me right now, you'll flip that motherfucker. You hear me? If you fuck with me, G-O-D, you'll flip that motherfucker. <laughs> Sophie Lightning, and these are some tips and tricks from a pro nerfer that could help you win your next nerf battle. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Sophie Lightning, and these are some What is happening? Some of you don't have it like he does. Wait, what? What's a makeup look you guys want me to do? Ariana Grande. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. No, no way. There's got to be like a fucking, that's like AI boosted, right? Scream if you love Satan. I've seen this one before. <laughs> Stop it's going fake. to Turkey. You're supposed to be bald. You're supposed to be bald. And look, if you started balding in your 20s, that sucks. But wait a decade and a half. All your friends would join you. Look at my hairline. Look, look, look. My hairline. Right, you should be here. You should be here. I used to be like, I don't date single mothers. Up okay. Check your privilege, sweetie. Okay. This is the one area where black men have a profound privilege over white men. Okay. Black dudes look cool when they go bald. White dudes look like they're racist that's it if you're a black guy and you're balding just go bald and get a fucking earring and all of a sudden you are like extra cool you're cooler than you look beforehand white guys can't do that check your privilege the fuck black history month is over i can say that when white dudes are when white dudes are balding they, they either look racist or they look like walter white okay like they they couldn't pay for their chemotherapy, so now they have to cook meth. Up here, it's like two step kids isn't even a lot, really. If I lose any of this up top, I'll be like, I'll fix pasta care. And this is life, guys. All right, you want to be having a good hairline at age fifty eight? That's weird. I don't respect anybody over the age of fifty five with a good hairline. Talk to me, you got a full head of hair. Shut up, Frederick Douglass. <laughs> you feel me? All right, you supposed to be bald, bro. It's a sign of maturity and respect. I'd be like, you, you 60 years old wearing Jordans. Bro, <laughs> take that shit off and wear a fedora. Shave <laughs> your head and wear a fedora. You need to be looking like Neo in your 50s. Um, black dudes also have a significant advantage in the field of hat wearing. Like, if you're a older, if you're an elderly black man who's bald, you can wear a Kangol hat. You can't do that as a white guy. Even fedoras, when you think about it. Even fedoras, honestly. Think about fedoras. White guy wears a fedora. He just looks like he's debating people on Reddit about atheism. Black guys wear fedoras. They look cool. Black guys wear fedoras. They look Cuban immediately. It's like, oh, that's a Cuban guy. That's normal. White guy wears a fedora. They're like, oh, dude, you're, what are you fucking, are you going to debate me on age of consent? Is that what you're going to debate me? Get the fuck out of here. Bald ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> That's gross. Okay, that one's actually. Yo, these TikToks are fire. Julia, la feta biscottana, yo. Ah, Julia. Oh, no. Yo, he is there. I'm not letting go. They have a taste for fucking flesh, dude. What the hell? <laughs> Oh, they're about to make the most decadent foie gras after that. Oh my god, oh my god. Bill, come back! <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Oh, okay. If this is you, you better know when you're talking. Come on, what'd I do wrong? Hey, come on, what'd I do? Hey, come on, what'd I do wrong? Hey, what? hey come on now. What? What? I don't even understand, what? If this is you. Oh. What does the cow say? Mm. What does the cow say? Mm. That's sick. This is a dog that... This is... He's the man. He's the Shaoma of fucking dogs, brother. Oh my god. Get this dog a YouTube account. <laughs> Golden Retriever Sweeks Perfect Cow. Cows behind him go crazy. Shaomu. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Me wife, Irish, you cunt. Excuse me. Chelsea, you're shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Me wife, Irish, you cunt. Me wife, Irish, you cunt. Excuse me. Chelsea, you're shit. Damn. He said Chelsea, you're shit. <laughs> All of this happened because I got laid. Yeah! yeah! What does he mean by this? Did he. Is this a sister brother man? <laughs> Okay. Porto! Zubis. Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, Porto, if you want to watch it uninterrupted, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or free with the Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully that's me. Here's the three minute break now. Woo! Hey! <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> Let him have what it. What the fuck? Let him have it. Let him have it. That's fucked up. He worked hard for that. He worked hard for that. <laughs> Fire. Right, it's time to get a bath. Come on, let's go. Get in there. I'm just kidding, idiot. No banging in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> Crows are extremely smart birds. They can also tell humans apart. They can also problem solve. <laughs> Damn, dude. But not too fast. Oh, no. <laughs> Yo, that's... It's so real. Also, this is so dumb. What the fuck? What, this is... There's a field of corn in Dublin, Ohio. What the fuck's wrong with this country, man? Why is this so corn oriented all of a sudden? <laughs> no, no, don't fool. Don't they fool. I did not What? No, he wants to fucking give him the thing. No, give him the other thing. <laughs> Let him have it. Okay. Hello. Alright. <laughs> so dumb. I drank half my boba, might save the other half for later. This little lie. I think I like this little lie. How do you even do that? I guess that's the best way to preserve the bobas. No, no, no. <laughs> don't no. don't pick that dog. No. Let her pet the dog. Let her pet the dog. It's a dog. I want to pet the dog. Let her pet the dog. <laughs> Fuck, man. Pet that dog. <laughs> pet that dog. The only reason that men say women and children first in tragedies, like when a ship sinks, is so that they can hang back and kiss each other. Wake up. Wake up, liberals. It's true. Why she got to out us like that? Ron DeSantis after dropping out of the presidential race. <laughs> That's why he had to drop out. Algorithm is crazy. Made it clear he should test every one of us in What the fuck? Is this, what is that? I'm looking at the chat because I don't wanna people are gonna call me racist. That's that's doo doo Daphne. That genuinely is not Daph. Stop. That's not Daph? No. I'm gonna run it again. It definitely it is. What the fuck? 
I'm so confused. <laughs> Batman, please. Wait, she's not gonna show what remains? Oh, come on. That's like, I need to know what, I need to know how much of that stayed on the fucking, <laughs> I need to know what left. <laughs> Slowest chase and getaway ever. Yo, this is what I'm talking about when I say American cops, dude. This is like, <laughs> oh, they're so fucking fat. It's crazy. We haven't gotten a single funny yet, but you posted like three. What? Dang, bro is in. These are I've donated enough. Oh, you serve? <laughs> you serve? Yep. Yes, sir. Back in Iraq. <laughs> you serve? No, no we go. <laughs> oh. This is a classic. I mean, this is real. This is a uh, chat. Is this real? You're getting a little thick, OG. My fault, OG. <laughs> chill, OG. Chill. Chill. No, OG, chill. Chill, OG. My bad. I ain't even. Come on, OG, chill. Come on, OG. OG, my bad, OG. My, my bad, OG. OG, my bad. Oh, my God. OG, my bad. I'm sorry, my fault, OG. Ah! That's Kaya. When dad sees another dad, he knows it is his favorite spot. Oh, this is a cla This is a classic. I guess they'll let anybody in here. Yeah. He did it again. Oh, God. So good. Stop. If I make a face while eating these wings, I'm giving the first five people five dollars, man. Simple. He does not want to give people five dollars. Oh. Oh, God. Yo, you can't do that. Hot ones. Hot ones must have taught all of us what not to do. <laughs> what the fuck? Alt mesi mana niye kanyedin? Instagramda? Sintura like kanchan. Chua? Sintura like kanchan. What the fuck is this show? Why is he sitting so comfortably? He should be he should be scared shitless. Oh my god. Name a country beginning with V. Finland. Finland. Finland. Don't chat to me. You said what? Finland. You are on some joke thing. This is an F blood. What did you say? V V. V. Venus. <laughs> yeah, Vinland. Vinland. Damn, this is making me like Kaz. What the fuck? Flag is this? Uh, Brazil. Hey, my old name Marta de Marais, hein? Spectacular, o Neymar. A tabela com Borges. Ninguém para o Neymar. Foi embora, limpou o lance, vem. Eh, olá, Nelaria, Pilaria. Reserve duty as an IDF military police officer. <laughs> What's that? It's our sorority, sorority friends. friends. All right, I'm not going to get killed for this. No, no, no, no. no, no. Just don't connect your... I thought no leftist memes. What happened? Huh? What happened? What happened? Where's the funny? Where's the funny? There was not even a ha-ha there. What was the... And it was long, too. Oh, dude. Oh, the popular front for the liberation of the Palestine, bro. Like, come on. They go hard. Slip through the cracks, it seems. Why? Why? <laughs> what? What? I think I might have figured out why. Ato. Okay, I've seen this a million times over. Yeah, he does. Oh, I can't cook. Jam you too. Hey, doll, yeah, he's going to make an Israeli. Uh, yeah, he's making an Israeli fried rice. Oh, no, there's nothing in there. I got it. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. You behind me down. I don't know why you look. Like that, that meme is fucking so old. That was like, that meme was popping on like October 13th. Okay. Like that's what you're, that's what you're posting in here. That shit's like. Five months old. Bro, I could definitely beat the ball. Like, you, you, you eyeing me down. I don't know why you looking me up and down like that. Like, I won't come in there and, like, do something to you, bro. You like this glass here, though. You feel me? Because I could. Like, I could if I wanted <laughs> Fuck. First, I gotta ask you, hell is arena football? The offer he made on the house wasn't real? None of it's real, honey. 
That's what I'm telling you, not the offer, not the realtor, and definitely not that man's offshore bank accounts. This is why y'all gotta take notes. You gotta I'm writing it down, nothing in life is detail. real. She's in that car so much, what's she driving to? Truth, she's driving the truth. If he tell you he <laughs> gonna get you an Audi, he show you all the paperwork, why wouldn't you believe you gonna get an Audi? But here's the lesson to remember here. The Audi is not promised. Say it with me. The, the Audi, Audi is, is not, not promised. promised. There's plenty of other reasons, but this is exactly why I'll never step foot in the city of Atlanta. Mm. This shit only happens in Atlanta, dog. That's I'm real telling as fuck. You. Who made this series, by the way? Oscar winning documentarian, Risa Tisa. Did, did she really win an Oscar? She will. And that's what we're doing here, folks. We're claiming what we know to be true. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? amen. Claiming what we know to be true. This is what she teaches us. And that basically covers parts one through 10. Now there are 40 parts left. Y'all need to lock in and watch them all by brunch tomorrow. Sound good? So I feel like I'm being called out for we're this. We're married. Of course he drinks my milk more than the baby. I'm Jay. I like to feel on her in the shower. That is not how this goes. You're supposed to say something that's true. That is true. Oh my God. What the fuck? All right, we did it. Obligatory bad one. We did it. We did it. We went through fucking TikTok time. We did it. Click the emoji. No, it's just the, the piss one. All right. It's time for, uh, it's time. No, it's not supermarket time. Shut the fuck up, chat. We're doing okay, buddy. Shut up, bitch. It's okay, buddy time. The fuck? Talk them out. We'll be more strict next time. We just wanted enough content. Thank you for watching. No, it was great. Honestly. This is like, this is honestly the greatest. This is honestly the greatest PR that the, uh, the Discord could ever make. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's okay, buddy time. I'm an insult myself. It's been a long so, time since you know, I played this anthem. Involuntary celibate. It's like a community of people on the internet who can't get laid, and some of them go out and like kill people, like Elliot Roger. I'm not saying I'm cringing okay. right now. I'll explain it later. Uh the virgin is the incel. Uh, involuntarily celibate, who never gets laid. He's like unable to get laid. He's very nerdy. He has terrible posture. And I would be someone uh, that would be considered a dad. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> This is a short ant break by Hassan Pika. I want you to redistribute the wealth to Mall Brawl by order For of people who don't know, this is the Turkey. intro music to Follow OK Buddy his Hassan. Twitch streams at Mall Brawl. The greatest yeah. subreddit <laughs> on it's the cool, planet. Man. There's like eight sinks, so. I love crap. Wait, what the heck, bro? What this? What that? What is this? I, I said I would clap the fucking shit out of Ben Shapiro's ass cheeks. Can I just say I'm so fucking consistent? Do you hear that? I said I'd clap the fucking shit out of Ben Shapiro's ass cheeks like when talking about what she would, what Ben would look like as Jen Shabibo. Consistent. Oh, that's terrible. I'm gonna take that as a Let's go. Okay, buddy. Lamai and Carlos are a Sam fan. I'm fucking loaded on channel points, bro. I highlight every message because I'm just that jack. Try talking in chat again when you're a true fan. Welcome to Okay Buddy Hassan. For those of you who don't know, this is a subreddit that was created by a person who no longer is even in this community, really. I don't think. Maintained now by Lil Bear. It's a meme subreddit. R.I.P. Jim Nona. Jim Nona, Travis Scott. He's too busy. He didn't die. He's just too busy touring and stuff, I think. New stream intro. Self-intuitive, self 
高，欢都快没到老，你不出去驾车违法逃跑了，全国人民大团结，掀起了社会主义，建设高潮。I'm not gonna lie. As far as like、uh, revolutionary music goes, this one doesn't meet the muster. Like I get the lyrics and stuff, but overall, like normally there's like a massive fucking orchestra. You know what I mean? Like this sounds this sounds like it's one of those guys that has like a, an accordion and is like kind of blowing on the other thing as well, like a horn on the side. <laughs> As well. Okay. Let me see. Um, let me think. Is this emo? Is this emo? Stubbing your toe on the side of a chair. No, that just sucks. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I am going to video game myself. This is literally it. This is the point. This is why I don't. This is what it is. This is you don't have any other fucking situation where you have a shit ton of cyber stalkers that get together, congregate in a fucking. Read it and like upload this shit into oblivion out of fucking context. Look at this. Talk about my dad and shit. This crushing wind has got me down. Wish I could get out、Go、of、fuck. this town. Wherever it shatters, go and、no. I start to gain.、No. Surrounded, but I'm so alone. I'm so well known, but no one knows the isolation of. Online fame. I chime in with the helmet you people ever heard of. Closing a goddamn door,、oh、trying to、God. watch the fans warp tour in the state of Arkansas, and it's taking me back to Ohio. It's taking me back to where lovers go. And if I stub my toe, is it emo or does it just suck? A driver's seat is sacrificed. My every word is analyzed. The line between adoration and obsession. The constant chase for content. The shock of cruelty to faceless names. And if I fail, will they understand? And if I fall, will they lend a hand? Crushing weight has got me. Does it just suck? 
It just sucks. Wow. People farm stupid people on Twitter for $3 in revenue with clips like this. This is phenomenal. You can tell this is fake as the AI pronounces Arkansas correctly. That is, this is, I'm, I'm crying. I'm crying on the inside. I'm crying on the outside. This was phenomenal, dude. How did you, what a work of art this is. <sighs> I want to tweet it out, but I'm also worried that people are going to take it seriously. You know what I mean? The final chapter on my brief emo phase. I tweeted it. It's not even a cover. It's an original AI song. Yeah. Cam Carducian is doing the AI thing right. Chat's mom's boyfriend's action figure. Oh my God, this is sick. With a real Gucci shirt. Oh my God. With Mountain Dew as well. Warning, risk of becoming a socialist, ages 32 plus. Dude, this is incredible. Kokoro boy, you fucking killed it. Gonna put my okay buddy editing on my resume. Forklift. I find myself being an active contributor to my communities outside of work. I do video editing for a broadcast with tens of thousands of live concurrent viewers. That's incredible. My man's forklift certified and he still put okay buddy on there looks like he got the bootleg version of avatar from the barber shop full video in the comments avatar a little bit every single thing that i've heard about the avatar <sighs> so much of what i have heard about avatar in general has just been so disappointing just watch the trailer honestly i don't know why i did that i should have just shown you the goddamn trailer as a matter of fact because it is literally the best uh way to describe to you the story here here earth fire air shots fired is there anyone who's never seen this is a good question is there anyone who has never seen this like me wait really <sighs> i wish dude i'm i'm gonna be honest with you i wish this was my first time watching peak i wish this was my first time encountering peak oh my lord it's so good <laughs> Too soon for that one is Acorn, man. The thing is, it's so like comfy, it's so cozy, it's so fun. He has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. I'm, I'm Wait, good. I feel weird, but I'm good. So basically, um, yeah. He just has to go and master all the skills that he wasn't able to do in the normal process. And that's the whole story. It's like pretty basic, right? Hero's journey, yada, yada, yada. They tackle concepts like acorns. They tackle concepts like fire. They tackle concepts such as like a black person in this movie. And what kind of impact they might have on you in a phenomenal way. I can't believe it literally, it literally fucking feels like, uh, like how do they edit this? That it makes the acorn, it looks like I'm responding to the acorn clip in a phenomenal way. And I think that I avoided the real content of this video is killing me because it sounded so sad. No, it's the fucking, an acorn falls on a cop car and the dude jumps on the ground and starts unloading and then rolls over to the, behind a Tesla and then rolls over behind a fucking Tesla and, and he still is shooting and going, I'm hit. I think I'm hit. He mag dumps his own squad car, not fucking realizing that there's no one says he's been shot even the the thing is there was a dude in the fucking squad car too there was a suspect in the car and he survived luckily like he didn't actually get even grazed it's it's an awesome story for that reason i'm glad that it existed when i was growing up back then it wasn't woke absolutely zero people got mad at this shit you know what i mean like no one was going this is really fucked up same thing with like misogyny yeah it, it tackles duty to country versus moral clarity that's a good one too. But yeah, they tackle propaganda and its effect on people. So the point is, it's great. It's a great show and it's phenomenal. And it, with phenomenal works, very difficult to change the original dynamic in which it was created and intended to be consumed. Foreshadowing as a narrative device. Very normal FaceTime call with the family. Oh God. This morning I woke up and my family FaceTimed me and I forgot that they- What was the actual thing you were talking about here? Avatar? Yes. They don't know what the fuck I've been up to. This is the new me. So I just turned on the FaceTime, my my full face with like, cause it didn't come off, right? So I'm talking to my mom and dad and they're freaking the fuck out. I think I forgot to mention this on the podcast. And I was like, oh, yeah. yeah, I got a real <laughs> tattoo. I got like neck tattoos and my mom. So is this what the stream is today? Just watching old clips of yourself? Um, For those of you who don't know, uh, I don't know why you're being mean here, Chatter, but this is a heavily requested 
This is a heavily requested segment that we do once a week called OK Buddy Hassan. It's a subreddit dedicated to memes about things that happen in the community. A lot of people make this. Um, a lot of people make these memes and they want, I don't know why you're being so mean spirited about it, but uh, a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into making these clips. And then they're like, hey, you know, let's let's watch some of these clips together and laugh. Okay. My mom is like trying to be supportive. <laughs> Your mom's as, great. As best as he can. It's like, oh, didn't it hurt? Like, what's going on? My dad straight up was like, are you gay? <laughs> <laughs> he literally was like, what's going on? Are you gay? <laughs> Since Austin was featured, didn't he put his clip in his TikTok? I'm surprised he didn't. Kaya Parker says streaming is harder than harder work than Kaya Piker says that streaming is harder than working a real job. Oh, yeah, it's true. She did say that. Ha Sinabi and Kaya from Piss the Veil. What the fuck? That is not what she looks like. Emo Ohio, Ha said it. Mm. Okay, Ohio. Ohio's serious. It's for lovers. Ohio's emo as fuck. Yes. Okay. Ohio is for lovers, yeah. So I can't make it on my own. Oh damn, she got up. She got up because she knew that they were slandering her. Lots of emo people from Ohio because it's such a miserable place to live, lol. Emo stream got me filmed some type of way. Oh, you're sweet. Hello, human resources. Okay. It's because he's authentic and I was just wearing it. You know what I mean? But it was wearing me, really. Short highlight of the Durag stream. Uh-oh. Okay, how do I put this on? We're going to do a Durag time stream. Like this? Fist to the fist. Black history month, baby. Yeah. Dub. I'm so fucking canceled. <laughs> okay, nice. how do I put this on? We're going to do a Durag time. Blink 181. Oh, no. Sean hit 10k followers on. Congratulations. Nobody got mad at you, but people got mad at Sean. Wait, really? Did anybody actually get mad? No, I don't think anybody got mad. It was like, it was like a, like tastefully done and short, brief, sweet. It wasn't like a big thing, you know, smoking PSA part four cigarette. You can fucking blast cigarette smoke in my face. I don't give a shit. We don't see a lot of tobacco ads on TV anymore and all that. Which sucks because smoking is so cool. You can fucking blast cigarette smoke in my face. I don't give a shit. He does any smoke cigs, which is very cool. You can fucking blast cigarette smoke in my face. I don't give a shit. I have cigarette in my bed. Best place to smoke cigarette. How you can fucking blast cigarette smoke in my face. I don't give a shit. Smoking oh, is emo. Yeah, no smoke. I'm mad that the durag made you look more Turkish than it made you look racist. Yeah, I think that's why it didn't get like it didn't instill a lot of cancellation because everybody was like, damn, he just looks Turkish as fuck. I don't know how that's even possible. I put it on and it's like it looked like a fez almost. It looked like it was like a Turkish headgear or something. I don't know why. Smoking so is it's, Smoking it hits is every category. It's goth. It's, it's emo. It's punk. Yeah, yeah it's, it's unfortunate so cool. how cool it looks. Yeah. It's, it's so unfortunate. It's so cool. You can fucking blast cigarette smoke on my face. I don't give a shit. He's like, every room in the house needs to have ciggies. Did he smoke cigarettes? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> it's because you put in an X, you look like a sultan. Wait, really? Dude. Every time I take cash out, I go back to that Chinese video, the Chinese netizen TikTok, and I pull the cash out like that because he uses one hand and he's just like, and he picks it up like that. I think about that TikTok. I don't know how to describe it. I think I did a poor job of describing it. If you didn't see it and you didn't experience it in that moment, like you'll never understand. Father and son. <laughs> This is the coolest thing I've ever heard. Is there a photo of you necking a heater in our existence? Necking a heater? That's crazy. Necking a heater. Like a, that's like a blast in a dart, a long dart. What language is this from? Hacking a dart? What the fuck does that even mean? Slash genuine smoking a cigarette. Is there a photo of you smoking a cigarette? You ever throw a butt? <laughs> Sounds Alaskan, cherries are warm as fuck at minus 40 Fahrenheit. Yeah, I played it Tomorrowland. It's real. That's actually me. That's not Cascade. Father and son. <laughs> Free slime. For real, for real. The world after Hassan disables Twitch clipping. Well, I did, and I haven't been getting canceled this week, so I think that's what's going on. Not to not to let in on my not to clue my haters in on it, but like I I literally did do that. Dude, two things I did that have like legitimately immediately improved my mental health. One. 
deleted Twitter off my phone. So I only use it during work hours while I'm streaming. And two, deleted the, the capacity to fucking clip shit on this on the stream. Uh, subs can still do it. I shouldn't have mentioned that part. Old LSF band too. Yeah, if I got banned off LSF, it would be the trifecta. Water, earth, fire, air. Oh my God, it's the old cut. The four nations lived together in harmony. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. A hundred years passed and my brother and I discovered the new Avatar, an airbender named Hank. And although his airbending skills Hank. are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. But I believe Hank can save the world. <sighs> yup. Burm, burm, burm, burm. Fear and Baldur's Gate 3, very scuffed version with extra lore. Blair, level one trauma cleric, follower, key to goddess of mothering. After dumping her boyfriend for using her as a beard, Blair stood out for her combat style of trauma dumping her enemies. Austin, Austin, aka Senior Show, level one bard, college of selfish tops. A popular brand of yore, Austin rose to fame. How do I read the caption? This is actually pretty good. Austin rose to fame for the role of Raj, a heterosexual man. His performance was so convincing. Billiam, champion of the Nefarious Tribe, level one react barbarian. Newest member of the Order of True Kings. Billiam is known for his might, his undeniable charisma, and his unique... Where do you are so busted? Hassan Minhaj, level one warlock, pact of the grifter. Obtained fortune, fame, and great power from his patron by serving his followers a five-minute break at the top of every hour. Okay, first of all, it's a three-minute break. And secondly, there's a... One minute break in the middle of the hour. That's a secret one, though. Which I'm serving right now. Hassan Asuba. Hey, wait, wait. That's what you don't get bound. You bind a model. Oh, wait. We don't you want to get bound? Do you no. want me to bind you? No. no, I would not like that. Left Productions. <laughs> Kaya makes a mess. Uh oh. Talk about it. <laughs> oh, what? You spilled it. Oh my god, that, okay. okay. that's karma. Okay, what do you mean that's karma? This is karma. Oh, Kaya, it's in your tail, it's in your tail. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh okay, okay, okay. I have napkins, I have napkins, I have napkins here, I have napkins here. That wasn't even Kaya making a rest. That was, that was Ray. Left Productions. <laughs> that's great. He fell off. We, we took no! it off. I, I just I fell off. <laughs> yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. We got another on north side. Holy Where shit! I'm in a really Weeks advantageous on. position right Weeks now. I just... We we took it out. Oh, I just shot. Left Productions. God, Helldivers is so good. I should get Austin X to clip my Helldivers content and like make TikToks out of it. That shit pops off, at least on my For You page, because I'm probably looking at a lot of Helldivers content constantly. You know what I'm saying? Play the game. No, we're doing okay, buddy, right now. Got all my dogs with me. Kermis Tube on YouTube. Kermis Puffball on Twitter. Kermis Red in chat. Good. Just watch a do movie. Holy shit, it rules. Oh, Average five, American five. TV Pokemon. experience. China, China, 9-11, China, Hamas, China, 9-11, China, immigrants, immigrants, Mexicans, Mexicans, Mexicans, over the border, Mexicans, over the border. There you go. Fuck. For a brief moment, you might have thought, oh, wow, this, this two-party system, this duopoly doesn't seem to uh, lead to any kind of democratic outcome or democratic result that the people actually deserve and uh, genuinely think they're buying into. It's weird. For a brief moment, I almost thought that. Then I realized China, Mexicans over the border, Chinese over the border, Iran over the border, over the border comes Hamas from Iran, Iranian Mexicans building tunnels, but Jewish tunnels, specifically in Brooklyn. Watch out for the tunnels. Iran, Iran is building tunnels. Hamas and Iran building tunnels under the Chabad in Brooklyn. China, China, remember China. China is coming to build our tunnels. Border wall. <laughs> That's a banger meme. Holy shit. This is perfect for TikTok. Average American TV experience. And here he shall live until the P.O. box is reopened. Oh shit. This is fire. What the fuck? Damn. I know you made this a long ass time ago too because I still have the long hair there. Well, I mean, that's fire. One day. One day the P.O. box will open again. One day. Goblins. February 19th sponsor Skull and Bullshit. Downloading my image. What the heck? Where did it go? Oh, we saw it. Dirty. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, it's in my meme folder. Huh. <laughs> Goblins. <laughs> yeah. Horse folder. Guys, not every folder is going to be the horse folder. Okay, calm down. I don't have stuff like that. This is a banger meme. He's an ally. If I wore that, I would have gotten canceled. Toyota Tacoma whipped. Happy Black History Month. 
The black community is forgiven Hassan Piker. I fucking wish. <laughs> no. Kaya as a samurai. Oh my god. I think I've seen this already. It's so sick. Hey, Kaya. Look at this. Yep, there you go. Girl. She doesn't want to look. Shy. She's camera shy. Yeah. Look at the camera. That's you. Tekken 8 Gucci Sure Fighter. Oh my god. That's sick. Her head is as big as yours. Her head might be bigger than mine, low key, but high key. Is she full grown yet? Um, no. She is only a year old, so probably not. So much hair everywhere. So much hair everywhere. Oh, okay, okay. Ow, ow. Stuck on my face. Oh, need a bigger laugh. I know. Most popular Turkish streamers. It's true. All right, that's it. We did it. We freaking did it, boys and girls. Um, Colonel Putty, thank you for the five gifted subs. Any, are you doing anything for Kai's birthday? Dude, honestly, probably not. I'll, I'll, it's too little time. Too little time. Right. Still trying to pouches or bag the full time gum? No, I love the pouches. I've been using, I've been zinning a lot. Lord, forgive me for I have been zinning. Japan in a recession. Have you thought about maybe going back during this time? If you'd like to help, if you'd help, I think you'd help like 0.0001% or maybe because maybe more because you're generous. Yes. Um, Kai's birthday is on March 5th. What are you looking at? Yeah, she's going to be a year old on the 5th of March. In four days, man. Hello. A zinner, not a zaint. Yep. How many nicotine gum do you chew a day? Too many. Hassan, you can prevent China from collapsing. Nobody can prevent it. It's inevitable. Not having a Kai birthday stream is considered an act of crime, to be honest. You could do a park and spa day for her stream, the park, then take her to get brushed and pampered. Maybe do her party a little later to have more time to plan. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll do it on the weekend or something. When are you going to react to Chatter's Fits again? We have a Chatter Fit check, like, on the docket. I've just never been able to put together a time where I could do it with Wisdom and also do it with Frugal at the same time. Frugal's in Japan right now, living my fucking dream. And uh, Wisdom is always doing some other shit because he's so goddamn busy. He's so goddamn popular. But we never actually ended up doing it. We'll do it, though. We'll set it up. We'll do another chat vice. We'll do another one of those. Don't worry. All right. Is he tending his crops? Who? Megan the Stallions and also in Japan. Yeah, I, I, I know. I know all the comings and goings of Megan the Stallion. I don't know what that means. Holy shit. Anyway. All right. I think that's enough for today. We did a half day again. Seven hours and 50 minutes. I'm tired, but I'll be back tomorrow. There'll be gaming tomorrow. There will be gaming tomorrow. Or we'll literally do everything except play a video game. Yeah, except... I did do everything. It was a community day. We did a lot of community shit. We looked at TikToks. We looked at community TikToks. We looked at fucking... We looked at community TikToks. We we did Okay Buddy. We did some fun reacts. We did it all today. I downloaded the... I downloaded the Supermarket Simulator game, so... I might play that tomorrow. Don't worry. All right. I love you all. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace.
Sonnet Street. 